will take contender season zero. London Smith might have done it. They will fly high. San Francisco is shot against champions. Whoever said lightning doesn't strike twice has never met San Francisco shock. Shanghai Dragons are your champions. Dallas Fuel takes their place amongst the stars. Slow to mayhem on your dreams for all time. Welcome to the final day of main event of stage one, everybody. Danny Lim here, joined by Johnny and Jake. Guys, this is it. It's Today's final the day. Thing. Get excited, Danny. Yes. We're here. This is it. We're here. We're here. This, this is what we're here for. This is, this is why we were, uh, we started the week, and this is why, this is, this is gonna be a great day to end it. All the Swiss stage matches into group stage, into, into main, main event yeah. matches. It's all for this, Danny. For right. This, this day alone. By the way, and actually, no, it's Dallas. Sorry, sorry, it's for Dallas. It's for there's Dallas. There's a lot of other yes. yeah, there's, yeah. yeah. This is a big day. This, this is, is a big moment. This is a big moment. The first time in the new ecosystem where we really get to crown a number one, right? Like, right. Theoretically, you come out of the Swiss stage at the top dog. Yeah, whatever. But that's Swiss stage. Yeah. You know, it's early days. Also, now we play an actual bracket. Mm -hmm. And also, ladies and gentlemen, this is the last chance to get those drops so link your accounts everybody <laughs> drops <laughs> drops so important Spray. come on I gotta got get these Devo winter name card and those awesome Kiriko skins you gotta be as linked. well you gotta be linked you gotta be linked you you, you, you have to be connected get linked. your account connect has up. to be connected up uh, connected up with the OWCS hand in hand if you're not linked what do you mean mano y mano connect on social media Danny okay why Instagram why? X, tw Twitch. Okay. Uh -huh. To make sure you have the YouTube. latest news updates, mm -hmm. the latest results, and to get informed about the qualifier for stage two, Danny. <laughs> what happens in stage two? Do you, can you, do you earn Johnny, more points? <laughs> John, Johnny, Johnny, can you keep keep this energy up? I think you're screaming Maybe a lot. Qualifier two. <laughs> Am I screaming too loud? <laughs> no. Sorry. Keep going. Qualifier keep, two. Yeah. Double the circuit right? points. So even if you missed out on stage one, uh -huh. you gotta go sign up because uh -huh. you can still qualify for DreamHack Dallas and later down the road, streamhack.com because the circuit points are doubling. Doubling, right. They're doubling. So Twice even if you points. didn't make it in stage one, you still have a chance. You still have a chance. So you sign up for, if you're competing, sign up for stage two because you wanna be there for Dallas. And, and if you also can't qualify, Danny. Uh -huh. Oh my God. I you can buy tickets. Now this, now this I'm excited about. I want I can't wait for Dallas. I want to see all of your fresh faces <laughs> in Dallas. I think this is going to be a great event. We're going right. to get the new ecosystem together. And honestly, there's going to be a lot of fresh faces here, right? We've already seen in this tournament with so many of these up-and-coming players right. really making their mark on the pro scene. A lot of them are going to be in Dallas. It, it's, it's already pretty clear, um, you know, that the standings have been shook. Uh, and I honestly want to see more in, in Qualifier 2. I want to see what other players can make it to that level, compete <laughs> with these established names. It's been fun, man. It's been fun. I can't wait to see who comes out yeah. on top. I genuinely think in both regions, we could see new champions crowned. And as you guys are seeing, those are the ticket details. Buy your tickets, like Jake said, like Johnny said. Uh, your favorite team's gonna be there, hopefully. Uh, Johnny and Jake is gonna be there. Uh, I think the Fishman is coming, maybe. Uh, Jake will give you a hand. <laughs> yeah, the Fishman I'll over there is shaking his head. Yes, he's gonna be there. So yeah, it's gonna be a lot of fun. DreamHack Dallas is happening soon. Please buy your tickets and be there and be ready because it's gonna be a lot of fun. All right, let's jump into today's games. Let's take a look at today's brackets. What matches do we have? And guys? Sports waiting in the wings. There you go, waiting on the... the I can't say the throne because they're they haven't won yet, right? But they are uh, patiently waiting uh, from top for a challenger for someone to right. come out right of the doldrums the dregs the lower bracket <laughs> the dregs but they're dregs. surviving <laughs> top three teams <laughs> yeah yeah but they've and been I mean they've been having a long hard road EXO has been battling right. back to the lower bracket for quite a while Exo impressive results for our rookie Big team upset. but they're going up against who was, I think, the favorites of the region in Twisted Minds. Yeah. I think that's going to be a very, very exciting yeah. match to start the day. Definitely. Twisted Minds 
playing a comp that no one else has really stuck with, mm -hmm. but they execute so damn well, Johnny. It's it's making me believe, even though I don't know if it's the best comp in the end, their execution is so clean. It's shades of, of London Spitfire of last year. Just make it work with the insane team play um, of the of the Sim and the Mauga and their coordination yeah. as a unit. It's very scary to play against. It's a hard thing to prep for. No one else is going to give you that warm up. It's you know it's it's definitely some exciting stuff uh, waiting up ahead for all of you guys. Our grand final is like we said uh, for uh, ends is patiently patiently waiting. So we're going to get our uh, lower finals on the road momentarily. But first, everybody, we want to highlight some standout players from this stage but we need your help so the three of us along with uh we have a special guest as well uh special his name guest. is jaws fishman oh, jaws. shark man <laughs> jack as well jack <laughs> mr jack right are they also oh, our guest. <laughs> you know all four of us uh you know we we nominated four players uh we think that stand out this stage take as a superstar. seat take a uh, seat. <laughs> but we need help picking out who will take it for this stage. Uh, we'll be doing this four times, by the way. So stage one to stage two, three and four as well. So let's see our nominees and we'll chat about oh. them, okay? All right, I'm gonna go ahead first. We're gonna start off with my pick and it's none other than Kai from Ents. And honestly, it's my, my, my reasoning is quite simple because he's just that good. I mean, we know how important Sojourn is in this meta, and we've seen from time and time again how deadly a good Sojourn player can be, can have, like, what effect they can bring to a game, right? And you have, you, you put Kai, uh, give him a hero uh, uh -huh. that, that has guns, and yep. which is Sojourn, which a lot wow. of times, yeah, that's you're, you're probably that's, dead. That's, you're probably gonna be strat. dead. Yeah, you're probably dead. And even, not only that, even, their, even his teammates said that it's an actual strategy. Okay. Kai, go kill. That All phrase right. came up because Kai's that good. Good strat. That was pretty inspiring. It's good. Respectable. Just has guns and just shoots people. That's yeah. pretty sick. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it works. Cool. Yeah. You can't do it. No. True. Okay. <laughs> All right. Not like okay, buddy. Not okay, many buddy. Can. Not okay. Okay, buddy. <laughs> All right. I'm not as good as Kai. Okay. Do you want to but... sit? No, I don't want to sit down. Want to sit on your lap? You want to sit? No, on I don't want to sit. No, you just no, I, you feel uncomfortable. No, don't. no I'm fine. I've got to stand <laughs> up anyway. We did this in rehearsals already, Danny. I'm not going to sit down. Yeah, it's. It is my time. Okay. I've chosen a non-DPS player, by the way. Uh, a non-DPS. There's too many up there. I chose another British person. Funny Astro. Bias. One of, the best, one of the best Lucios to ever do it. Look, Astro is the best Western Lucio player. I think that is without a doubt. And without a Lucio, where's your team? It's in spawn again, bro, because you can't speed around. You the need your Lucio player, spawn, and you need just someone to cause Ajaxes on the other Lucio. Just don't get shot. Astro never gets shot. He's never died once. Check the stats. What? That's just I'm, a lie, I'm pretty but sure he died. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he died. You're lying on main. I will say <laughs> Astro go kill is also a viable strategy. Yeah. Rare for the Lucio, but Sick. but for Astro, you would make an exception. Compelling arguments, compelling arguments. I I am gonna pick somebody who who wasn't in, you know, these like top teams in the region, not expected, let's say, to go far, but I went with Shockwave. Because for me, okay. Shockwave, okay. that final map five clutch uh, against Space Station Gaming, it yep. was Shockwave, the vet, on the Sojourn with opening pick after opening pick, leading this team of, of unknown players, of rookies, to the stars here, to the top three of EMEA. We'll see if he can continue to go further. But honestly, he's impressed me drastically on this on this role where he's finally fully enabled on the team playing for him. We see his true potential, and it's been it's been marvelous. So I've got Shockwave for my employee of the month here. <laughs> employee <laughs> of the oh, month? <laughs> Does he work for you? <laughs> <laughs> he might do. That was pretty, that was right. pretty good. You know, in Shockwave, I have spent a standout yeah. so far. So I did kind of like that. All right, but last but not least, Johnny, who do you got? One player that stands out more than anyone. And it is the Swedish freak. <laughs> it is Kester. And I'm not saying that because I'm Swedish. Bias, I'm saying that bias. because this is the only EMEA player that truly instills fear into the minds of the Korean powerhouses. Whack, Falcons Esports. They fear <laughs> this one man, Kester. He walks amongst the stars <laughs> like the actual <laughs> god he is. From Tracer and Genji and Echo and so many other heroes. If you vote for Kevster, it's a vote for EMEA and upsetting <laughs> oh the Korean domination in the Overwatch East we're seeing. This is your chance. Vote Kevster. He's the only one, man that can save us. I would say biased, but we're talking about Kevster here. It's like, he's come on now. He's, he's going to be very, up here every very time biased. in this segment for EMEA. <laughs> if you don't take him next time, I'll take him. Like, come on now. It's Kevster. But I mean, I think all four of the choices are really good. Chat. I want to ask you guys, since you guys are going to be making the decision, we're just laying it out for you. Who do you think is the best player in EMEA? Who should get this award? Uh, let us know. If the aliens vote. invaded Earth, who would you pick in a 1v1? Who would our hero Honestly, be? Honestly, if that's the case, it's Kai. <laughs>
Yes. No! no. <laughs> Asher can speed everybody away, away no. from the aliens, bro. Why, why, speed why, speed why speed speed away? Speed. Why speed, speed away? Here. You could just kill and kill all the, the aliens. aliens are here. Here. Real got him. Bro. You got the real speed. got him. What? Where's your... Why? Why? Anyways, all right. Oh, we're going to wrap it up. Uh, Joss, thank you for joining us for the Lucio. Yeah, sure. Go, go. Yeah, go. Oh, go no, speed boost. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, speed boost. He was, he's, he was wall riding. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's get into our lower finals. Let's look at the uh, Twisted Minds roster. Uh, first, guys, what do you guys have to say for Twisted Minds? I mean, this team has looked fearsome. Every time we've seen them, they've been playing off meta based on what almost every other team has gone towards in terms of this Orisa comp looking pretty dominant. They've been the one team still committed to the Mauga that they obviously put a bunch of practice time into, but they've been the only team to continue to make it look possible, to make it look like it can work. Their executions with the Sim comp are so clean. Whether it's going in with the TP or kiting out, they're very hard to catch with these ultimates. And so far, the only team to stop them has been Entz and Kebster making, you know, insane play after insane play, Kai as well. Those have been the only players who've been able to punish this comp. And so replicating that success is going to take incredible prowess. Even against Entz, Twisted Minds made it insanely close. I think they still might continue to believe in this comp, still grinding it and still just thinking their execution is on point. And I think, you know, with veterans like Kellex in the back line, keeping everybody focused, the superstar hitters uh, on DPS and tank, this team is very, very scary. And for X Oblivion 8, this is going to be an uphill battle. They are an underdog. They upset Space Station Gaming and Twisted Minds will be an even tougher test. The sure. thing X Oblivion has going for them, though, is their versatility. Chase has been phenomenal on so many different tank heroes, consistently putting X Oblivion in a position to win. Shockwave also been fantastic on the Sojourn. And here is one thing that I would potentially be concerned about different Twisted Minds. Now, when NC Esports took down Twisted Minds, they provided these other teams, like Ex Oblivion with a recipe for success. And it just so happens that Shockwave has a great echo as well. Maybe you could put Cookie on the Sojourn, maybe you could let uh, Shockwave play the echo, and maybe you could try to replicate what NC Sports did. I'm not saying it'll work, but it could be a, 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 an opportunity. There's a yeah, path sure. there, there's a right. blueprint there. It's, we know it's possible, but I think for me watching that Twisted Minds Ends game, I was struck by how hard it looked. Like, mm. that was Kevster and Kai at their limit to provide what they needed. And for Exo, if this team of, of lesser known rookie players can do it, I would be incredibly impressed. This would be a massive, massive win for the Exo Blivione squad. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're starting the, the series with uh, Lee Jang's pick by Twisted Minds. No surprises, right? Anything? Yeah. No? Honestly, Those even Enz took the, took the Rush Mirror with Mauga right. here. I think this probably is two of three points. Control Center and Night Market are probably going to be Mauga maps. You might not be forced to 100%. Like, you know, we saw Exo win with Doom. Maybe it can, maybe it can happen, but... Yeah, I it's, think it's, a, it's that, a natural pick. That, that's the case. Like, it's a good map for Malga, but it's also a good map if you want to try to counter the Malga with that going Gardens, for example. All right. Are you guys ready for the lower finals? Yeah. yeah. Let's go. All let's right, go. let's get this show on the road. Tossing it to the casters. Necro Joss, take it away. Thank you very much, Danny the Desk. Yeah, yeah, championship Sunday. We're ready. About to get into it. You know, I've not casted the EU all week, but it's been just a ridiculous region to watch. It always is super fun watching uh, the EU powerhouses uh, clash, Rose and Twisted Minds and Ex Oblivion. They are two of them for sure. Ex Oblivion, my God, as well. Some of the, well, the most maps played throughout this entire bracket. It's, it's ridiculous. So you'd imagine they're pretty warmed up. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Especially having taken down such a tough opponent in Space Station Gaming. I think that Exoblivione are really looking in peak form right now. But you got to look at Twisted Minds on the other side, touted as one of the top teams in EMEA. And yes. honestly, the top three, it's pretty stacked, Jaws. Yes, it is ridiculously stacked right now. I mean, the, the DPS matchup here is ridiculous. It was ridiculous yesterday, too. And I think they were right on the desk to pick up on Shockwave as our kind of one of our star players, right? because the guy is an absolute menace. But on the other side of things, Quartz showed up huge in World Cup, has been one of the biggest DPS, like rising stars for the last uh, year and a half or so, maybe even longer than that, to be fair. Uh, this is going to be Ex Oblivione's hardest challenge yet. Well, the thing is, Rose, it's only going to get harder from here, because even if they make it, they're going to go <laughs> yeah. up against Ents in the finals, right? Li Zhang Tower, first map here. Gardens, Rose, as we uh, unlock the doors. Unlocking the doors and we get a chance to see two very different compositions coming out here. I'm looking at Twisted Minds being off of the Mauga. We have the Ramatra and I feel like this is where we really get to see what Twisted Minds are made of. Yep, the Mauga not to be seen, but the Ram with the uh, Moira of all things. 
which is a bit odd. I thought a little, little bit more Kiriko action, maybe no Batiste even with uh, the Ram, but more, uh, a little bit more unconventional when it comes down to it. Most of NA uh, picking either one of those. Twisted Minds with a fast rotation, next to Livioni. They're going to take the house here, but they do end up losing point first. Be careful, pay attention though, because we're looking at Cookie trying to get a big pick here on the Sojourn. Look at the off angle, opens Quartz first. Yeah, Quartz finds the headshot on Crispy. Uh-oh, next Livione. They're in bad shape right now. They need to just die or get out, fall off the map. One of the two, they can't spend any longer here. It wasn't the longest fight in the world, but still. I mean, you're expecting Quartz or Cookie, like you said, Rose, to pick up uh, a first initial kill. Are they going to chase all the way to spawn here? I mean, Shockwave is super low. One HP is going to get saved by Crispy. Luckily, that AoE healing coming in clutch as a Winston swap for Exoblivione here. They want to go fast. Yeah, we see Chase swap over to this Winston, usually to dive onto a target. And this is a composition that Exoblivione are very comfortable with. Looking at some of the options that the Twisted Minds have, you're just really looking at Quartz or even jumping on KSA here to shut off the healing with the bubble. Oh, not a pick from a Sojourn, it's a pick from your Kiriko. You can't argue with that one. Coalescence, though, from Slay. As soon as that rush digger lay down and uh, Chase in a little bit of trouble, has to jump high in the skies away from that Coalescence. A duplication of the Ram, but matched with the Sand Barrier here. Twisted Mind has got everything in the book right now for uh, the plays that Eggs Oblivion only want to throw out. But honestly, a ram on the point with the Nemesis form, the little warm warm. You aren't going to survive too long, unfortunately, especially getting uh, an annihilation that quickly as well. Just in mind to lose the point, invest two support ultimates, but they get 71%. That is the danger of running Echo against a composition like that. If you're Twisted Minds, you're giving over so many different options for Shockwave to be able to duplicate, but the Echo is no more. Shockwave is going to be switching over to the Tracer to have a better duel here with Yubi that's oh, also on the Tracer. What a stick from Yubi. I mean, Shockwave's not even really in this fight either, and I think Twisted Minds knew that, Rose. Just holding tabs, seeing that the sw swap will come through, and then Twisted Minds can go, okay, they've got no Tracer, we can just run in. Chase has activated the Primal Rage, but can't really do much damage of it. The mission objective right now for Chase is just to survive. Point is being contested by Twisted Minds as well, as Canal steps on to try and get some more uh, more progress on the point, but ends up getting slain by Quartz. Chase is back in, but for how much longer? Not much longer, that's exactly how long. KSA picks up that kill, and Twisted Minds now on last fight. Any death here from Ex Oblivioni will be disastrous to their game plan. Already feels kind of disastrous losing Chase so early in this fight because you lose the ability to coordinate as a full team of five as Chase is going to be coming back on sort of his like big ace in the hole, the Doofist. All right, Shockwave's there to touch. Sandbear comes out from Exblivioni, trying to stop Quartz from getting away with murder. Shockwave peeks around the corner. Crispy finding a boot kill onto KSA is a good start. And now Cookie trying to get an angle on Quartz, trying to go for the one for one. Crispy's there to clean up three kills, in fact, for the Lucy. Yeah, okay, you take that. 99% for Twisted Minds. Problem is, Rose, Ex Oblivione, they switch tanks. Not going to have the Meteor Strike. Not the most impactful ultimate. But Twisted Minds, if Ubi lands another Pulse Bomb, Annihilation on the point, like, what more can you really do if you're Ex Oblivione? This rush is going to have to go ridiculous here. Yeah, maybe if Chase does get the Meteor Strike, it did get a little bit of a buff to its damage, but it could be a get-out-of-jail-free card depending on where KSA decides to pop down this Annihilation, but it's not coming up fast enough. It's already not in that pose one from UB. He's trying to find an angle of an attack. There's the rush, just a quick slam on the floor, ends Quartz life pretty quickly. UB does find the stick in the end, Rose, does kill Crispy, but it's all for naught here. There's Ex Oblivione utilizing the rush to its full potential, just down towards White Room, and everybody just WM wanting. Almost felt like they set themselves up into a trap, though, with that White Room push. We did see Shockwave throw out the Pulse Bomb. Chase also just punching KSA even a little bit deeper into his own team to potentially get up another pick with the Pulse, but it shut down. Last fight here, Jaws. Oh, Crispy going so deep. Can he get out? Yubi does that towards the back line, helping KSA get into a position where he can do some damage. Cookie ends up going down, but they do trade it for Quartz. A four on four as Annihilation for KSA will make him a hardy foe to deal with on that point. Canel does end up escaping for, for, for how much longer. He's 1 HP as Slay just gives him the suck from around the side. Twisted Minds have half the point capped. Meteor Strike for Chase. He lands back out onto the floor and Slay, without a fade, ends up end falling over to Chase. But with Quartz and the Disruptor Beam, I mean, Chase is not long for this world as Twisted Minds end up getting a reflip and the point. First point goes over to them on control. 
But it was so close. 100 to 99. Ex Oblivione made that round very competitive. Even with all of the tank swaps that they made, usually you look at a team doing that and you think, well, how is that going to work? You're giving up so much ultimate charge and you're also giving up so much momentum, having to continue to switch up your compositions. But this is one of the strengths that Ex Oblivione has as a team, is that they're able to flip that switch so easily in between a map. Shifa. I want to really want to run here too. Don't imagine Winston. This is very much a you hold on point and one of the maps you can probably play the Malga in, honestly. Speaking about it a little bit uh, earlier on and yesterday as well with Johnny and Jake about where Malga can really still be played. And this is definitely a point where you could do so, but Exibly they're only just disregarding that completely. And they're actually just going over to the Doomfist instead. Decent map for environmentals though, to be fair, Rose. <laughs> Yeah, and I mean, Ex Oblivione haven't necessarily been running the Malk composition. I would expect to see it out of Twisted Minds, if anything. But Shockwave on the Echo has proven to be a formidable force into other Malk compositions, as we saw how Ex Oblivione approached the matchup versus Space Station Gaming yesterday. So they've got that one figured out. And Twisted Minds, they've had to adapt in the situation to this Rumatra comp, to continue to play a very similar style of the Brawl. That's a bit tight there from Shockwave, just tanking the Disruptor shot. Just getting a powered up punch. Tries to find an angle in. Does get the punch into the point. Hits Quartz, but Quartz doesn't go off the map. Cookie in trouble now. Had to slide away as KSA saw the Doomfist enter his backline. Thought the same could be said for Ex Obliviones. Now Cookie with a decent angle, but still very hard to like pin anybody down here because of how much cover there is on the point and how far you can play back. Cookie's still trying to get some damage in, but I mean, it's just all Twisted Minds giving them the runaround right now as Crispy ends up going down to Quartz. Ooh, that's a big pick there. It's gonna stall out this recontest for Mix Oblivione even just a little bit more. And, and to your point, Jaws, when you're running the Doomfist, it can be a little bit tough to try nice to get rush. in there without your cooldowns. Really but as nice I say rush that, on the point. Ooh. yeah. That rush, the coalescence, just doesn't help you really there at all. Spoke about it during the Malga meta rose this moira versus the kiriko the moira does a lot in the neutral in terms of like healing and the healing output's great the damage output's great as well but with the rush versus the coal you take rush nine times out of ten and uh, <laughs> that was case in point right there for sure. I mean, Canal's also been so clean with the Suzus as well. So even if Yubi is trying to land that Pulse Bomb, it's going to be a little bit difficult if Canal is there to be able to get that Immortality. Oh, there's the Meteor Strike. Sound Barrier comes out from Twisted Mind super early. Are they going to be able to make use of it? Kalei's trying to get onto that point and boot people into the line of sight of Quartz. They ended up using the Overclock as well. Yubi and Kalei will end up trading here as a Sound Barrier from Exo Bivioni is going to make sure they guarantee at least one more kill with Slay falling. Shockwave Wave, getting at least one. Can he find another? I mean, Quartz is just so far deep into the back line, but still comes up with a kill somehow. I mean, Shockwave at least aids in that one, sure. Excellent by Verne, holding down the fort despite losing the majority of their healing so early on. It's kind of impressive how Ex Oblivione have been able to use the self-sustainability of each of, uh, like, Doomfist, Tracer, just to continue to put the pressure onto Twisted Minds. Twisted Minds can make their way back, and Ex Oblivione do have to give up the point, but for how long with this overclock? Oh, Cookie! I mean, Kalex just speed ran his own death there, jumping into Cookie with an overclock. Cookie's in a little bit of trouble, though, blocked by that shield, so he can receive the maximum amount of healing required to stay alive. So close, though, was uh, he to go it down. KSA had to back off in the end as the rest of his team is just getting annihilated on the point. UB and Slay already dead. Good bit of stagger there, but uh, again, another flip comes through. So scrappy to have these flips come through in quick succession from both of these teams. But Ex Oblivione, they've got that wombo combo of the Pulse Bomb as well as the Doomfist Punch that they can rely upon for this next fight. And pay attention to where Crispy's going to be too. Crispy on the Lucio has been marking down Quartz time and time again to be able to shut off those angles that Twisted Minds can get. Nice body shot there onto Yubi from that Railgun. Slade just get... Okay, Slade just got one clipped. Uh, not much what? you can do about that, son. 
Kugi and Slay end up going down though, so again, 4v4, but that Annihilation is going to be a big problem for Exoblivione. They've got that Rush Rose, but a free capture basically for a one ult trade. You take that any day of the week. KSA is under a lot of pressure now as he pops the Nemesis form to try and stay alive and get out of there, but Canel quickly finishes him off with a Kunai. The beat comes in a little bit too late for Twisted Minds, but they still got a Coalescence in their back pocket, but now they have to contend with the beat from Exoblivione, and this being final fight, Twisted Mind switch over to the Doomfist to try and get back in time. Shockwave rounding about and just helping Chase secure these kills on the flank. Crispy finds a boot kill onto Slay as Exoblivione find the flip. 4% to go as Twisted Minds just fall and just scatter to the four winds. Kellex end up getting a touch once more, same with KSA, but that will be it. Exoblivione end up capping the round and tying up control. What a big pick there onto Slay to kick off that final fight of this round. As soon as you got that Moira out of the way, you shut off such a big source of healing for the team, and Ex Oblivionate timed that perfectly, waited for the Moira fade to be on cooldown, and just went in to nab her. And now Twisted Minds, Ex Oblivione, they're tied up on this map, and we're gonna have to see what other hero roulette we get out from both <laughs> of these teams, because Jaws, it kind of feels like the Matra from KSA, it, it just was vulnerable to a lot of the poke coming through from EXO. Yeah, the, the poke is sick because you're like, okay, you force out the Nemesis form. And it's like, okay, now we just wait that out. And we're also jumping around your entire team. You have to come and chase us because we're so mobile. And Shockwave is a big part of that too, getting that one clip onto the back line. Looks like Twisted Minds running the Malga comp now, Rose. And look at how Shockwave was so ready for that, to be able to play the Echo. We've seen how Echo can be a counterpick to this hero because of the sticky bombs and then the focusing beam to just melt that Mauga down. Of course, it's kid just stunned right there if you saw that. And uh, we'll have to be uh, cognizant of how these teleporters get used too by UB. No bait TP there, speaking of teleport usage. Oh, okay. Well, Cookie just uh, fell over. That's a lot of assists in that kill feed. Did you trade with that focusing beam kill? The point is capped once again by Twisted Minds first. How long though? I mean, I feel like Ex Oblivione, they've been so good at just backing out, giving some space, and now going back in for a quick re-engage. Should spear onto Quartz there, but the Suzu was there just in time. Save them up, make sure they're invulnerable for a brief moment. Another big focusing beam kill there by Shockwave. Once again, and like you mentioned at the very start there, uh, the Maugre is just so susceptible to all the poke from the Echo. The Sticky Bombs obviously do a ton of damage right, but the focusing beam is the main thing that you can just burn the Maugre out. <laughs> Maugre is a huge hitbox, so, uh, <laughs> you know. It's pretty scary. Speaking of scary, there's uh, another Maugre on the field, but this is Ex Oblivione's. I mean, Twisted Minds are thinking it's just as scary too as they end up backing out. I mean, Quartz dead, Shockwave uh, has done his job. No kills for the Echo, but he forced Twisted Minds to wholesale get back to spawn and maybe go for a small swap up. UB is close to the sim wall, but how much effectiveness is that? Are they really getting? Well, okay, zero now because he's dead. <laughs> Rest in peace. Yeah, UB's been first picked a lot by whether it's a Sojourn or even just like a Kunai from a Kiriko, and UB just will always be a focus fire for this team. Having the teleporter is a great way for Twisted Minds to close the gap on Ex Oblivione and get this engagement quickly. But with that barrier, as you were saying, you can kind of pair that with this overclock from Quartz and make sure that Quartz is unstoppable. TP forward, not a big one, just uh, behind that small barricade. Speaking of War Rose, there it is. Cookie just completely negated. This ultimate, not going to do much at all. <laughs> you just have to stare at the wall. It's like, <laughs> twist of minds, we have the biggest Rhine shield imaginable now, as they find a flip. <laughs> oh, TP. Nice little TP there from Yubi going to server room. Now. Now here comes the overclock from Quartz. Chase is stepping way too far up, but there's the sound barrier. Quartz with a slide in two seconds, manages to get away. And now straight back into the rush, just an ult trade here. Just one for one for one for one. There's the Terra Surge back into him. Quartz does get one kill as Canel ends up falling over. Yubi surviving for a little bit too long there. A little bit too long for Ex Oblivione's liking. They do have managed to take him out as they end up trading their ultimates. Like, now they're straight back to the Kiriko. They rush in and then slays like well we're already in this team fight i've used my suzu there's not much we can do especially when the terror surge gets popped too but like twisted minds have bought enough time heroes they're up to 65 they're matching ex oblivion now in terms of percent 
They are, and this might be final fight too, depending on how long it lasts. It's a very scrappy, very brawly. It is, but Shortwave's got to do free Malga. But a quick Malga ultimate coming out from KSA. I'm not sure Shortwave's going to be able to survive and even get one off of his own. There's a Suzu. It lands onto five people of uh, Ex Oblivione as Yubi gets focused out once more. Really scared of Yubi really building up towards that level three beam damage and just shredding chase. Focus fire is decent from Ex Oblivione, but it's not enough to see them through this fight. 90% for Twisted Minds now. 90%, you can see Chase going back over to the Doomfist for a little bit more one-shot potential, and the rollout is a little bit faster, so gotta get in there, touch the point. Sound barrier available for Crispy, though, and as I say that, he instantly activates it. Nice TP away from Quartz, who is on the high ground, now rips the overclock. Chase is trying to just tank for the rest of his team, but Quartz does not care about your front line. A quick two snipes on Cookie and Canal. He's looking for a third there, as Ex Oblivione are just turned to smolder. Overtime is still ticking, but it's only Shockwave to touch, and they're not going to be able to get there. Twisted Minds taking the lead in the series. Wow, though. That was a very close map, and something that we potentially expected, taking a look at what Ex Oblivione and Twisted Minds both bring to the table. But I wasn't expecting it to be that close. Just constant back and forth, taking back control, maybe every couple of seconds. And that was some big ult trades at the very end there. But... Twisted Minds, they did get the better of that, even just knowing how to use this Malga composition so well. Yeah, the old trade was ridiculous. Like, so, okay, we use the wall. Okay, now we push. We have the rush. Okay, overclock. Okay, and then uh, uh, we're going to back up. Then terror surge. Then we'll use our own rush. And then we'll use our own overclock. Like, it was just ult trade, ult trade, ult trade. And it was like two kills for like five ults or something stupid. I don't know how many it was, but not many kills for that many ults being used, which is a little bit ridiculous. But Twisted Minds, the Explivio, only pretty close matchup so far, Rose. And um, a little bit, I don't know, I feel like... Cookie and Shockwave aren't showing up nearly as much here. Maybe it's just Cookie. Shockwave's getting a lot of big damage with the Echo. Quartz is just kind of doing Quartz things. So it's a Cookie versus Quartz situation right now because Yubi and... Uh, sorry, it's a Shockwave versus Quartz situation because Yubi's getting picked off a lot too. And uh, Cookie just not mm -hmm. having the shots they really need to land onto the back line. It's really much... Uh, the so In the Sojin 1v1, Quartz is winning that out. Yeah, Cookie's been a little bit quiet this series, but we have seen from the previous time that Ex Oblivione and Twisted Minds played each other that Cookie can still hold his own versus a soldier in like Quartz. And even just taking a look back at yesterday's match, Cookie was also going toe to toe with the likes of Sparker, which is also very, very impressive. So it might just take a bit of a warm up map to get Cookie going on this sojourn, but Ooh. you could still expect to see some pop offs there. I, Rose, look at this. Yeah. A little ridiculous in terms of KDA. Twisted Minds end up winning the, ma okay. uh, winning the map. 1.7 KDA. They're dying a whole bunch, sure. Uh, Ex Oblivione with 4.61. They still end up losing. So, yeah, sometimes in Overwatch, I know it's crazy to think, you can die a lot, but you can still take the map. That's uh, all down to alt trades right there. Winning the important fights, too. Uh, not only just alt trades, though, but we're also looking at how Ex Oblivione were not too shy to just disengage after seeing an alt come out from Twisted Minds and then go back in. There were a lot of times that Twisted Minds were just allowed to take a point right off the bat. I'm thinking back to Market, where... Twisted Minds would wrap around to the back of the point. Ex Oblivione didn't want to catch that smoke by playing too much in the courtyard to just get easy access to a headshot there from courts. So uh, Exo, I think, uh, not, yeah, maybe not doing themselves any favors <laughs> with that. It's like, don't worry, guys. I've got, I'm like 22 and 3 right now. We're popping off, and then you lose. <laughs> you're like, ah, okay. Yeah. I'm sure it's happened to everybody out there at some point the in rank, right? Where you're like popping off, or your team ends up losing. Still pretty close uh, game so far, and it's going to be a close series, I'd imagine, too. Like I mentioned before, uh, at the very top of this, Ex Oblivione, they have the most maps currently uh, played in, in the bracket, like a, a ridiculous amount across groups, too. And so you're thinking, very, very scrappy team. And that kind of illustrated it there with how scrappy they can be with the amount of kills they're getting, but still kind of falling behind at the very last moment. Um, I, I would add uh, on top of that as well, it, it also screams good kind of macro game as well from Twisted Minds, a good stall too. Mm -hmm. So if you're just stalling out for a long time, sure, your team's dying, but you're like getting more percent. And then it's like, well, we only need to win one fight. So yeah, Twisted Minds doing a good job on map number one. Busy World up next. Uh, it was a ban on Hollywood and a ban at King's Row from either team. And so we're going on to Blizzard World now for Exo's pick. 
Okay, so I, I could definitely see some Arisa here from Exivlivione. I think you could also see some Winston if Chase is feeling up to it on the attack. Uh, we've seen what Chase can do with building up momentum as you see the Wiz Winston jumps in, um, but uh, it is the Arisa that we typically see on the defense from Exivlivione. But I, I want to like, go back to what you were saying before too about not even just maps and uh, had that EXO have played, but also compositions. This team has played like the most different heroes, I think, out of any single team in EMEA. And it shows with just how quickly they're able to adapt to the situation and figure it out versus whatever they're playing. Yeah, adapting on the fly. And I think that's what this, uh, the Malga patch has really been about, or the Malga hot fix, I should say, uh, has been about. It's just kind of <laughs> adapting over the next few days because the teams didn't really have that long to get used to this new patch. Just like, okay, we're screaming on this one. Oh, okay, hotfix. Ah, okay, so what now? What, what do we do? Luckily, obviously, the meta had kind of developed in a way where Arisa was getting a little bit more play time. So we're, obviously, right now, we're seeing a lot more Arisa than we would normally, especially in the, the Malga meta. Yeah, oh, just jumping into a brief pause. Shouldn't be too long here. Just making sure all the teams are good. All the teams are in the lobby right now, so maybe just a mouse issue or something like that. But we will be back into the game in just a moment here. And it does look like uh, on the defense, it's going to be EXO, and they were running the Orisa. Yeah, I was expecting to see that out of them, but it kind of goes back to what you and I were talking about. Even during the group stages, we see a lot of this Malga, but where's the Orisa? It could be a very good answer to these Malga compositions that have really popped up from the flower beds. And one of the things that makes the Orisa so strong is that she does have that fortify. She's very self-sustainable. Yes. That spear spin, as we've seen Chase use, can close the distance on a support in the back, even shut off that healing. But then you've got Shockwave, which which is just such a deadly weapon of destruction versus that Malga. And it didn't quite work out on Li Shang, but Twisted Minds are going to run out on the Malga comp once again. Yeah, Malga with the TP. I like that. Straight to point. Ignore the high ground. Shockwave super low already. Please, Shockwave needs some help. Looks like Canel was uh, nowhere nearby. Try and sling some off of her towards him. Also, Cookie is isolated too on the sidelines. Yeah, that's a that's a free kill for Twisted Minds right there. Uh, now, X of Livioni, they're just losing point. They're, yeah, they back up. They, they can't touch. You can't touch and they can't lose anybody here either because if you get staggered, then you also give up all of this space on high ground. Shockwave is back, but... This disruptor shot, this teleporter, look at how nasty that angle is. Yeah, especially for someone like Quartz who can just kind of look down upon you, shoot the Orisa a bunch, look at one of your supports, and boom, insta headshot, insta kill. All right, they are pushing oh, up now, or at least X with Vern. They're going to try and hold the choke here. They can, but this Disruptor shot again is really just kind of keeping Ex Oblivione at bay from being able to go in and touch that cart uh, because you have to back up. Otherwise, you're taking too much damage. That damage DPS passive comes through to mitigate some of that healing that can come through from your team. So it's going to be a bit of a wraparound as Ex Oblivione set up under Pylon. Yeah, this angle is kind of dirty as well. But Yubi should be able to uh, stop a lot of these crazy angles from uh, happening with uh, some TPs. Speaking of which, they CP straight to high ground as soon as they see X Oblivion is rushed. That was really nice from Yubi. TP up onto Yubi's high. He's been so creative with all of those teleporters that we've seen from him. And I love being able to see just like even look at that. The a little kind faking. of bait and switch there from the teleporter. Yeah, and then they use their own rush too. Forcing X Oblivion. X Oblivion should be able to get high ground here, but Yubi says uh, absolutely not. Closes that door straight on him, or at least tries to. Duplication coming from Shockwave, and well, uh, sorry, where are Twistum? Oh, yeah, they're all gone already. Uh, Yubi sets up yet another TP and just teleports away from X Oblivion again. The macro game for Twisted Minds right now is just superb. Is so good. And watching all of these teleporters in, expect these fights to be very fast. The overclock now from Quartz. I'm so scared if I'm ex oblivion. Oh, cookie, don't test him, brother. Although Quartz is very far away, so there's a couple of body shots and then some. Oh, quick charge away. No TP. Well, they use it. I believe a couple of them at least use the teleport to get out. Still, I mean, ex oblivion are wasting a lot of time here, but. Twisted Minds are forcing Ex Oblivion to also use a ton of ults here. 
It's too bad that Yubi wasn't able to use that photon barrier to be able to defend with the cookie ult, but they've got it here for this final point. Terra Surge is pretty big, does end up landing, but a lot of that damage was soaked up by the sound barrier, and then free cage fight on the point. I mean, Twisted Might, my god. It's like they've uh, drilled this map seven times a day per scrim session, you know? <laughs> like, this is a masterclass of how to play Blizzard World with, te with teleporters. This is kind of a Twisted Mind specialty. They're one of the few teams that have played Blizzard World a few times. Like, you know, when we're in EMEA, it's always King's Row is the hybrid map of choice. But Ex Oblivione, Twisted Minds, even Space Station Gaming, these are the teams that have played Blizzard World the most, and that's really showing up here big for Twisted Minds. Kardec Overdrive to push everybody forwards. Canal uses, whoo-hoo, uses the rush. Almost got, gets insta-killed, but would you look at that? Twisted Minds playing Portal 3 once again. They just TP back. <laughs> They're out of there. I thought we were on Blizzard World, not Portal, but hey, I'll take it. Uh-oh, Chase. I mean, wrong place, wrong time. No spin, no fortify, and no HP remaining. Twisted Minds just completely uh, bisecting Ex Oblivione. They're trying to, like, push up, like, peak corners, and then they just teleport in between them. It's... They're having a real rough time at this one. With three minutes and 40 seconds to go, two Twisted Minds are going to have an insane time back if they can just win this next fight. I mean, the payload is reaching its final destination, so I think you're very much able to do that, especially with Quartz's overclock. Yeah, I mean, he's looking straight at the Lucio in the back. Has to be careful, though. That is a transformed Mauga in the back line. Nice little double stun there. Just KSA just running into Shockwave, so that copy is just nowhere to be seen anymore. Twisted Minds end up just rotating out once again. Just wait, calm, chill, relax, just for a brief moment before they end up engaging again. And I can imagine they're going to do it with a beat in a wall. That's 10% and a couple of percent away from Kelly's sound barrier. Yeah, exactly. They've got such good tools here to just section off the team once again. That wall has been so impenetrable. Oh, his cookie's time to shine, but now he has to contend with this wall. Which side does he pick? He picks the spawn side, and then Twisted Minds can sit on the other side of the wall. Pretty easy. Almost uh, let the payload go in there as well. Point forty-three meters to go, and Chase, the only one touching, and really the only one that can for Ex Oblivione. Okay, Yubi. I was not familiar with your sim TP game. That was ridiculous. Like, I just want to bring up a stat too, Rose, uh, from the last map. Um, Shockwave had three deaths with about 14k damage dealt. Yubi with 11. Yubi was dying a lot first time. Um, but, mm -hmm. you know, sim is going to do that. You have to play kind of close range. But in this kind of map, not control where you're fighting over a single point just constantly, um, where you can rotate around the map and then take the objective, Yubi is just putting on an absolute masterclass with the sim. And I, I, maybe Yubi died once or twice. I, I don't know. I wasn't keeping track, but uh, I can guarantee you it was less than, uh, less than 11. That's a great point. I, we saw Yubi struggle to stay alive in their match versus Ents yesterday, but a lot of it was because Ents had identified that Yubi was going to be a pain, especially with the teleporter usage. He's able to take a lot of creative angles, and on a map like Blizzard World, to your point, you can play together as a team way better. So I really love Twisted Minds being able to show us what they are truly made of when they aren't being so tested by like a soldier and like Kai and you know, so on and so forth. Yubi was getting picked a lot in that series, but look at what he's able to do when he's got the rest of the team behind him. Looks like Yubi's gonna switch it up too. Just playing the Tracer now instead. No sim TPs. I mean, if you're on defense, it does make a lot of sense. There's yeah. not too, I mean, if you really wanted to go with the sim, you could like TP behind them and try and flip the map over and over and over again and try and cut people off. But Ex only running a fast comp, so probably wouldn't have worked out. So Tracer seems like the perfect pick here. Uh, Tracer 2, I mean, Yubi and Shockwave were dueling each other on their very first map of the series, so they might keep marking each other. But this is where Crispy has really had a chance to shine, is going with somebody like Shockwave, making that more of a dynamic duo and keeping Shockwave alive in order to get a bit more damage down. 
All right, KSA in a little bit of trouble in that bubble, so can't get a lot of heals. If they can shockwave, apparently, just get smacked in the face by Yubi. Oh, Kellex a little bit too far up on the high ground, trying to boot people off. Quartz as well is going to suffer the same fate by the looks of it. The Tracer is down low, same with Slay. I mean, Chase could have ran away with that one. Slay was one melee off, uh, ended up going down, but all good. Savior was Yubi in that situation. Three minutes to go as both teams trying to collect their thoughts and regroup. Yeah, so Yubi not only able to pop off on the Symmetra, but also showing the prowess on the Tracer as well, which is something that we've come to expect from such a gifted DPS player like this, but really clutched up oh so that I the okay. Oh. See ya! That was I mean, a Kunai, that too. Kunai headshot with a couple of uh, Tracer Pulse Pistol bullets <laughs> at your skull. Unfortunate. And they're pushing, uh, pushing for kills, which is always nice. Good stuff. Any kind of kill here is always nice. Get a little stagger, burn 5-10 seconds off the clock. Chase is going to spawn last here, and uh, Exoliviani's time back not looking healthiest. No, I mean, and more stall means that Twisted Minds just keep up the pressure. Exoliviani, too, they have yet to be able to work up to an ultimate. They should get this Kitsune rush from Kanile to help initiate this fight, but I, Twisted Minds have three others that they get to rely on, yeah. including the rush of their own. I think that's a good point. Like, look. Twisted Minds been winning a lot of these fights, they're doing more damage, so, you know, you get more ult charge. Let's have a Twisted Minds listening, though, into this next fight, a minute and 40 seconds to go for x Yeah, 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 come right. Can go, I can go, in three, two, one, time again. Walk, 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 walk. Thank you. Okay, so, 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 you got a stack, man, especially with the sound bear and with the, uh, with the rush, too. Cage fight ends up getting rolled out here as uh, Chase, even with the Primal Rage, cannot live up to the damage to their health. The Primal Rage, it feels like you're just regular monkey in some of these situations, just getting locked down, and then Quartz is a fully charged railgun with the overclock, just boom, 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 just lasering you. 50 seconds to go now. Ex Oblivione, Rose, they have two checkpoints, but that's about it. Uh, Twisted Minds, their comms, day and night from what we heard yesterday, they're so locked in, they're so together, they are on the same page, and they're also very, very vocal. You love to see that as just a big comeback here for Twisted Minds and their team coordination. But EXO, yeah, I mean, 30 seconds, one last touch, nothing in the bank in terms of ultimates. Shockwave trying to set up with a dive here onto this high ground. Slays in trouble, Swift steps away. Chase still with high ground control. Yubi with a pulse bomb, lands the stick too, but it's actually Quartz that finishes off that kill. And down the majority of your damage now at Exo. Their supports are in trouble. They're in Snacks, Ramus and Kanael's already used that Suzu. There is a rush coming up soon, but they're probably not going to be able to make good use of it if they don't get on the points. They eventually push forward to it, but Yubi's on the flank and Kanael ends up just falling over. I mean, Slay is in a lot of trouble, yes, but I mean, KSA can just hold down this point here. This Pulse Bomb comes out, does manage to tag him too, and Shockwave with the last couple of bullets manages to take him out. Shockwave coming up, mad clutch with a kill on to UB2. I mean, zero seconds to go, ex only with a skin of their teeth once again. Managed to cap that point. My word, they are dicing with death. They really are. That was coming down to the wire. I really thought that Twisted Minds were going to full hold that because of how dominant they were on that defense, constantly getting those first picks, sending Ex Oblivione back to spawn, and they also had no ultimate, so it had to be clutches off of just neutral kills. That could soon rush though too. Super coming in clutch here from Kanayo. We've seen that sometimes and time again, where those hit Kiriko can be such a big difference maker. But Chase too plays a little bit more aggressive, has that primal rage online, can help kind of smack Twisted Minds away. The word of the day right now for Twisted Minds is stack, and they are stacking on each other, trying to rotate around the map, but they're rotating straight into a, a primal rage. Chase though just get overrun. She just gets stopped on by uh, KSA. Pushed into the corner, and with this rush from Twisted Minds, it's going to be uh, tough to deal with for Exo Bivione, but they're on the wrong side of the rap, uh, map, remember, Rose, so Yubi <laughs> and the rest of the gang have to get out. If they get staggered here, uh, Exo Bivione are going to get so much push, and here you go, here's Chase back from spawn. They kill Quartz. 
kill Quartz, they kill Kellex. Now, if you really wanted to get out of there, you don't have the mobility to do so. Slide was off, so Twisted Minds were sitting ducks in that situation. And look at this isolation here of KSA as well. He's just barely to get out, but he can't even do that. It's another big pick in this fight. Oh, Sandbarrier hitting the wall there from Shockwave, looking like J3 out here, not landing that stick. Cookie ends up going down to Slay as Ex Oblivione were touching the point almost that entire time, but it's Shockwave coming alive yet again. Only has to deal with this Lucio now almost gets the one clip on him Kellex with fancy footwork we're not fancy enough for shockwave luckily though for twisted minds they are going to put themselves on the point now with the spawn advantage ksa pretty low overrun around the corner does receive the suzu to stay up ub and quartz come back that would make a headshot should seal the deal there 30 seconds to go for ex oblivione as they have one more fight left Wow, we, we see a lot of those last-minute Widowmaker picks and out of the defensive spawn just to try to hold back, and Quartz able to just have that impact right away to stop that capture. Ten seconds left. Chase doesn't have that initiative tool of that Primal Rage, so it's going to be on Cookie. Kanail, get in there. Make sure you're touching that payload. I mean, Quartz's Widowmaker is disgusting. He can snipe Cook. Oh, my God. Okay. Uh, flip that statement around real quick. Cookie just a little bit better with the Railgun. KSA still manages to take down one, though. Remember how close the spawns are, Rose. OT is here. His X-Move only have lost their tank, so... Uh, Crispy and Cookie forced to touch the points. The overrun onto Cookie and UB is there with the follow-up. Ex Oblivione in OT, get shut down and Twisted Minds take the map lead. The stack. Talking about the stack. stack on me. We got the stack executed. Stack, stack, stack. It happened though, and it worked out so beautifully. You got the cage fight, you got the cardiac overdrive that can help to just make sure the team is going to be that much more healthy. And then you've got the Suzu on top. You're just not gonna kill that stack that's right on top of the point, especially if you're gonna have to walk into the sight lines of Quartz on that Widowmaker. That was always gonna be such a tough uphill battle for Ex Oblivione to climb in those fights moments when you've got just all of that over health and all of that shields and everything yeah that point specifically is one of the hardest points to cap in the game just because how close the attacker spawns are and not only because of how close they are but how close it is for a hit scan a long range hit scan most of the time to get a sightline onto the actual point itself like that point is just awful sometimes to play into as an attacker if the payload is stuck just before that point Oh man, Twisted Minds right now, Rose, up 2-0, match point. I mean, look, I was expecting this to go all the way and it might still do that, but it looks like a little bit of a shutout right now. x only may have played the most maps, you know, uh, across this event, but they might, their run might just be ended here. Well, if there's one thing that we've seen from Ex Oblivione is that they can compete in map five situations. Maybe it's gonna be the next map type that'll help give them a bit of an edge. But right now, the DPS duels are going the way of Twisted Minds, and that's so important in a meta like this. Yubi just clutching on the tracer, Quartz as well, whether it's the Sojourn or the Widowmaker, I feel like pound for pound, they're just getting more damage down. Yeah, UB specifically has been just sick on this map. Switching from the Sim to the Tracer, the Tracer looked phenomenal, but his Sim play overall w was just ridiculous. Is the reason why they are able to cap so quickly and a lot of these points because of how well they're able to use the teleport. It's like, okay, we just TP away from the rush, TP away from the overclock, TP away from, oh, they copy, oh, we TP away from it. Like, it looks so good. And then, yeah, really sell, uh, stellar tracer blade towards the very end. I mean, Shockwave was doing uh, just the amount of weights he was lifting in that game, it felt like. The amount of times he was coming in clutch just wasn't quite enough. And, okay, that's a bit of better of a KDA as well for a Twisted Minds. They win the map, get the better <laughs> KDA, right? Add more damage. Makes a little more sense. They're feeling pretty good about themselves, for sure, Rose. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think that when I go think about these stats now with Twisted Minds having that KDA advantage, I then go back to what we saw on Li Shang Tower, our first map of the series, and go, but EXO, they were the ones in the driver's seat when it came down to the KD. That speaks to me that there could still be a close series on our hands but after that performance on blizzard world i worry about esperanza i think twisted minds 
they had to obviously go to this map because Coliseo got banned. Um, and I think when you look at the teleporter usage, if they want to continue to run the Malga as well as the Symmetra, this map fares so much better with all of the different buildings you get to play in. So it makes a lot of sense that they go in this direction. All right, maybe a more Malga on the table for Twisted Minds. Let's have a look at a, a small roster update, though. Ex Oblivion got a sub. Cookie out, cloud in. What does this scream to you, Rose? Mm. Well, it means that cloud is going to come into play the tracer, and now Shockwave is going to switch from the tracer to a hit scan hero. This is something that we've seen a few times from Ex Oblivion, not necessarily because Cookie is doing badly, but that. Ex Oblivione with this DPS lineup have a little bit more flexibility when it comes down to Cloud also being able to play the Tracer and leave Shockwave to make a couple more picks if it's the Ash or the Sojourn, even the Echo. There's a, just so much flexibility there and one of the reasons why he is one of the best flex DPS. All right, well, we'll see if uh, it can be the difference maker. Of course, Esperanza is the map up next. Yeah, you really do need a, a Stellar Tracer right now. Maybe Cookie just wasn't cutting it at the moment. I mean, not looking too sharp on the Sojin head-to-head either right now, but, I mean, it's hard to when Quartz is just just Quartz, I suppose. Like, that guy really impressed during World Cup, and he's been impressing ever since. Uh, definitely one of the best uh, hit scan players coming out of uh, the North, Amer North American... E I've been doing North America this whole this whole week the eu region <laughs> is what i mean so yeah it's uh, looking really great so far for twisted minds and they're on map point they're so close to locking their ticket into the finals going up against ends but actually only you know what does everybody say comeback starts now we're going to get the reverse sweep the comms they got to be electric they got to be fire they got to uh, just keep the spirits up because being down this uh this early and also in the losers bracket it's got to play on your mental a little bit but they're all pros they've been here they've done that about to lock in for map number three, Esperanza, picked by Twisted Minds. It's always comebackable, Jaws. So true. It's, it's always. If you're in your rank game and you're losing, it's still comebackable. Just form up the mental, strengthen the team camaraderie, and you've totally got this. So Ex Oblivione, they've been able to do that in a lot of their map five situations. Sometimes the map doesn't go their way and they're like, no worries, we got this, next one, all good. But <clears throat> I wonder then what Twisted Minds want to do and just like how Ex Oblivione are really going to play against that. I think the Chase Doomfist is one of the best looks that we have seen from Chase and the Winston is just so vulnerable and a lot of the dives you may want to take on this map we have seen it get obliterated if you take too long around that midpoint chase had some trouble yesterday being able to initiate a lot of these dives but the doomfist is just way faster and that power block too how you're just so survivable i i really uh that's a big slam god damn I like it when the Doomfist hits. I don't like it when I receive the Doomfist slam, but when a Doomfist hits five people with slam, it looks quite cool. <laughs> it looks quite sick. Yeah, I, I cool. really like the uh, ramp, um, especially on this kind of map, especially with the uh, Lucio. It's hard for really uh, the Doomfist to do much, but this is kind of kind of classic Doomfist on this map. You let them push the bot at least a little bit far, like maybe towards the underpass right, and then you try and get onto the back line. But it's all about forcing Quartz to use Power Slide, forcing the Kiri to use Swiss Step or Suzu, and then kind of capitalizing on it. But they need to find an entrance here. And Quartz is so high up in the skies at the moment, it's going to be tough to do that. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I mean, just go long, go the distance. A shockwave, though, too, has to be so careful because something that Slate oh, brings is just that long range damage and uh, oof. Yeah, they kind of uh, lost this high ground. You saw Chase was trying to get on top of it. But as soon as Quartz puts himself on, on top of that, uh, ex Twisted Minds have to ascend on that. Otherwise, they are just going to get rolled onto the low. Like, that's a real rough spot to be in. And the Vortex does so much work against a lot of the members of uh, Ex Oblivion's comp, too. Especially that Doomfish just locking him down, bringing it back down to Earth. And like he's walking in quicksand, right? Mm, for sure. Oh my goodness, Shockwave so low though. Has a duplicate, so could actually duplicate the Ramatra here. Oh, unless it's being used to try and soften up the front line of Exclude Vione. Oh, the copy on the ram. Uh, yeah, pretty scary. 
pretty, pretty damn scary. A free annihilation. Almost. It was close. 85% for, for Shockwave there. They managed to win that fight in about two minutes and at 49 meters. Not quite the checkpoint for Twisted Minds, but you're still happy with the push. You're happy with the push, but you're, I think you're even happier with, if you're Ex-Oblivione that you did stop that point capture because now you get a chance to hopefully keep that from them. It's going to be a lot of keep away from the first point capture, especially on Esperanza. When you do get that first point unlocked, it just feels like almost game over in a lot of situations. Oh, oh okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. No whoa, way. Whoa. Okay, almost died to his own pulse. We didn't see it. All good. <laughs> it's not been the first time that's happened uh, live on stream. <laughs> my, my God. No, it is not. So no, it is not. <laughs> Timmy Rush, Slay in a lot of trouble. One HP, pretty much. Yeah, it just goes down to the slam. Just Slay and Cause there just try to to back up. But I mean, the, the cooldown decrease with the Doom Fist that is disgusting stuff. Should be a pretty free kill on KSA. Dying pretty late there is not uh, not the worst thing in the world. You stall the payload a little bit, but. Pixel only going to set up super far forward. Haven't got the rush available to them, but they could just beat into them if they wanted to and uh, force Kalex to use his. Ooh. Okay, oh, KSA is actually going to switch off of the Ramatra. It's going to be the Arisa now, and that is a little bit better, so you don't just get punched into oblivion since you have the Fortify, but you are getting back to this point a little bit slower if Kalex isn't there to help speed you in. You can play under this bridge, though. That's where you'll see KSA set up, but Quartz... Oh. That was perfect. Just peeking over the edge, knowing Quartz was playing all the way at the back. Chase pops the Meteor Strike, hunting for a target. B comes through. Chase, yeah, about 1,000 HP to deal with now. Twist of Minds. Gonna have to try and just stay alive, wait for this overhealth to burn off, but uh, not to be, especially with this duplication coming out onto the Tracer. Oh, can they check? Can they get this kill? I don't think so. No, surely not. Oh, duplicate a pulse bomb. Goes wide, but you might as well throw it out. And then this <laughs> is the checkpoint for Exoblivione. Okay. They're in good stead now. Wow. Yeah, it looks great. It looks great for Exoblivione now. All coming up on that Doom Fist Chase has been able to play so aggressive, and they are marking these cooldowns. No fade from Moira. No recall from Tracer. No power slide from Quartz. Go after it. Oh, that was close. Staying alive with Shockwave. Only just still managed to get a kill. Oh, crispy! Oh my god. <laughs> that was ridiculous. 180 there from Quartz. Okay, in the sky. He ate a pulse. He ate a pulse. That's going to at least uh, give them a little bit of reprieve. And they've also stolen the bot heroes. So Exit Movie only are going to have to act, and they're going to have to act fast. UB does go down to a slam, so they are going to touch before the checkpoint gets uh, tagged. And Coalesce is doing a lot, too. My word. Okay, Canel super low. Did she get a damage orbit? No way he dies to damage orb. No, all good. Suzu. We're chilling. We're vibing. Skill Twisted orb. Minds Skill orb. Is, trust me, it's as scary as it looks, especially when it's fired by a pro. <laughs> KSA super low. Here's the rush rose. Canel just on top of the point now. It's going to be a rough fight for Twisted Minds. With Slay already dead, yeah, it's already over. Exoblivione just in completely different sorts right now. They look much improved coming from uh, map number two to map number three. Gonna have to push it past this checkpoint, regain control of those forward spawns too. Well, the nice thing about the Doomfist is that you don't have to go against the other tank. Like, you kind of ignore them. is not your problem. is not your focus. You're after that back line. Quartz is going to switch over to the Cassidy, so you do have a bit more pressure with something like the Mag Grenade to help burst down a target. But did you see, oh, did you see how much damage? That was close. <laughs> Let's go for a small Exo Lister, and they got a lot of ults coming into this fight. I'm gonna stop him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not me, that's not me, that's not me. I'm chilling, I'm chilling, I'm getting out. Let's play under current. Yeah, Rose is walking. That's why I'm chilling. Yeah, 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 I'm coming, I'm coming. Body hull, body hull. Rose is one, Rose is one, Rose is one, Rose is one. Rose is one, Rose is one, Rose is one. Rose is one, Rose is one, Rose is one. 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 Rose Nice, good shot. Nice. We won. Yeah, keep on, keep on. Go, 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 go. Really nice disengage there, Rose. They end up backing out. They sp spot the Arissa, used all the cooldowns, and was like, well, he can just collapse on the Arissa now. Free pulse bomb, easy collapse. Exit Bivione, nearing that 100 meter mark.
Yeah, KSA sadly could not eat that pulse bomb, but will go back to spawn to switch over to the Malka. Uh, so a bit of a compositional switch up here, but still pretty exploitable versus something like the Doomfist if you're not too careful. You could kind of just punch the Malka out and isolate him. Oh, I thought maybe going for UB there, but Quartz is definitely another good target. High noon, surely gets punched out of that. Yeah, there was no way. You could just sneak up below him. Doom's in trouble, though. That Magnate hindering him, regardless of that uh, power block in place. Good four tap from Quartz, too. All right. A bit more of a... Uh, oh, I thought he was just going to emote on the payload. You know, mad respect for that. <laughs> Twisted Minds are on a little bit more of a comfortable comp, it feels like now, with the Malga. A little bit more comfortable, but look at how those close spawns are going to affect the rest of this map. Exible Leone respawn just like that. They're back in the middle of the fight. They can play in this neutral, uh, but Twisted Minds still have their work cut out for them. They need this first checkpoint. There's only two minutes left, really, so win this next fight, win the next one, too. I was really smart from Cloud there. Triple blinking onto the point to stop it from getting uh, too far. It does get away from them, but they've already killed Quartz. Very immobile. It oh my god, okay. Well, Grisby, wrong place, wrong time. Wrong place, wrong time for the Tracer, too. Okay, Slay's just kind of holding it down with the Kiriko. Yeah, you can do that sometimes. If you hit the headshots, of course. Checkpoint. Okay, they end up capping it as well. Ex Oblivione, they're still finding kills with UB falling over. And remember, Ex Oblivione still have the lead here. So Twisted Minds, regardless of them capping, they've still got a long way to go. That's going to be Twisted Minds backing up as well. They do unlock those forward spawns, so it's going to be another neutral fight in the middle of Esperanza. But this bridge territory is going to be so important. And it's going to be Yubi switching over to the Symmetra as well, so Teleporter to also go in. Okay, okay. Shades of uh, Blizzard World. Okay, Quartz is already dead. Second fight in a row has been picked off first. TP, a little bit of fake he wanted to get onto the high ground. Chase gets chased, ironically enough, by the Sim. I mean, realistically, you want to get out of there anyway because of that rush. But now Shockwave trying to turn the tides of the war here as KSA just dives in onto the back line. But Shockwave is ready and waiting for him with that power slide. They're still juggling the point here, Rose. And this is very good for Exoblivion. They're burning time. They're waiting for spawners to come back. They know Twisted Minds can't push. No, I mean, you're still uh, looking at Twisted Minds having to win two team fights in a row in order to take the lead back from Ex Oblivione, and they're running out of time. 40 seconds left now, sub 40, and Ex Oblivione can just play defensively with this bot. They don't have to throw everything in the kitchen sink at this one. Uh, they just they just have to win the fight. It's, it, this is the last one, potentially. Yeah, they can make this last fight guaranteed, right? I mean, 20 seconds ago would be last fight anyway, but they can just guarantee an OT just holding up here. They don't need to push. They don't need to press the issue. They got 40 plus meters uh, in the lead right now. 10 seconds to go. KSA nearing that cage. And that teleport is going to put them under the bridge and actually just uh, zips past Ex Oblivione. But here's the rush. KSA in trouble. Cage comes in, but making good use of it. Uh, no, KSA is not. He does receive the sound barrier. Yes, but Quartz is dead yet again. The carry for Twisted Minds falls over. And Ex Oblivione are just roundhousing Twisted Minds right now. This is a very different look from Ex Oblivione. The substitution of Cloud coming in and coming up clutch. Ex Oblivione are going to take us to a map number four now. Sometimes it takes just a little bit of a change up there, maybe get a fresh perspective, a fresh player into the roster. And we really saw the amount of flexibility that Ex Oblivione had in real time with this particular DPS duo. We know what Cookie can do on the Sojourn, right? We've seen it in action time and time again for the main stage as well as the group stage. But when you do have Cloud in that roster, you get to play the Tracer and then Shockwave gets to go crazy on basically any hero under the sun. So fantastic set from Ex so and it looked so good yeah i mean picking off quartz three times in three fights like oh, they're picking them off first too it's not even like just randomly throughout the fight like that is perfect play from ex oblivione like quartz is uh, one of the star carries for that team and you got to shut him down at some point and why not first right if you can get a stick if you can get a railgun from across the map very different ex oblivione right now as we uh, go into map number four next row suravasa is going to be up next Ooh, 
Ooh, that's exciting. I feel like Sir Vaso just flashpoints so much chaos and really plays into the strength of both of these teams. So I feel like that one's going to be an absolute banger. Uh, but when we look at just how much impact all of the DPS players had, it's really no secret as to why they were the target focus of both of these teams. Even Yubi, right? With the Symmetra or the Tracer, Yubi was such an annoyance in the back line. And having the Symmetra felt like it was a really big boon to this Malga composition, but it also left some of your teammates vulnerable if you're not able to stack on top of each other. And especially when you have to play the payload, Quartz isn't necessarily able to do that with something like the Sojourn. Ooh. Like, uh, KD, the gap is wow. pretty big. I mean, only 40 meters separated them, but it was Exo really uh, just kind of taking over the game. Suravasa as well. And I like that you brought up uh, the strengths of both teams because I think Twisted Minds, especially with you being playing the sim, I think it's a very good map to play the sim on. And uh, KSA, not much success on the Malga on that map specifically, um, and the Ram too for that matter, but he can just be so much, uh, he could just be so much of a menace and just enabled by the teleports from Yubi. So we'll see what they end up wanting to play on this next one but Twisted Minds might have the edge here with how fast and how good they are as a team rotating with the Sim TPs. Um, Suravasa too being, uh, like kind of thinking about how the maps, uh, or the points, sorry, are laid out, especially that first one, you can just kind of ping pong back and forwards if you really want to. That gap doesn't really need to be closed quickly. We're just like, okay, TP to your back line, we'll TP back if we need to. Like, and a lot of the points to be fair as well, have these small little high grounds that you can kind of take control of too. I'm like, I'm just, I'm going crazy with the moves here. Uh, but that's how you play Sim. You're just like TP here, TP here, TP here, TP here. Um, but yeah, Suravasa, it looks like a good match move. for uh, for that emote in the game for Sim. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Let's have a listen to the winning <laughs> comms, though. Ex Oblivione, they're coming back in this series. Let's see how the final few moments uh, ended up getting broken down for them. Mago low, Mago low, Mago low, Lucio one, Lucio one, Lucio one. Nice. Nice, man. We fuck. We were nice. We were bro. Com sounding great. Look, they're back in. They're locked in. And I'd be surprised if we see a substitution here. Obviously, we'll find out in a minute. Suravasa is up next. Twisted Minds, one control, worth keeping in mind. Uh, although, Suravasa, Flashpoint, not control, but extremely similar in how it ends up playing out. Wouldn't be too surprised. Twisted Minds just roll out UB on Sim. Put KSA on the Malga, which is extremely good at. Mm -hmm. And then just have uh, just the, the classic back line, the Kiri, the Lucio, and then just roll out Quartz on. Well, just Quartz can play whatever he wants. He's too good. Uh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> so true, though. <laughs> Actually, whatever Quartz plays, it's great. No, I have no notes for it. Uh, but yeah, for Suravasa, I agree with you there about the Symmetra. And I think one of the things that Ex Oblivione we have seen they can kind of struggle with is just how quickly they can take engagements. They are very easily able to give up space which means on flashpoint they are giving up a lot of percentage based on how fast those flashpoints really can tick up in progress and uh li shang i'm just thinking back to li shang you know i've got flashbacks to the positive kd there for exo but the map loss from all of the <laughs> right. point progress they gave away hey, if they can do it once they can do it again it's all good does it, your KD doesn't matter. If you win, you win. If you lose, you lose. You know, like it doesn't matter. In the end. <laughs> and sometimes you're just a target as well, right? I mean, UB was a big target in map number one. He racked up a lot of deaths, but a lot of the time that was just EXO. Like we just got to kill this guy. We, we've got to get him. We've got to make sure they can't get some crazy wacky TPs off. And you know, sometimes the, K the KDA really doesn't paint uh, the whole picture. Or almost ever in Overwatch, I'd argue, it's um, it's a tough metric, especially looking at individual players. Overall, as a team, you know, it uh, mm -hmm. paints a good picture but individually, uh, not so much. All right, Twisted Minds on the red wow. side, Ex Oblivione on the blue, and it will be, okay, you be with a TP. Yeah, this makes a lot of sense here. I'm surprised we're seeing Ex Oblivione here run out with the Moira. Again, I still think the Kiri's just a little bit better with the Suzu, but looks like they want to try and play fast, just wall someone off with Cloud's May, and then just run at them. Or even wall the TP too. Well, That's you also have the Ramatra as well. Yeah, I mean, like, you have the Ramatra, the, the May. I remember Cloud's May being so good for Team Finland. And you are able to not only wall off the teleporter, but you can also just wall off Quartz. Cloud's a little bit of trouble. 
Cod. I'm surprised it didn't block there. Okay, there's the block. I was going to say, Quartz taking an alternate angle, trying to get away. He does so with about 50 HP remaining. TP active once again. UB jumping in, jumping out. Classic like Sim TP strats. And there's the wall. Cardiac Overdrive will help uh, KSA live at least for the time being. Twisted Minds did end up getting the cap as well. So another kind of annoyance will be them just being able to insta disengage, insta re engage. But they disengage for a little bit too long and will be ex Oblivione finding this flip. Except finding the flip, they get control as well. They are forced to use the ice block, so Cloud is not going to have that recovery option for a little bit. But look at that, the That's teleporter. Suzu. Everybody is so low. Good, Suzu. Coalescence is doing a lot of work in the front line, but is it enough? Kellex going down to a disruptor shop, and there's the sound barrier from Crispy. And with Kellex dead, you know you're not going to worry about a single sound barrier coming out, an amp or anything. So they can just focus it down. KSA trying to just like get this off me. Like look at it, trying to find Crispy, who's just like pummeling in the in the back of the head with the uh, with the donuts there. Exactly the only that whole time as well. Rose had the point, so this might just be last fight here for Twisted Minds. But they got a lot of tools to try and uh, take this point. They do. I, I, you're looking at like Quartz's overclock, but these angles have been very difficult for Twisted Minds to find. Ex Oblivione have played way more predictive in terms of where they think that teleporter is going to pop up and super quick to react when they do see somebody actually go through that teleporter. But here's the overclock. Ooh, good wall. Uh, stops KSA getting the overrun into the back line. This course is time to shine. Always feels that way. The overclock doesn't really find much. There was a railgun charged up, and what a good wall from Yubi. Stops any damage coming in, and Shockwave's overclock just negated completely, and uh, Twisted Minds still have a sound barrier, and they get the point. Here comes the cage. KSA in trouble. Tries to get the overrun away, but no. That blizzard. I mean, the cage is like, oh, you're not locked in here with me. You're locked in here with... I'm locked in here with you, or, or something like that. Sound barrier comes out from Kellex to try and touch at the very last moment, but... Yeah, not to be. That will be Ex Olivione capping at the first point. A couple of little stagger kills coming in pretty late. I, stagger kill? Okay, a stagger kill onto Chase. Okay, not someone. Okay, no one else die. All good. Okay, Slay comes back and just kills Cloud. Not the cleanest cleanup I've ever seen. In fact, Kellex also kills Canale. So, okay, Ex Olivione, they do end up capping. You'd expect them to clean house here, but uh, Twisted Minds actually come up with the kills and they're going to get a fast rotation to next point. Okay. <clears throat> that, I wasn't expecting that. Uh, all the scrappiness, though, from both of these teams, I, it comes up in favor of Twisted Minds. They are able to get this flashpoint first. I, they do not believe there's going to be a recontest here from Ex Oblivione to stop this capture. Oh. And so there you go. And as they walk in, Quartz able to get the headshot there onto Shockwave. So Ex Oblivione, they have no choice here but to disengage. Otherwise, they run the risk of getting picked off before Shockwave can come back. All right, KSA doing the smart thing there, going for the small retreat. So he doesn't get walled off. KSA just, he can't really that uh, play that far up as much as he really wants to, just uh, with fear of the wall, especially on this point where it is so enclosed. Coalescence, okay, focusing Kellex. Kellex went pretty low, but a TP onto the other side makes Canal just a 180 there. I mean, the Lucio is still taking a lot of damage. Same with Canal, has to fade into the back line. And there is the Annihilation, but not poor. Canal gets sniped out of midair. That annihilation getting absolutely nothing done for Ex Oblivione. A Swiss of Mines find a swift team kill. And the point too. This shouldn't be a, this should be a touch for Ex Oblivione, no way. No, I, I, I wonder there if a Crispy would have liked to use the sound barrier just to make that annihilation a little bit more impactful, but you don't have it now and you can even see Ex Oblivione. Um, Debating, debating whether or not they even want to go in at all here, but it's going to be a quick amp it up to go to the next flashpoint and start getting set up here in Palace. And I guess that's where the sound barrier can kind of come in clutch if you are worried a bit about something like uh, the, I guess, cage fight from KSA. But I feel like Ex Oblivione, they've got some really great options just outside of having an ultimate to deal with Quartz. Not only the May Wall, but also the Ramatra Shield can block off those sight lines and force Quartz to potentially use a power slide to find a different angle. There's ways to shut it down outside of the photon barrier that Yubi has on the flip side. Right, yeah, and getting that reposition can be pretty deadly because you're pretty vulnerable after that. Or taking a small off angle, trying to find a headshot. Hits one body shot, instantly rips the overclock. There's another overclock on the other side of things. Shockwave 
And Cloud just receiving that over health from the sand barrier, so they're not going to get insta-destroyed by the railgun, but UB will. A TP onto the high ground. Thought he was behind cover, but he wasn't not quick enough at the very least. KSA overrun into the back line. It's Twisted Minds now. They do kind of... I mean, they do end up getting a couple of little kills here, but it should just be the cleanup. There it is. Ex Oblivione capping this point first. Okay. Cage fight though for Dark. Twisted Minds, they can come back in and use that, but as we saw the, from the first time that KSA used that ultimate, Cloud just pops the Blizzard on top. It totally negates the ultimate. We actually saw that combination of ultimates when we saw Aya yeah go for the Mei and the Mauga themselves, having the Blizzard to combo with their own cage fight, but it's a defensive tool here for Ex Oblivione. Love it. Yeah, this rush versus the Coalescence, unfortunately for Slay, it's not online just yet. Good wall too. I mean, that cage fight's really nice if you can provide support to the Mauga, but Cloud with just the ice wall completely stops any sort of healing or speed or whatever, Suzu, whatever, from getting through. They kill him, and uh, again, this might be the last fight here on this point. There is still a chance to touch. They aren't too far away from it, but it's going to be a tough one if they uh, manage to do so. With 20% to go, Twisted Minds are going to have to make their mind up fast. And with a kill onto Kaneo, who was just on high ground like that? Okay, now you definitely touched. Now you might just win this right here. Yeah, I think Slay has the Katune Rush too, just in to ensure a victory if they want oh, it. that's not good. Okay, might be okay though. Turret MVP for UB there. Just uh, frying crispy a little bit. All right, there's the point flip. Oh, the little shot. Oh, okay, letting the turret kill him. <laughs> Fair enough, all right. You're right. Thought MVP. about it. <laughs> yeah, actually, he did, yeah. He charged up the right click, was like, nah, I'll let the turret kill him. More disrespect that way, you know? More BM. I like it. I think so. <laughs> it pops up in the Elim feed that a turret <laughs> exactly. killed you. Very funny. Maybe, maybe not for uh, <laughs> Shockwave, but still. Well, Ex Oblivione, while they do have to give up control of that Flashpoint, they get to come in with the Annihilation, this time with the Sound Bearer at its back if he wants it. Plus, Shockwave has another Overclock, this time this without Yuffie nice. having that Photon Barrier in line. Shockwave just carrying behind this pillar. Same with the rest of Ex Oblivione right now. A perfectly timed to be there. Crispy saving Shockwave and Cloud. However, once again, this wall from UB is going to be quite frustrating for Ex Oblivione to get through. As you can see, everybody just uh, happy to just fight on the ground now because they got that giant wall to hide behind. And uh, with Twisted Minds taking this point, I mean, 90%. Shockwave gets one kill, sure. I mean, Cloud with another one. But is it going to be enough? Another UB turret kill? Really putting in the hours right now with these turrets. They should definitely get, uh, be getting paid overtime. Time, at least uh, at least a little bit. Shockwave ends up sliding up to high ground. There's a doom fist for Chase to try and get yet another touch. It looks fairly even until Quartz said no. And the Twisted Minds, that'll be two points in Suravasa. One point away from taking the series and locking their place in the grand finals. Oh, this is so close. Ex Oblivione, they had to give up so much there in order to try to find the victory. The Doomfist now getting changed back over to the Ramatra to make their way over to this tiny little flashpoint. We've got ruins. This is great sight lines here for the Sojourns, but Ex Oblivione have more tools in their kit with the Ramatra and the May to shut off Quartz's sight lines. All right, want to put on the pressure pretty early. Does Kaneo and the rest of the team, they use that coalescence, but a lot of assists in that kill feed kill. As Cloud ends up going down to some straight Cheerios, some donuts, whatever you want to call them. This point's going to be so hard for them to take now, especially without Cloud. Their only real tool to try and stop KSA getting away with murder right on the uh, on the Malga. And so Twisted Minds are able to just run over them. You haven't really got much sustain left and like uh, no wall and this might be it. Nice little stagger. Surely he doesn't get a kill. No. Really nice stagger, in fact. Twisted Minds making sure Shotwave paid every single second he was alive there. Oh, man. I mean, that gives Twisted Minds just so much flashpoint progress, knowing that Ex Oblivione have to regroup. Cloud, you are dancing with fire right there. I don't know why you would stick your head out if you see Quartz across the way, but hey, I, maybe if you're able to get a quick pick here. But Shockwave is back. Has the disruptor shot out. Ex Oblivione, they got one chance and they're walking into that cage fight. What a cage from a KSA there. They just, uh, you just set Quartz up for success. Already got three kills, looking for more. Shockwave in his sights. There's another one. 
on, give him the ace. Sure, why not? I mean, also, you're staggering right now. I mean, we're up to 80%, and the Ram, oh, gets pulled back to spawn. Canel with a clutch life weaver pick. Actually grabs him back, but have they got enough time here? There's one person to touch, Rex and Livioni, but they're not going to survive all too long. Crispy's on there, does trigger. No, he doesn't trigger OT. He manages to get pooped away, and Twisted Minds take the series three to one and book themselves to the finals against Ents. That was a clean map. Sir Vasa was just theirs. From the get-go, Twisted Minds had a great idea of how they wanted to play out those points. The Symmetra pick right away, the Mauga as well. Stack, 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 stack. And that Ramatra composition just wasn't enough to do the same value stacking as we saw from that Mauga. Yeah, that cage at the very end was just sublime. As Crazy. the entirety of Ex Oblivioni tried to like just basically flood out near to the point. It was like, okay, lock him down. And then Quartz just sat on high ground with the railgun. It was perfectly played there from a twisted mind to lock in their ticket to the finals against Ents in, in just moments. I mean, wow, what a series from Twisted Minds. And it looked like Ex Oblivion had a little something there on uh, Esperanza on the push map, but not to be. Twisted Minds with the W. Three and one, the series score overall. And uh, Desk, what do you make of that series? Great. Thanks, Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Joss. <laughs> no, I mean, I, it's great stuff from Twisted Mind. I mean, I think you guys, we all talked about it. Going into the match, how clean they're going to be looking, how scary they're going to be uh, for EXO, and it came true. I think there's a couple adaptations I really noticed from Twisted Minds in this series that I really liked is, number one, whenever they do play the rush comp with the Sim, right, they're ult kiting. We talked about the casters. When the ults come out, something like Kitsune Rush, so powerful when you're able to fight in it. But Twisted Minds doesn't give their opponents that opportunity. They're TPing out, they're speeding out, Malga overruns out. They have so many options to kite. And so, so many of these ult cycles from the other team that, that should be dominant team fight wins, they just get nothing. You, you know, you're fighting, you're fighting your demons because Twisted Minds won't give you any type of value on the ult. So I think that's giving them a ton of value. And then I think even more important than that was the adaptation of bringing out Yubi on the tracer when it's those echo dive comps, right? We saw Kevster and Kai against Ents where the echo and Sojourn are just free casting on you. They're doing so, so much damage and eventually you're getting overwhelmed. I think the tracer is gonna be crucial for Yubi to start to contest that. Kevster is not gonna be able to do nearly as much on the echo when there's a tracer constantly hunting him down and tracer actually has a, a sort of a sleeper synergy with mauga if you come grab that lifesteal buff from next to the mauga you go off on your merry way you hold the buff and you just become this incredibly hard to kill target as tracer with lifesteal uh it's kind of a scary scary concept to think about to trying to take a flank fight uh, yeah. against a hero like tracer who's already so potent in those spots yeah before we take a look at the match highlights let's quickly listen in on the uh winning moments uh from twisted minds take a look yeah, yeah, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, I can do it. I'd be out, I'd be out. I'd be out. I'm fine, fine, fine. Yeah, I'm fine, fine. I just shoot him, shoot him. My right. can't catch, eh? Can't shoot? Yeah, I'm fine, fine. Not beat, not beating. Second, 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 I mean, great stuff all around from Twisted Minds. I think that their DPS duo is just deadly, and that last uh, boop at the end was amazing as well. Yeah, I mean, this is a Twisted Minds team that is looking better than they did yesterday, and I do give them a pretty good chance against NC Esports now. Twisted Minds were the established number one in EMEA going into OWCS, and I feel like yesterday, NC Esports kind of dethroned them a little bit, but a chance for revenge here now. You gotta keep in mind, Twisted Minds, last year, they dominated in the True. European region. And so they've held this European crown for so long now that it's not until in NC Sports now with maybe some of the Overwatch League players coming back, like Kevster, Kai, for example, giving them that chance to take down a team like Twisted Minds. But in this series, though, we do gotta say uh, good job to Ex Oblivion. Right. Top three here mm -hmm. in OWCS. Huge upset yesterday against Space Station Gaming. And really, it, it was like competitive series, you know. We were we were on that Flashpoint map on Surabasa, and we're like, hey, maybe this would go to a map five. Uh, they're really going toe-to-toe -to -toe against a team like Twisted Minds, right? And a lot of these players haven't been established tier one Overwatch Esports players, right? Cookie, Crispy, Canal, they were not in the Overwatch League. Shockwave, obviously instrumental for this team in that carry role as a damage player but this is a feel-good story these are people who were given an opportunity here in OWCS in this open system the Swiss format leading into the group stage 
and they got an opportunity to compete against some of the very best teams in the region. And they did one heck of a job. Now you get top three, lots of circuit points there to maybe qualify for Dream Act Dallas in the end. So really, you gotta give credit to Exo Oblivione for making it. This Double part. points for stage two. Double points too. <laughs> I think Exo is definitely gonna be back hunting for those with great performances from whether the lesser known players or uh, established vets like Shockwave. I think they have a lot to build on. I don't think they really need to go back and make too many changes. Maybe, you know, in the end, this meta with, with the rush being so dominant looks great for Twisted Minds, but Exo on the dive was, was very sharp with a lot of threats, a lot of options on the team, and very good flexibility from Chase really keeping these things together. I do feel like, though, for Twisted Minds, the addition to, of Kellex on this team, every time we hear him in the comms, I mean, he's keeping things very calm and clean. And these are the clutch moments, right? This is you winning a huge series. So to be able to, like, stay calm, crucial. That's a great value Kellex adds to the team. Yep. And we're taking a look at the player of the match, and it is going to go to UB. You were talking about how great his tracer was and how he's going to be playing an important role for the Grand Finals match that's coming up next, right? It's so interesting. I think he really is the linchpin of the team strategy today, and, and I think he will be as well against Ents because whether if he's on Sim, the whole comp is going to play so differently, right? Even though that's the only hero you have to change from the Mauga um, strat to be playing, whether you're playing Sim or Tracer. With Sim, you're playing around these ult fights, you're playing around TP disengage. This barrier wall is incredibly potent when you fight around it. Really enables Mauga to not worry about his lack of, you know, damage mitigation when he's got a shield wall to play. However, sometimes that Tracer, I think, could be an, a much stronger pick, especially if the enemy gets too greedy with these DPS. They want to run Sojourn Echo, so much range spam. Even just one Tracer in the comp, now you start splitting up a lot more. Maybe the Kiriko follows your Tracer in. These flanks become deadly. That could open up more of the map for Quartz to work with, and we've seen what he can do with just a little bit of space. So these two picks, the Sim and the Tracer, it seems subtle to just change one hero, but really this opens up the comp to play two completely different styles of Overwatch with only one hero swap. Historically, that is a very potent tool to have in your pocket as a team because the enemy team might need to completely 180 their style and their heroes, and all you're doing is changing one hero back and forth. That's giving you a huge edge in the ultimate economy game, and with, with how important that is in the current meta with, you know, sound barrier, with, with Kitsune Rush, I mean, overclock, you do not want to be swapping your heroes all the time. And if Twisted Minds can force that kind of response from Ents, I don't know if what worked last time for Ents will work again. What do you think, Johnny? Do you think it's going to work or is it not going to work? I mean, I, I mean, we'll get closer to that finals matchup in a little bit. True. But, I, you know, I'm, I'm a bit cautious about putting Yubi on Tracer facing off against Kevster. You know, I actually do think the Twisted Minds, you like the Symmetra. It's what worked for you for the longest time. It's one of Yubi's strengths. And I feel like if you are going to beat NC Sports, you have to play the Symmetra, even if it is not unfavorable at times. I feel like outplaying the opposition with map positioning and teleporting around, that probably is, is what's going to give, you, give you the advantage in a series against us. All right, let's, quick, let's take a quick look at our brackets one last time. We're heading into the final match, the grand finals. What a week. What a week. Those are all the matches that were played in the main stage, stage one. We got some great matches, but it all ends with this final one, the grand finals. Team Ents versus Twisted Minds. This is the matchup we were waiting for. All stage long as well, NC Sports, you know, previously Owl Spray Check, uh, Booba Spray Check, and then we were picked up by NC Sports yeah. mid-stage, of course. This has been kind of the star team in the region after the success we saw from Team Finland at the World Cup, picking up the likes of Kai and Kevster, an incredible damage line. Now you face off again against Twisted Minds, who has held the crown of EMEA throughout all of 2023. So a matchup in the making and we're finally getting it to the Grand Finals. And it's just like, it's a it's a rematch just from yesterday. Mm, and like is. now we really don't know, you know, can Ents beat them again or is it gonna be Twisted Mind uh, being crowned the champions, right? All right, uh, before we go into that match, we're gonna give a little bit more time for Twisted Mind because that was, uh, you know, I'm pretty sure they need some rest before we'll they go, with, go into, yeah, drink go touch some grass, drink some water, no get touching. ready. Just talk about Overwatch. <laughs> Sure, why not? Uh, while, while we give them some time to, you know, recuperate, uh, remember you guys chat? Uh, we asked you guys for the uh, Superstar Chat winner uh, in the beginning of the show. And here were the nominees. We had Kai, Kevster, Shockwave, and Funny Astro. I think for all, all four of them, you know, they are all great players, but you guys made the decision and the winner was... Yes! Yes! <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, baby. Everybody's talking. None other than Come on, Ents come Kester. on. Everybody's Swear shocked. Yeah. Nobody wow. saw it coming. Wow. Let's go. Honestly, I'm a bit shocked. I think Kai had a really good chance as well. 
That's fair. That's but, fair. But it we is. Didn't, we didn't coordinate our nominees. I do feel like Twisted Minds got got a little a little yeah, captain not giving anybody. Yeah. You know, I feel like you know there are a lot of honorable mentions to a lot of those Twisted yeah, Minds guys. That's true. We probably should have nominated some of them. <laughs> Given that they're they're our top <laughs> two like, now. Maybe Quartz. I blame Jaws. I blame Jaws. <laughs> Jaws should have nominated someone from 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 Twisted Minds. <laughs> Yeah, it's your fault. It's your fault, buddy. Say That's sorry. Fine. Blame somebody else. Blame somebody else. We did our <laughs> job, but you didn't do yours. <laughs> yeah, but, but I mean, let's talk about Kefster. We I mean, got he, to. We got We to. all know how great of a player he is and like how flexible uh, of a player he is. And that played a really huge role in for, uh, for a team end, right? I mean, that last series, I think, really showed something I mentioned on the desk, which is that, right, like replicating the success of Kefster and Kai playing against Twisted Minds, it's easy to watch this and be like, yeah, just grab my, my Echo Kill your, your Sim every single fight back to back to back. But actually doing that is so insanely hard, right? There's so much team protection coming in from Twisted Minds. They're not leaving these players hanging on the flank, right? You know, Kepster's just hitting everything on Echo. <laughs> and like, if he does that, if he plays perfect, maybe you can't play around it. But it's such a huge ask for a player to be as consistent, as dominant as Kepster. I mean, I can't think of a hero more perfect than Echo for Kepster because that's his strength. He can play anything. I mean, this yeah. guy copies yeah. tanks. He knows exactly what to do. He's still getting max value on those heroes. He plays everything in the game. I mean, I've seen, like, he queues support. He's like, could be top 10 on support. Some of these players, like, they're just different talents. The, I, I promise you, Kevster could play support or tank and be on an elite pro team. I'm pretty sure. Like, I, he really can. Like, that is very rare. Can you copy this? Uh, can you copy the Lucio? Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a team player. He'll do that. <laughs> yeah. You know, copying Mauga, cardiac overdrive, yeah. get it going. That is just OP, honestly. Yeah, that is OP. That is OP. I yeah, love doing that. Fun, it's actually. so satisfying. You fight the other Mauga, you're like, how does it feel, bro? Like, <laughs> like it. it it always amazes me watching these kind of players like Kevster who could play all like so many different heroes in the highest level, mm. right? And it's just like amazing to me how like talented these these guys are. It's yeah. it's unreal. I will say I think his challenge I'm in this so far away from in, that. In this <laughs> next series. Scary. Yeah, it's like a it's like a different a different world. I see people yeah. all do this. I'm like, yeah, I, I don't think I can do that. I'm no. not gonna play. I'm not gonna play for that. I'm gonna I'm a team player. I'll play. I'll do my job. We can apply ourselves as hard as we possibly could. No, and no, we'd you, never even get there. You gotta start. We gotta go back in time about ten yeah, years to be to be. Yeah, that is level. true. We are old heads. Well, you're, you're gonna say that I could go back twenty years. I I probably still <laughs> can't do that. <laughs> yeah, gotta believe in yourself, Dan. But Kevster, I think he's got his work know. cut out for him next series. Yeah. I think I think Twisted Minds has retooled a little bit. I mean, you mentioned the Sim being strong, but I don't think Yubi needs to one v one beat Kevster on Tracer. I don't think that maybe is even possible for many people. But if he just forces Kevster off the Echo to a Tracer mirror, yeah. that might be enough, right? Yeah. Take some of the damage off the field. No more Echo copy yeah. Malga on the field. Much less spam damage. No focusing beam. No focusing beam. Some yeah. of these kill, like even if you're just dueling Kevster and you don't die. That could be enough. That could be enough because Twisted Minds, yeah. Twisted Minds hits very, very hard with their rushes. And I, I mean, I wonder, I think they've adapted really well. I think what they've shown is exciting to me. And I think we might get a close grand final, even though oh, ends took that, that upper bracket final. Yeah. All right, everyone. The time is almost upon us. We're going to crown our first OWCS stage champions with the EMEA grand finals up next. We'll be back right after this break.
victory is at hand. Interesting. Very interesting. Cupid, I shall play. What are you looking at? Keep moving forward. Best of luck to you all. Welcome back, everybody. EMEA Stage 1 Grand Finals. It is Twisted Minds versus their opponents. NC Sports. They've been waiting. They're, They're ready waiting. to go. They're ready to go. I mean, and also, this is gonna, going to be a little bit different from all the other matches because this is best of seven, right? Am I Grand good? Finals, they got one. more time. Right? That big Long one. Series. More, more maps. Yeah. More maps. And also, guys, uh, I don't know. I think this is going to be a close match. Chat, you need to uh, submit your predictions. So who do you guys think is going to win? Is it going to be Twisted Minds or is it going to be Ends? Let us know in chat. Uh, do, the, uh, do, the, do the preds. Uh, put in your uh, votes. All right. Let's uh let's start chatting about uh, each team uh, one by one. Starting off with Twisted Minds first. Twisted Minds, I think they are phenomenal. I think we got to talk about we've talked about the DPS to death because they are phenomenal players. But I really want to highlight here. I want to talk about KSA. I feel like he's been lights out on the Malga. He's been the one player pretty much in the world, right, left standing in these elimination brackets, who is continuing to play the Mauga and really still making it work, right, still making it look strong and, 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 and viable. So I think his play has been critical for the team. The flex to Ram really caught Exobliviony off guard here on um, the first map, and uh, I think gave a lot more potential to the team. Showed that even though Tristan Mines plays a ton of this Malga comp, they can play a lot of, they have a lot of options in terms of their hero uh, competency and flexibility. So they're not a one-trick team. They just feel like this is their best look at the moment. Um, so I feel like KSA, he's a huge part of that. Keeps his opponents guessing. And then Slay as well on this Kiriko. I mean, he's had a couple huge moments, crucial pickoffs. And when you're playing this Malga comp, you know, you're very strong in the frontline rush, but sometimes those flankers can get in and get the best of your backline. So Slay has had to fight for himself a number of times and has come up looking very scary on the Kiriko. I think that pushing away those flankers once or twice, killing that Lucio when he comes in for a, for a play, he's gonna have to think twice next time. And, and that hesitation could really be punished by players like Quartz and Yubi. I mean, you mentioned about just, I just wanna go back to KSA being able to play different heroes. Mm -hmm. um, I think it was KSA who played Sigma uh, during World Cup, right? Yeah. And he was really good at that too. So, so like you said, 
uh, they're not only one tricking Omaga, they have a lot of different options. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about Twisted Minds. Johnny, give us a deep dive. I heard that you have a telestration. Yeah, so we've seen a lot of Symmetra from Twisted Minds, and I just wanted to showcase two examples of how you can utilize the teleporter and what we'll see from Twisted Minds. So I got one clip from yesterday, and I got one clip from today's match, I guess, Ex Oblivioni, actually. So I had this in store from yesterday's matchup, um, but we didn't get to show it. So we're on Blizzard World right here, and we got Kitsune Rush on the side of both teams. So obviously, if you're playing the Maga composition, you want to like stack up, right? You want to play all as one. And so we see that they are right here standing on this high ground. And what they're going to do is they're going to teleport into this into this little corner right here. And they're going to utilize the Kitsune Rush and the Cardiac Overdrive. The problem is they like to do a lot of five man teleporters. So as we go ahead and play this out, we'll see that they go in. But NC Sports, they're ready for this. And they're actually going to rotate around this death ball coming in from Twisted Minds. And instead, you can see here, pause. You can go ahead and pause it right here. And you can see like the positioning we're seeing from NC Esports. They already have two different lanes set up. So they have two different kind of angles that they're shooting here. Now, I do want to point out that something probably goes wrong here. But as you can see, KSA, he's far away from his team. There might have been a call to like, hey, we should disengage, we should teleport out. And not everyone did it. But you can see the idea here that because Kevster actually has this duplicate, they can actually turn this fight around with Cardiac Overdrive and Kitsune Rush themselves. And then Esports is going to win this fight. So. NC Sports ready for this. You can go ahead and play it out. NC Sports, they are ready for these teleports coming in from the side of Twisted Minds. Now, something else you can do with teleporter though, if you don't want to five man in, this is a clip we saw from Ex Oblivione, the same map. And what you're seeing here is that they're actually going to use the teleporter to put quartz on the high ground. So now you have the rest of your team, you're doing a big rotation around here, and you're going to push the cart. But meanwhile, you have quartz playing this high ground with a different line of sight, a different angle, and that is going to make it harder for Exibor Rionis to play this. So Shockwave, he is on this Echo, similar to Kevster yesterday, but you can go ahead and play this out, and you can just see how Quartz is sitting on this high ground from a different angle and just putting pressure on Ex Oblivione. So given that NC Sports, they respond so well to these big teleport rotations coming in from Twisted Minds, maybe you can utilize the teleporter more to put Quartz in a position to poke the Echo more and try to get these off angles. And maybe that could be a recipe for success here for Twisted Mind. So a couple of different ways to utilize the teleporter. Maybe they can change things up a little bit, their play style or their rotations, and maybe they can find an edge here against NC Sports. Yeah, they got a lot of tools to work with. Let's take a look at their opponents, Team Ends. Another scary, scary team, right, Jack? Uh, right, Jake? Jack? Yeah. Jake? <laughs> yeah, I think, I mean, same, same as last time, we talked so much about Kepster and Kai. I think people, these are household names at this point in Overwatch, but I really want to highlight the veteran presence of Crimzo and Masa in the back line. I think they're going to be crucial. Usually, those are going to be the players who call these rotations. Are we going to flip the map? Are we going to, like, come from a different angle? What are we doing to respond to those TPs? The pressure is going to be put heavily on Crimzo and Masa. When that TP comes in, you've got about one, two seconds to make the right read and get to the right position before you get team wiped, right? So it has to be perfect usage of the speed amp from Masa, TPs and saves from Crimson and the Kiriko, or the decision to just turn the fight around, commit ults, uh, and, and just take the engagement where you stand, as, as we've seen in your example, Johnny. So I think a lot of pressure on the supports to make the right calls. And on Vestola, if he does play the Sarissa, I mean, I think he is going to be pretty uncontested, uh, able to get in and potentially shut down Quartz and Yubi. So I think the DPS on the side of Twisted Minds, they're going to have to face down an Orisa who, when you do play the Mauga, sure, sometimes with a Sim, maybe you could cook the Orisa, but a lot of the times, if you're going to go for those TPs, you know, getting booped off the TP, if you're not very sharp five-man TP all at once, you're getting booped off by the Orisa, one DPS caught alone, and that's just, that's just food for an Orisa, right? She's hungry. So, honestly, for Vestola, I think he's got his work cut out for him. He needs to disrupt some of those TP plays before they come through. There's a lot of individual playmaking potential there that really could shut down uh, uh, Twisted Minds plays before they before they get going and so i think twisted minds the pressure is going to be on them i do think though i think this tracer swap not going to play the whole series certainly but if you can just force kevster off echo you just take it to a tracer mirror normally that you know kevster's pretty happy with that but i think against the mauga this echo is a crucial piece without yeah. the echo you lack a lot of that kill potential on mauga the focusing beam the copy on the mauga very potent skills and if you just take those away from kevster yes he's terrifying on the tracer too but the hero kit is just a little bit easier for players like Quartz to work around. Team. Yeah. All right, well, let's take a look at the first three maps that are going to be played for Ents and Twisted Minds. Here is going to be the map. We're kicking things Nepal. off with Paul. 
Are you guys surprised by this pick from Twisted Minds? We haven't seen a ton of Nepal so far. Well, what do you guys think? Look at what's available to them. What are they right? it's, it's Nepal or it's Ilios, yeah. right? So Ilios is probably the worst Malga map, map in the entire Koth pool. So, so this is honestly, this is Ents forcing them, you know, with the Lijing Tower ban, if anything, that's the most surprising. Like, wouldn't Lijing Tower be a good map um, for Twisted Minds? It would it usually, at least two of three, maybe are, are, are Malga favored. The, the Ram looked good on Gardens as a way to respond to the Echo. So I, I, I'm a little bit surprised to see that ban of all. So I wonder, maybe Twisted Minds has been holding on to some strategies uh, in that lower bracket final, waiting, ready for this match. We call them the favorite. And when, when you're the favorite, maybe you do kind of keep some things in the pocket with the confidence that you can make it to the grand finals without showing your full hand. So I'm curious about your thoughts on Nepal then, because you, you are the damage player of the two, and uh, you are less washed than I am. But <laughs> Hemster does less have washed. quite a lot of opportunity to play Echo on Nepal if you wanted to. You can mm. utilize the high, uh, the, 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 the Shrine, for example, the Village. We see a lot of, you know, historically teams playing far and stuff like that on Village. You can rain down from above. And then Sanctum, pretty good map for Kevster too, if you wanted to play the Tracer, you know, can wrap around there. So um, it could be a good map for Kevster still here on Nepal. I will say Echo can do a lot, but so you can also, as a rush comp, just force the cap and flip it over and over again. And even if you're losing fights we've seen how twisted minds they can close out maps even though the stats don't look great for them they're still winning the maps by forcing objectives so i do think there's a way uh, even on a map like nepal there's a reason they, they prefer this over ilios yeah all right let's jump right into the game i mean we're looking at the viewer predictions though 82 oh, percent no that for is well, that hold is on wrong. i mean ents won last time right you got to give it credit sure, but 82 percent wow hugely favoring for ents uh, against 40? twisted minds yeah i Come thought it was being chat. i thought it was gonna be a lot closer let's ask our uh, casters straws and necra are you guys surprised 82 percent it's quite high but ents have only lost it's one map high. So, in the brackets, so, uh, you know, and it was against Twitter Minds to be fair, but still, you know, maybe a 70 30, you know? There's a lot of Ents fans in the chat, I know that for sure. Well, how could you not be? <laughs> These are players that you all know and love from following them in the Overwatch League. They've all had individual pop off moments, and to put them all together on one team, I mean, hey, that squad was so good that Team Ents picked them up for their organization. That speaks volumes to just how dominant they've really been in EMEA. Yeah, I mean, they've been crazy. I mean, the DPS line, especially for this meta, is just is just ridiculous. Can Twisted Minds, after, you know, the warm-up or whatever, right, uh, the last series going 3-1, to one, can they uh, kind of slot in here, regain composure? First to four as well, mind you. So, oh one map more potentially i'm not sure it's going to be that much of a blowout you know i think they're going to at least take a couple here if not maybe go all the way it's going to be a close one grand finals here in the mid event or the main event sorry uh, for eu ents versus twisted minds we're going to load into map number one now as ents like i mentioned before rose have only lost one map in the bracket and it was to twisted minds so uh, they did end up uh, obviously knocking down into the losers after that victory Mm -hmm. And there hasn't been really much else that they've been challenged with. Like, it's been a pretty easy ride for them by the looks of it. It has, but I think this Nepal map can throw a spanner in the works. I am interested to see why Twisted Minds ended up picking this map, but honestly, if I had to call out anything, the ban on Li Zhang, they did get their butts handed to them by Kevster's Echo, so I could totally understand the logic of going ahead and banning that out, and then you go to a map that uh, you can brawl out a little bit better, especially when you look at Sanctum, maybe limiting some of the potential there of that Echo but hey, there you go. I think that this is something that you can really see still come to fruition, especially on Shrine. That Echo is still a problem. Yeah, it's still a massive issue. And like Jake was saying too, and I think he put it perfectly, so the perfect hero for Kevster, such a glass cannon. You can get so much done so quickly. You can get in, get out after just deleting somebody. Trying to delete Quartz there on the sidelines, but Quartz lives to tell the tale. Kai and Massa are actually the first to fall for uh, Ents as Twisted Minds starting off strong. First cap, okay. First cap going the way of Twisted Minds. This is something that the desk talked to that if you're going to play like the Ramatra or even the Malga, you have to play as a team of five. And that is something that Twisted Minds put on full display in their previous match. 
And so they are going to make a swap. Vestola going over to the Orisa. Orisa versus Ramatra. We really like to see this matchup because it comes down to those cooldown usages between the Ramatra and the Orisa. And Vestola's Orisa has been marking down the backline so well that it might make those decisions from those supports just a little bit harder. Vestola went sub 10 HP there. Railgun headshot from Quartz <laughs> is going to buy them a little bit of time. That's a, okay, a bit of an early Suzu. We'll see if that does make a difference. There's now Kai and the rest of the team just surging onto the point. KSA firmly in their sights. Did end up potting, uh, popping the Nemesis form there, Rose, who's holding the arms up, but there's not enough healing, especially when five players' events were just shooting at him. Coalescence being used by Twisted Minds too. Much to be uh, trying to stall out for some additional time here. Pretty quick ult to actually build up. It's actually Yubi sticking Master. And now Quartz can have a little say in this fight. Terror Surgeons are going out. Forces Quartz all the way back. Oh, the oh, the punch. The quick shot punch into Kevster. The pulse bomb goes wide. And Twisted Minds end up re uh, like still holding on to the point. 75%. They lose KSA at the start, but it doesn't matter. They're completely unwavering in that fight. As KSA now joins them once again. That Annihilation and Soundbar available for Twisted Minds. Ents throwing a lot in there to try and make that happen, but Twisted Minds shut them out. And now look at this. Kevster's off the Echo, going over to the Tracer, and this kind of feels over if Ents can't have a clean engagement here. Master's dead. Come down to Masa using the sound barrier, and he's dead. Masa, no sound barrier. I mean, Twisted Minds can just run in. Just WM1 straight to the back line. Overtime is here. Everybody's trapped up on the high ground. Kalex and Slay taking the 2v2 on height. And just like that, Twisted Minds a 99 to 0. I mean, Kev's just here with Marsa. They both get this sound barrier, but the likelihood of them getting a kill, let alone a, a team wipe, is pretty unbelievable there. And even a stick on top from Yubi. Wow, what a start from Twisted Mind. Very much warmed up. They're in the server, they're in the game, they're in the series. They're ready to rock and roll. 100% to zero to start it out. Zero. <laughs> Quartz with a didn't ask in the chat. The match chat. <laughs> <laughs> Just put a hit, hit, it, hit him with a C9. Uh, it's such a tiltable moment if you see that, because it's like everyone was dead. That's not a C9. <laughs> C9 expert over here. That didn't happen. Uh, but yeah, what a what a lights out performance here by Twisted Minds being able to get that point capture 100 to 0. One way to switch Kevster off of this Echo, play Ramatra. Ramatra is not as easily susceptible to the sticky bombs, the focus beam that Kevster's Echo was so deadly for in yesterday's match. And so now Kevster uh, gonna try it again, but the angles that you have to find here, Quartz is gonna get a little bit better sight lines depending on the corner he's playing from. And Ants, I almost have to expect them to try to play underneath the point. Yeah, it's a little bit rough here for Kevster, although when you are fighting on this straight, it's pretty easy to spam as the Echo. Nice little spear's been there That's from Vestola, pushing KSA away. But Quartz with such nice sight lines doesn't chose to use the railgun just yet. Ends up hitting Kevster of all people, but Kevster <laughs> just re-enters, gets the sticky bomb kill, then the focusing beam kill onto Slay. Puts himself on the point as well. It'll be the uh, first cap. Oh my god. The sticky bomb act tracking Kelex through the skies there as he descended onto point to try and uh, stop Kevster from getting away with anything and then end up capping first. My god. It's just such a freak of nature, man. He, like, he, the guy was built to play Overwatch. Like, it is ridiculous. His aim and just uh, precision on the Echo is second to that. Oh, so clean. And like, especially if you're able to get a big pick onto a support, a DPS, like it just blows up Twisted Mind's game plan there when you can't go in as a full team of five, you can't stack like they want to. Well, Twisted Minds are going to do the same thing again here. Just try and put KS in a position where they can uh, do some damage. And Kevster handily dealing with Quartz, which over to the Soge and an instant headshot kill onto Kellex. Reset after reset. The Twisted Minds get team wiped and then continue to hold. No free railgun from Kevster, but he's already done his damage. <laughs> If he got that railgun, that would have been insane. Uh, but no, no such luck. And so, gonna have 50% of this point as Twisted Minds make their way back in. They do have some really good tools to work with. This coalescence, especially if Ents want to take this high ground fight, that's an easy trigger to pull. Quartz playing themselves on the point, trying to get an angle to Kepster on the back, and an angle he did find. There you go, Twisted Minds now with the flip of the points. Pretty quickly done, too. 
Oh, Kaiser up for the challenge, although Slay's not exactly making it fair with the heels. Nice little flip from Twisted Minds. Get a chance to play aggressively now too, especially with the Annihilation and the Sound Barrier combo that Twisted Minds have. You can just hold a little bit closer to the spawn and you're really not giving up very much there. Twisted Minds have so many ultimates coming up in this next fight as well. Let's get a quick listen in. Just one, just one. Why are you scared? Why are you scared? I'm, I'm a three. Yeah, I'm a three. 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 I'm just trying to regain the, the tempo and composure in that fight. Just uh, a little bit undecisive, but they end up, end up backing off as Twisted Binds lost Slay initially to a railgun. There's a Katune rush on the point. Kai picking up yet another kill. A two-piece in this fight. It's a very extended fight at that. Pulse on the shield of uh, KSA there. Takes the full frontal of that damage as Slay just attempting to heal Kellogg's on the point. Trying to stall out some additional time. Falling over of Twisted Minds, but uh, ents, they did have to spend a lot coming back into that fight, but they also burned Twisted ultimate, uh, Twisted Minds ult bank, 83% for Twisted Minds. They're close to taking this map, Rose. They're very close to taking this map, but one difference maker could be Quartz's overclock. Quartz has been able to hit some nasty headshots, but it's about being able to survive versus the DPS output of Kevster and Kai. You know that Ents knows that Quartz has his ultimate ready to go. Oh, here's the overclock. Looking straight at Kai right now. Does manage to land a body shot, but a boot from Marta. KSA down. And any stagger kills are going to be fantastic. Hevster not overextending, but Quartz going down at the very last moment. Means he, meaning a lot of people have to switch to fast heroes. Slay collects, maybe able to get back in time, but 99% in OT now are Ents as they control the point. Master with a perfect wraparound, killing UB, finding him as he was about to go for the drop there on the mega health pack. KSA with all ultimates used. Sound barrier from Master as he stays alive, narrowly getting pushed off. But Quartz having to back up to the mega health pack. Master is just going to play gatekeeper there. And that should be the round for Entz. Nothing more Quartz can do on the soldier as Entz ties up. Super good round there for Entz as well. Does it mind, though, being able to play that room larger close to the doors did give them a fighting chance to be able to just close out this map. But Entz, especially when you look at Arissa on a point like Sanctum and also just how powerful Moss's Lucio really has been, there's a lot of potential there for environmental kills and, uh, you know, kind of feels pretty good. But let's actually take a look at one of those as uh, Masa oh. is able to line it up perfectly there with the <laughs> so nice. boop, gets KSA down into the drink and one of the fun ways to watch Lucio for sure. Yeah, I mean, that's that's a classic spot for Lucio, right? Wait for them to come around the corner, just boop between the arches. Mm -hmm. All right, what have uh, Ents got in store for us now? Okay, Mauga for Vistola. Oh, well, um, this is the look I kind of wasn't expecting to see out of Ents, but they are going to be playing it with Kepster Symmetra, and Kepster is still deadly with that hero as well. So a little bit more practice, having played the Mauga, even just a little bit in that Mauga meta. Um, but you're also able to make some quick teleports and maybe get the jump on Twisted Minds after seeing so much success from them. Ents with a swift, swift rotation down to the low ground, as Vestola took so much damage. Oh, and uh, yeah, they, that damage cannot be healed, sadly. Kai went down to UB2 on the sidelines. Not, sure, not entirely sure why Kai was there, but UB managed to catch him off guard. All right, Twisted Minds once again, capping the point first. Nice little quick team kill there. You can see how much Vestola has done in that engagement. Rose, only 17% ult charge as he walks out the gate. KSA with a lot more damage under his belt. Yeah, it's so much easier, I think, to be able to contend damage. with this Malga, though. I mean, like, look at that. Like, uh, not only do you have just the slow there from the Ramatra, but you also had the Disruptor shot from Quartz just melting this hero. Yeah, that pulse bomb. Oh, those the turrets are kind of frying. Okay, save. It doesn't seem to matter as Masa ends up going down. Coalescence to try and uh, pick up some kills here. As Vestola wanted way too far out of the point. 
And this call, I mean, it's just too much. Even with the with the rush, you've lost one person already. And that's it. I mean, that's a quick flip. What, 16%? Now Twisted Minds are in control again. They're in good stead, too. Got three big ults. Quartz has already got a railgun. Swaps. And uh, swaps for Ents, potentially. I mean, two DPS ults. Kevster needs to split it. the point here. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I was wondering because like they were waiting around, maybe considering the opportunity cost of switching up some of their composition. But yeah, when you have the photon barrier to answer to Quartz's overclock, you feel really good about having that. It's really good about having this wall too. Not directly down the middle, so you're shaking between the two sides, but just acting as a big shield. Exactly in the uh, in what it's supposed to be doing. And yeah, KSA has to just touch point too. So as soon as those cooldowns are done, that's pretty much it. No more ults used, but more importantly there is actually Twisted Minds not using any ults either, Rose. They didn't commit anything into that fight. We're happy to just fight in the neutral there, go down, go again with uh, ults of their own. Well, I mean, the Photon Barrier splitting up the point like that, too, gave Ents so much free real estate to just pop their heads out, do some damage, without the fear that Twisted Minds would be able to dish that damage back. But now it's time for Twisted Minds that is to an early get ult. those alts on the board. Yeah, this overclock super early. Zoning? I mean, it did force Ents to the point, and Quartz is in a nice little position here to get some uh, shots behind them. Crimson goes down to slay. Both sand barriers used, as well as that annihilation. Ents still trying to touch, but Bastola and the rest of the gang are just getting chunked out. I mean, all you do there as KSA is just cross your arms and wait for everybody to melt. A little bit of extra time bought here for Ents, but Twisted Mind do end up getting a point cap, and Kai is getting mad staggered. There you go. Okay, there's the dash through the ram. No boop kill, unfortunately, there from Kellex, but Kai gets the reset. Well, there you go. You deny a little oh, bit of ultimate so charge, right? But they're playing up because they have coal. They're playing up because they have coal and pulse yep. bomb. They take a really early fight here. Oh, okay. No, they're backing off. Maybe realizing that. Uh, wouldn't be too much. Maybe, they, maybe they're scared of a, also the TP just straight past them. That would Teleport make the most sense rap. to me. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But Kai's already dead. Post ball from Yubi. This might just end it all. A coalescence from Slay. How events? How are they going to respond to this? They've got the rush, sure, but the healing is surely not there. The cage fight is going to stop Twisted Minds from actually getting the uh, full cap here and the 100% as Ents do manage to find the flip. There's the late barrier from Kevster. Goes up into the high ground using the teleporter to try and find a pick and end holding on for as long as they can. But with Crimso dead, Master to follow, Ents haven't got any healers left, and Twisted Minds just might have run away with this. They still need to clear Ents off the board, off the point, but they've got the heals and the damage to do it, Rose. They do, and now you're going to chase down these picks as well, as that's going to be a big pick onto Kevster, finishing off this hold. I mean, Everybody's just trickling in now. Yep, that is it, Twisted Minds. They end up just forcing Ents off of the point. I mean, Marta has got the sand bar and he managed to kill one. But Vestola, can he get the power up punch? He does, but hits the ram. Not the best target you want. There's the sound barrier from Twisted Minds, and that will be it. A coalescence. Oh, yeah, that's another one. That's two this fight for Twisted Minds as they take map number one. I have thought for a second there, if Vistola gets a big Doomfist punch, maybe even just killing a squishy it target, can happen. then... Just maybe. Just saying. Just Double maybe. punch into the wall. Boom, boom. You hit him a couple more times with the uh, shotgun on the fist. Like, you know, that... There was a chance there, there was a chance. A small one, but there's always a chance. A two and one uh, finish there. Twisted Minds handing Ents another loss. That makes two, by the way, in the bracket for Ents. I know it's a little ridiculous that we're counting those, but that's just how dominant Ents have been so far. They have been so dominant, and this is a brand new look we're really seeing here from Twisted Minds, as they've relied a lot on that Malga composition in order to find themselves this far in the main event bracket. So to see them come out with the Ramatra composition, as we just saw in their previous series, and just continuing to play it in such a cohesive fashion, it gives me hope for this series to be even closer than what we ended up seeing from that match versus Ents yesterday. I mean, the OT at the very end there as well, was just, yeah it can get a little hairy in there especially when you're that close to flipping it either side let's have a look in uh, let's have a listen to the comms though in those final few moments to see how it all went down oh, 
Let's go! We have Let's go! Let's go! Woohoo! Woohoo! Let's go! And then it's like, no, no, it's not over here, it's not over here! But really it is. Everybody kind of knows it. And then the let's go again. You love to hear it. So good. And you can tell there's so much confidence in their voices from being able to just keep those picks, the focus fire, just everything. Like they're really on the same page today, which is night and day from what we listened to yesterday when they were really flustered in their matchup versus Ents. So uh, you love to be able to see this turnaround from them. And they're really focused on winning that grand prize today. Oh, yes, they are. And that game as well, yesterday versus Ents Rose. Uh, they ended up winning the push map, and that was Colosseo, so it wasn't the control. So a little bit of a different win. You know, a lot of confidence, I'd imagine, coming out from Twisted Minds right now. And remember, this is a first of four, not a first of three, like our usual match format. So um, that is worth keeping in mind. So we'll definitely go the extra distance if, uh, well, if Twisted Minds let Ents do that, or, you know, vice versa here. Yeah, I mean, I could totally see this map going the distance here. Full seven maps, maybe? I don't know. No more four Overwatch in my server, please. But I think what we need to see out of Ents in order to bring them back in this series is just, like, clear communication. There were a lot of times where I felt like the focus of Ents was just a little bit too split, and that's something you can't really do if your opponent is playing as a full stack of five on top of each other. It just doesn't quite work out that way and even when we were seeing on village just the different angles that ends was trying to take they were just not getting those fights together fast enough to be able to actually win on that round all right there are the stats from the last map damage mitigation they're not too much of a surprise because ram uh, for twisted minds can just hold out that block and then just sit there and then uh, infinite damage flung at you hollywood is our next map Ents is choice, a ban of Blizzard World for Twisted Minds and a ban of Midtown for Ents. So that, left, uh, that got left with uh, Hollywood. So Ents, a little bit of dive potential uh, on the cards. I wouldn't be too surprised, honestly. Considering Twisted Minds, they want to run the Ram, want to run the Malga, not dive heroes per se, but you still got to be scared of Yubi, who's going to whip out the Sim, I'd imagine, at some point, And then just, you know, well, it, Monkey's great. You can jump. But have you heard about this thing called teleport where all of us can jump kind of <laughs> at the same time? Yeah, exactly. It's like it's like jumping into another dimension. Exactly. If you want to look at it that way. <laughs> but yeah, I, I'm, these bands have been so interesting to me because Twisted Minds have looked so good on Blizzard World. I'm shocked that they ended up actually banning that outright. The hero, or the map pools for this event have been interesting to watch but hollywood is another one of those maps that we haven't seen a whole lot of so already back to back two low pick rate maps yeah i'm a little bit shocked we're not seeing more kinks but fair enough you know what fair enough we nah, played nah, a lot nah, of kinks nah. in the group nah, stage nah, nah, nah. <laughs> it's time for something different yeah i know that's what they all say all right ends on the defense gonna play the orissa so, yeah, no shot quartz hits uh, a shot here. Surely no one. Uh... No, okay, yeah. No one's falling for that one again. We saw once uh, on, what was it, Midtown the other day? Yeah, I think it was Midtown coming out of the spawn. We've seen it once. We don't need to see it again. And uh, more Ram here for Twisted Minds. Ram, more Arissa here for Ents on the defense. A very good defensive pick, but Kevster on this Echo, I still want to see if this can find value against this Ramatra composition. You've got so much burst healing coming out from this Moira. A lot of burst damage, though, coming oh, out from go. Kevster on the flip side. Good on Slay, though, but Kevster is still still taking names and numbers. Can they get Kev? No, but Slay is still just rolling from... Okay, just more of things, I suppose. All right, just ignore completely. Kevster kills your whole team, but Slay can just hit there and hit the right click. <laughs> Slay with four kills. All right, you take that. You take that. Free coalescence coming up. 
We would love to be able to see just a free coalescence right off the bat. Quartz, though, going over to the Sopra. Very interesting just to be able to get back to the fight a little bit faster. But it is going to be back to the Sojourn pick to contend with Kai's. And Kester's off the Echo already. So yet another time here that Twisted Minds has forced Kevster off of that aerial unit. Having the Symmetra is nice to be able to get the wraparound behind Twisted Minds, but it's also Vistola going over to the Malga, really confident to be able to take this brawl. It's kind of unfortunate too for Ents where they feel they need to play Kevster on Sim. Like Echo and Tracer are so much better at like just sheer carry potential and carrying the actual game. This, co this early coalescence from Slay after those kills and the damage he did, this... Yeah, they're not going to get held and choked too long, so they end up winning that fight. But, I mean, it is, it is a little bit of a shame, because the Sim, it can carry using TPs and stuff, but Kev's, one of the reasons why he's so great is his just raw ability to just fight in the neutral and just kill people, like uh, on Tracer, on Echo, on whoever, right? And so seeing him on the Sim, not exactly uh, the star power potential that uh, a Tracer could offer, sadly. But, you know, quick TPs to the high ground, so at least Ents can kind of jump on Twisted Minds now. And it takes so long for that Symmetra damage to come online too that it does not have the same carry Oof. potential like the Tracer, as you were saying. Yeah, that's uh, pretty rough. Kevster goes down first. Master dodging out of the way of that pulse bomb. Still with a sound barrier to utilize if they want to use it. There's the beat from Twisted Minds, but Kai's already dead. It's only a three man beat from Ents here. And the Annihilation from uh, KSA can just sit on the point if he wants to. I mean, Ents is just going to fall over here on the second point. KSA can just sit here. Kevster's back. Oh, no, he's not. He's back in spawn again. I mean, Master's back. Oh, no, he's not. He's back in spawn again. I mean, uh, Vestola is going to be able to come out and touch the points once more, but KSA could just hold this one down. I mean, Twisted Minds, uh, speed run time. Five minutes in the time bank, going into third. We've seen crazier holds, but this is quick. This is super quick, and this is giving me even more doubt that the Mauga composition is the right choice to contest with this Ramatra. We already saw this on Nepal, how this matchup went for Twisted Minds, and it's like, okay, yeah, it's a control map. Maybe it's going to be a little different when you're on hybrid or a payload-oriented map, but uh, it's not working out so far. It is not working out at all. Here's the team fight win that Ents needed. So maybe even this one up, settle the score. Quartz though, ripping the overclock, seeing Kai overextending, trying to get kills. And oh, a double kill as Marta gradually descends to the ground and straight nine feet under. There's the cage fight as Quartz was trying to get a little cheeky with Ents. Pulse bomb thrown on in, round the corner. But here's Kevster, he's back with vengeance, kills Yubi. Listen, I, sometimes I just need to put it out in the universe that it's not working, and then I cast a curse it to give that team success, right? That's that's it's sometimes how, how that works. works yep. But <laughs> it's taken a while for Ents to get these ultimates online and to find value because of just how quickly Twisted Minds have been initiating these fights, so you don't have the same type of setup. All right, Coalescence. Good time to use it as soon as this wall ends up going down, but look at how charged Kevster is. Just permanent tier three beam. Just uh, melting, KSA. All right, wars down. Now they can push. Crimzo has the Katsune rush. So as soon as Twisted Minds end up using the call, I'd imagine they use it. Or they use it first. They just try and push them all the way back, buying as much time as they feasibly can. They've already knocked two minutes off the time bank. Still have a while to go, though, with three minutes remaining for Twisted Minds, but you can tell just how much damage Kevster is able to do when you've got this beautiful setup. Would you, those turrets are always going to be helping to find value to help Kevster stay charged up, and he is microwaving people. All right, Cardiac Overdrive there from Vestala as he pushes forward, but that Coalescence is going to split the team at least somewhat. Sound barrier for both sides. Pulse Bomb, though, on Vestola is super low. They managed to chunk him out before that Pulse Bomb connected, so that overhealth didn't matter at, at all. Two minutes and 30 seconds to go. Half the time back down, but Twisted Minds, they got that third point in their sights. Hence, no ultimates in the bank now for this recontest. No, and this is the same problem that Ents was facing on the end of that second point, is that KSA has this annihilation, and it's right at the end of the road where Ents do not have any choice except to walk into it. I mean, just the overwhelming power here of Twisted Minds, I think, just might win Winner. this fight oh, out. Overclock from Quartz, he's up on top of the truck, and KSA has got the ultimate, but no, he actually ends up going down first. 
Will they be able to shut this one out? With the wall, you'd imagine Ents have at least a little bit of something to say in this fight, especially as Kai pulls an overclock of his own. It is just Sojourns versus Sojourns. Quartz versus Kai right now as Quartz takes to the skies, but as Kai snipes him out of the air. Two minutes to go. Twisted Minds push the cart all the way up to that third point, but Ents barely hold on. Great picks there from Kai to be able to stop that final few meters from Twisted Minds. But even though the Annihilation didn't come online in time for Twisted Minds to use it in that last fight, they've got it now. So same problem remains where they're going to be walking into an Annihilation from KSA if they want to contest this card. There's the cage. That Nemesis form isn't going to last all too long. And yeah, that's a guaranteed fight win, especially in a choke point like that. Ains have done a fantastic job of wheeling this time back down. A five minute speed run for Twisted Minds on their attack, but struggling to get this last point in. I mean, to be fair, against the Sim in this point, uh, in this stage, like it's rough. It can be pretty bad, especially as KSA has to step up and then just gets microwaved by Kevsa. Yeah, this third point is way better for the Symmetra because of how much setup she's able to get. All of these corridors, you're always in range of those turrets to be able to help not only get some damage down, get the slow, but also help charge up Kepster. But can this Annihilation actually get the job done right now? You've got the Coalescence at your back. KSA can go pop the Annihilation, but you also have this rush you got to contest with now because of how Ents have charged up these alts. Yeah, look how much damage KSA is taking in the uh, top right right there. He had to back all the way up and was Slay dead. This might just be the end of the push for Twisted Minds. Are they actually going to be able to find the cap? Kevster TPing Vestola out of danger as we approach overtime. Uh, this is where uh, we've really seen Ents start to clutch up this defense. The big thing here with Crimson has always been the usage of those Kitsune rushes. And Twisted Minds now, like, they're relying on Quartz to really get this up with the line here with the Overclock. I mean, this Coalescence is good. It's going to force a couple of cooldowns at the very least. But Ents actually just uh, end up flipping the script a little bit. Same with Twisted Minds as Slay is in the back line right now. And here it comes. Quartz's Railgun. This Overclock is just going to tear them limb from limb. But it's actually Ents that don't even get the touch there. It looks like they were too pressured out not quite a c9 more just uh, the overwhelming bodies of twisted minds on that point they managed to finish rose in ot a five minute stall there from ents is nothing to scoff at no, I mean, to be fair, the Symmetra is set up better on this third point. It's always a little difficult if you lose momentum in this third point to actually regain that and, and finish out the map. So congrats to Twisted Minds for finally making their way through. Felt a little inevitable knowing that they had that five minute time bank, but still, um, you get that done in overtime. Ents is able to whittle away so much time. And there is a win condition on the board here for Ents to even up the score in the series finish the map with over a minute and then win the next attack round but uh, can they get the job done versus this Ramatra composition they feel like they kept a ton of trouble on this attack for first and second point yeah yeah first and second point at the very least and then the, the sim really came alive right at the very end where KSA had to like step up and he was getting rolled by Kevster it's real rough, but I mean, the rest of the Twisted Minds push, especially on second rows, um, KSA was able to push the team basically through the entire second stage of the map as Ents were rotating up to high ground. Twisted Minds made the executive decision to say, okay, we're not touching height. We're just going to roll forward and we're going to have KSA set up on the point because know, uh, we know he has the Annihilation. Then KSA just lands a big multi-kill because Ents can't touch. And if they do, they get rolled by, uh, by the Annihilation, right? All right, anyway, Ents on the attack. Kevster back on the sim with TP. I imagine high ground TP across is probably the name of the ga game. Okay, Yubi is there. Yubi looked like uh, he had his back turned to the team, but he didn't. Okay, there's cafe control taken by Ents. And now it just in minds want to engage on this. They have to walk into so many turrets there from Kevster, uh, but it's gonna just be the Valka going in first with the cardiac overdrive. Yeah, into that small room too. Perfect place to overrun. Mestola just charging up those stairs to get the stun onto Quartz. And Quartz had good positioning there too. He slid up to the stairs to make sure uh, Ents can kind of get on top of him, but it's really rough. When you have the Malga and you have the Lucio speed, it, you're looking to get on high ground. It's like, okay, it's pretty easy. The, the point is so enclosed, it's really rough uh, for, this, uh, for the Soldier to run away from this sim comp. Good pacing for Ents now as they do cap the point pretty quickly there. 
Yeah, we're seeing the power of where Ents wanted to take those engagements, whether it was cafe or even the room above the point. Symmetra, it's it's just her territory, it's just her day. <laughs> nice predictive disruptor, disruptor though. Yeah. Ooh. As soon as you see that TV come in, I mean you're not using disruptor shot, really, or what you find it on point, sure, whatever. You see the TP, you just put the disruptor on top of it, it's just so much damage. And it ends up killing the TP as well after a little while, right? For a lot of focus fire towards it. Mm -hmm. Just can't get, uh, can't let them get to the high ground. That's where Ents' uh, comp already starts to come alive. Yeah, but Twisted Minds, they they kind of had that done to them yesterday too, with Ents being more predictive of their teleporter usage. So I think that Twisted Minds have really learned from their own mistakes and missteps and putting that into practice here. Well, there's the rush from Crimzo. As Ents step up. Because he's being kept alive with this coalescence, but look at how much damage they've got. And the overrun too, just landing that brief stun, just drops the Malga holding his hands up, or holding his arms up. Just uh, enables the rest of the team to get full damage in. Quartz is still on the high ground. Nice little boop, actually, from Marta. Stopping Quartz getting an angle on uh, Vestola. Late death as well. Might cost them a little bit here. Quartz is at least able to come back in with a power slide, but the setup is really where you might see Twisted Mind struggle. Knowing that Kevster has those turrets, you know where they're going to be coming from. Set up a little bit of a car wash and, oh, the disruptor shot too. Oh, that cage in the corner. Oh, Quartz tried to get to the rest of his team, but Kai was waiting. With that railgun, it's pretty rough. And like you mentioned, Rose, Quartz could get back to the point in time to be part of the fight, but the actual setup for Twisted Minds would always be really rough coming out of those choke points. And hey, look, another speed run, but it's this time it's ends. How much time they got? They got about five minutes ish. So roughly the same amount of time it took Twisted Minds to get here. Same with Ents. About 15 seconds or 20 seconds uh, difference is Ents. Four minute 30 to roll through the third point. I mean, how much momentum does Ents have right now to keep working with? Can they just snowball through to finish with over a minute left in the bank? I'm looking at this photon barrier from Kester as a response mechanism here to Quartz's overclock if they want it, but they can also just disengage from this, which is what we're going to see here. So very little value that Quartz is going to be able to find with the overclock but that will set them back a bit with Yubi's pick onto Crimzo. Yeah, big pick from Yubi there. You could see that entire time. Quartz was so paranoid of the player up on high ground, like jumping on them. So he wasn't able to really do much in the front line. They do end up winning this preceding fight here. And I think that was a really important fight to take too. The Ram is so good at holding these um, these corners and these uh, choke points and the arches against the Malga comp. So taking the early fight, popping the Annihilation, good standing a Twisted Minds in right now. However, Sam barrier advantage for ends oh and, they and after the annihilation got used oh -hoo -hoo. hello goodbye we flipped the map Quartz is already dead caught on the rotation by best other and the rest of the gang are they going to invest it looks like they're going to after that rush came out here's the coalescence is it going to be enough healing and damage ubi's pulse bomb goes wide and gets well uh, eviscerated by Kev's turrets. Uh, Kev's turrets picking up a clean two kills there in that fight. As Twisted Minds now switch over to the Malga. Oh, Malga for the final portion of this fight. I mean, Twisted Minds, we've seen what they're able to do with Yubi's teleporters as well as KSA's Malga just kind of T posing in front of the opposing tanks. But it does help to make sure that they're not going to get too jumped on when they have the teleporter. Good cage there by the Malga. Oh, Quartz managed to get a. Uh, a kill onto Kevster as they try to rotate onto high ground, but Kai, he's the DPS you've got to worry about right now with that overclock. Manages at least score a shot onto Quartz, who's going to have to rush into the spawn. Someone's going to have to touch here for Twisted Minds. It's going to be Kellex, a TP onto the ground as well, and they're just going to slowly feed onto this point. A kill onto Kai is good. Ents lack the damage and the capability to actually finish off kills now. So Twisted Minds, with that single kill, managed to hold on. Two and a half minutes to go. Looking like it's going to be the same story, Rose. For two minutes, <laughs> another OT finish on the horizon. Hello. Very well could be. Quartz has the potential here to just pop off behind that bus with the overclock. And, and so they really want to try to win this fight here and now in order to have over a minute left in the bank. But oh, they don't have pick. anything to do with that. Yeah. 
Can they kill Curse? Are they okay? is so deep. Yeah, they're just gonna kill him. He went way too deep. He just couldn't see him. There are two rushes available now, and Slay has to pop his, but Kai finds the flank. Yubi does get the kill onto Crimzo, but again, it is all on Kai. Hasn't got the overclock, but does not need it. Master kills the uh, Sim, which will allow uh, Kelex to kind of stay alive and help uh, get everybody back from the spawn with the speed boost. A sound barrier is going to see him through the rest of the damage that Vesto is going to fling out. And once again, Twisted Minds holding on as Ent struggle to get that point in. Again, the kill on Takai is just massive. As soon as you take that Sojourn down, the comp lacks damage. Super nice Kitsune rush though from Crimzo to keep Ents in that fight, but now Twisted Minds, they have done the job. They might even be able to close out the map here, but Ents will not finish this round with over a minute left in the bank, yeah. even if they finish it all. Yeah, there we go. Minute ticks over. No finish for Ents with over a minute, so Twisted Minds are going to get another attack. There's the sound barrier from Marsa. Kev's already pretty low, and look at everybody lining up for Quartz to try and find some kills. Hence, though, thinking on their feet, they managed to just speed boost away as Quartz takes a lot of damage. In fact, a lot of spam coming through. Neil's he needs heals, like, desperately right now. KSA does have the ultimate, so can pop the cage down on the point and try and isolate somebody, but Ents already, like, grouped up. Both of the cages are going to come out, but uh, Vistola is taking a lot of damage. Crimzo unable to heal up. And uh, without uh, the DPS, uh, without the tank in the front line as well, this might just be all over here. Twisted Minds only have to battle against 20 more seconds, but Kai pops the railgun, finds two instantaneously, and Ents are going to finish 17 seconds over Twisted Minds. And Kai, for the third fight in a row, comes up with a minimum of two kills. Holy... Holy! He's just one of the best hit scans in the world right I'm now. Like, I know! He's so good! Uh, he was the best soldier in the Overwatch League. He's still one of the best soldiers in EMEA. And this is just why! Being able to get those clutch ups when they really matter. He's just so locked in and he doesn't falter under the pressure of knowing that it's on his shoulders to push the team to a victory. And 17 seconds uh, honestly could be a big difference here depending on what ultimates are able to come online first but that's plenty of time here for a rush from crimzo for potentially even an overclock if kai's able to get a quick pick uh even just a little bit of a time bank difference um is nice and you also get to be on the defense first yeah it's with some minds that have to set the pacing with that single minute and ends running the malga again i mean look their Arissa, when they did defend uh, that other time, just didn't really work out too well. I mean, Twisted Minds and more specifically Quartz and Yubi. I mean, Yubi's been opening the fights a lot recently uh, on the Tracer. Let's go for a Twisted Minds listening real quick. They've only got a minute to play with here. Let's see what their plan is. Good fights, guys, by the way. I'm okay. going to plan. I'm going to pick me here whenever you're ready? ready. I'm ready in five. Three, two, one, pick me here. Cap, cap, for three, cap, for three. All right, point capped for Twisted Minds. That was really... Perma calling Vestola 1 when Vesta, uh, Vesta is over, <laughs> like, what, like 50% HP or something? Like, it's a... Uh, like 90%? They're not, they're not one, but please just shoot them at the moment. That's, a, that's the direct Overwatch <laughs> translation for you. <laughs> yeah, <I'm... laughs> oh man, sometimes it just be like that though. I, I just want to get an early contest here though, so this card doesn't get too much progress. They're not coming in with too much though, and Yubi with all of that work has a pulse and oh my goodness, it just might be a domino effect. Yeah, it's all falling apart at the seams here for Ents. Losing Crimson that quickly is not good. Kevston and Vistola at least pick up kills, but the, the spawns are so close. Plus Kelex dying means he can taxi court, so it doesn't really matter. Ents are going to have to go for a full regroup. Man, this is running away from them. 
is going to be a lot of cart progress before Ents are able to come in as a full team of five. At the very least, they do have Crimson's Kitsune Rush. Hopefully, by the time that they're able to come back to this, but uh, with Kalex slowly working up to that sound barrier, it could just be a late barrier here to win the fight. A good early coalescence. You saw Vesola dashing through the entire team there with that overrun. Uh, Quartz is high in the sky and he spots Kai just trying to escape. But there's no escaping from Quartz's railgun. Three kills, almost make that four as well. This is surely the it for Twisted Minds. This fight's over. Ents, they're going to go down. And Twisted Minds are going to continue that push. Ents, they got a couple of ultimates here, Rose. But it was all Quartz all day for Twisted Minds. And can they even come out of spawn to touch as a full team of five? This might just be the second point unlocked, and, and it is. And now they are trying to draw the line in the sand so deep into enemy territory. And it might just have to be here. And now Pistola has the cage fight. Kai with the overclock. Yeah, they're trying to count this as fast as they can, trying to get on that point, make sure it doesn't go anywhere. But, I mean, honestly, Twisted Minds, you go down here, it does not matter a minute and 17 to try and make it to second they have put up a heck of a fight i mean that was all quartz at the very end just that triple railgun from high ground completely ignoring the wall too mind you the ents deployed what a uh, what a frustrating situation for ents to be in now that is a rough defense for them uh, it's uh, it sucks too because like if you're on the defensive side and you feel confident in the defense that you can put down then you're like yeah okay like we can actually just just hold uh, and we draw the line there but have to remember that ends and twisted minds they both were able to capture point a and point b so quickly on their individual attack pushes maybe we should have always expected that twisted minds would be able to go that far and get that second point capture but ends have so much work cut out for them they're gonna have to make these engages very quick and they cannot get picked off that would spell disaster for their attack uh, see what they're going to rock up with. Probably just the Mauger again, if I had to guess. Or, you know, maybe the Rissa. I think Kevster's... Uh... Okay, little Hanzo, maybe a little peek uh, with the with the arrows or whatever. But oh, I really want Kevster on a, a carry hero here. I really want him on the Echo or the Soge Tracer. Literally anything, right? I mean, obviously Kai's going to play Soge, but... Let's have a look at what Ents have got to say. I mean, they've got a minute and 17 to go. Let's get a quick listen in. Yeah, uh... Kirin, that's Kirin, that's Kirin. Have you played this? 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 ram yeah, like a heal me, anything, try to follow up on a pick. They are able to get UB out, but UB is still at the teleporter. He's going to be back in this fight, no problem. A little bit of healing here to try to take some poke to get this rush online, but it's going to come down to a neutral pick. They did manage to get a touch. Port's in trouble, but he just uh, ascends the high ground. UB's taking a lot of fire from Vestola, but not afraid to walk up to the front lines. Especially as you've got the healers right at your back. Matt's taking a lot of damage. I mean, Kev's just trying to find the kill onto Quartz. Quartz is so low, but already forced to recall. No one can kill him. No one can kill Quartz. The Suzu's too good. The healing is too good. There's nothing, nothing it can do against Quartz. Nothing can shut him down. Twisted Minds hold first and take the lead in this series. A 2-0 start for Twisted Minds as Ents go down on first on Hollywood after a ridiculous push as well from Twisted Minds on their uh, second attack. 
this has been a very different look than what we saw in yesterday's series in the winners finals between these two teams twisted minds they're on it i don't know what courts and yubi ended up doing between yesterday and today but they feel so locked in they feel so confident and you can see that really coming through in their play for ents how do they turn around from this one in the mental yeah this <laughs> It is a rough start for Ents. This is uh, tripling their uh, losses in the bracket, right? They've lost two now to Twisted Minds and a third as well, the one that they lost the other day. Oh, man, they're down, but they're not out just yet. Let's get a listen, though, to those winning comms from Twisted Minds at the very end of that map. I'm chasing soy, can I go soy? Soy dead. GG. Capoeira on point. Capoeira on point. Come still. Come still one. Come still. No, no, I'm just kidding. What? Twisted Minds are fully locked in. And I hope you all paid attention again to Quartz at the very end. Kevster was trying to stick to him like glue, but just couldn't actually make anything work. Now, even Vestola was jumping in to try and push Quartz away. Quartz was down to, it must have been like sub 20 HP or something. And then Slay with the clutch Suzu on the ground. Bang, saved his life. And then Quartz, well, pulls overclock and does what Quartz does best. Shoot people and make the team cry. Yeah, I, I think when you see the differences in play between yesterday and today for Twisted Minds, can't help but call out how reactive they are playing for these deep, aggressive dives that Ents are trying to pull off. Like, uh, Vestola goes so deep into the back line and know that uh, they're going to have the number of courts, UB. So I think Slay and Kellex have really also adjusted their gameplay to adapt for that today with those Suzus, as you were saying and also just the heels coming out from Slay. Yeah, Slay won them that first point as well. I think it was quite funny with the Moira just managing to get a, a decent damage orb off. And then, hey, I'm just going to walk around, just right-clicking people, yada, yada. yada. You, yeah, you got aim? Yeah, I can just right-click you, buddy. It's, uh, it's been looking good for Slay, yeah, specifically. Um, sometimes supports uh, go a little bit unsung, and I think Slay did a really good job uh, for Twisted Minds. It's been... Uh, but, you know, as the Moira, it's like, okay, you just left click, you right click, whatever. But like his positioning with the coalescences has also been really good. And clutch Suzu's very important in this meta to have a good Kiriko player. And uh, Slate is exactly that. And this fight too from uh, Twisted Minds just on your screen, just the, the previous clip there. I mean, you, you go into that fight and you're sitting there like, okay, if we don't win this, that's fine. Like, we got it super far, but actually getting it to the second point, winning the preceding fight after you win the fight in Archway can be quite difficult as the enemy team can jump onto the high ground, look down at you, and then just jump on top of you. But Twisted Minds take it in their stride as they go up 2-0 and oh now. First of all, remember, Rose, so they're going to have to win another two more maps, but ends going down like this. I'm not sure many people expected it to be, um, to be what, map two and then not getting a single one. Like, man, this is Twisted Minds turning up to another level right now 82 percent of chat voted for right, right. Ents in their predictions so you're absolutely right about that that people have really just touted this ends roster is one of the strong like one of the if not the strongest roster in emea and it's because of all the star power that's on this team but one of the ways that we've seen twisted minds really step up to the plate has been in their macro gameplay today playing together as units stacking on top of each other and that is one way that you can really break this echo comp that enter running is just hey you, you can't play echo the desk is alluded to that already at the start of the series and we're seeing that effect in real time Colosseo is our next map, Rose, and this was the map that Twisted Minds took off of Ents in the upper bracket the other day. So there's no real surprise we're going here at all. And it was an Esperanza ban uh, from Ents, so they could have banned the Colosseo, you know? So they were happy. I guess they're happy going to Colosseo. I don't know. We'll have to wait and find out. We are jumping into the next map right now. Map number three on your screens. Going to Bush, going to Coliseo. Twisted Minds up 2 and 0 oh against Ents in a first of four format. So we're definitely seeing Suravasa, but Twisted Minds definitely feeling themselves right now. Can they just 
close it out in the next couple of maps. Very much feeling like it. I'm honestly a little surprised we're actually not seeing the Queen Street. Like, if we want to keep up the pattern of going to sort of a lesser picked map for each of these game mode types, uh, I don't know. Your Queen Street was on the menu, so maybe just not feeling it today. And yeah, I, what is up the sleeve here for Twisted Minds on Coliseo? They've been looking really great on this Rumatra composition and maybe just feeling a little bit more confident that that's going to work out a bit better if Ents want to stick to this Malga. Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure they're going to be playing Queen here, but Malga, I, I think Ents right now are trying to formulate something to stop Twisted Minds in their tracks. Maybe Malga is the way to go. Is Kevs just TPing people out is my kind of question, or is he sticking with the Sim? Looks like he's just sticking with the Sim. Okay. KSA, UB, Quartz, Slay, Kalex just on the Moira Ram rush again. All right, what can Ents do? Maybe they maybe they really believe in this Kevster uh, Sim here, trying to recreate what UB was doing on Blizzard World uh, earlier on. Thanks. Kester's Symmetra still looked really good, especially if you're going to be stalling out in the neutral like this, set up the turrets, get a little bit more charge, and then go in with all of that extra DPS power. A little bit of a fakey deck from Kevster. Sometimes it does help just to dislodge people that uh, have set up Bunker and these little small, uh, small little outlets. Vortex is quite annoying to kind of deal with as well, but Kevster, yeah, he's going to have to TP across. Doesn't want to test Quartz's railgun accuracy. I wouldn't either, to be fair. Crimzo killing Slay after a little bit of damage coming from pretty much everybody, I would imagine. Now's the time to really push. Twisted Minds not giving up without a fight, though, as Yubi just jumps on in the front line and picks off Kevster. KSA, yeah, okay, holding the arms. You can't hold him forever, unfortunately. He puts down the shield to try and survive for a little bit longer. But this Twist of Minds is still finding kills somehow with Quartz finishing off Master with a disruption shot. And then Keller's going, uh, okay, they just turned that fight completely. We don't have a majority of our heals because Slay's dead, but sure, we're just going to win the fight anyway. Just, uh, just Twist of Mind things, I suppose. Just out frag is maybe the answer to that problem seven times out of ten. Uh, and it's working out great for Twisted Minds. They're getting some meaningful push bot progress, and they also get a chance to set up on the high ground. But that's where this teleporter from Kevster can really come into play. They force Twisted Minds back and also force them out into the open as Ents have to walk forward to take this contest. So they're taking so much damage from the pole spot. Just teleport a little fakey. Best is stepping up with one HP. He needs heals. He needs heals bad. See, oh, oh, well, Slay. Yeah, shut down mid coalescence. Tried to rip it to get the heals back, but Kai already had him in his sights. A little bit more of a back and forth as we do see a full disengage here from Twisted Minds. Uh, they want to be able to come back in with KSA. I feel like the arms have just been uh, so nice to have to be able to sit there and T-pose in front of Vestola's Malga. It does soak up quite a bit of damage, but Kai is the overclock now. Yeah, they TP behind, behind the to, to their own bridge. Good shot from Kai taken to the skies after already landing one body shot onto Quartz. The boy's in the middle of the map, too. So they're going to be able to get some decent meterage here. But if there's one thing that Twisted Minds do extremely well is get random stray kills at the very end. But without their DPS and without anything else, not sure that's going to happen. And there you go. Finally, Ents get the bot going. Going to be matching the meterage here of Twisted Minds, potentially even getting the lead. But Kevster with this photon barrier. I feel like this is just such a big tool to have against the sight lines of courts. And even if not to shut down oh the overclock, god, you're what still a shot. okay. Ooh. Oh my god. Okay. Marsa getting rolled in the back line there. You'd be setting up a lot of those kills too. That's a lot of ultimates. That's annihilation. That's cage. That's wall. Yubi's down to Kai. Okay, so they just trying to stop Vestola getting out, but unable to do so. Gave Kevster enough time to kind of build up that charge on that beam as well. Quartz is still finding kills, but Kai's going to chase him down. And this should be the lead and then some now for Ents. 
Well, I, I mean, maybe even the checkpoint. It depends on how far forward we want to see Vestola push, but I would be feel pretty unwise to put yourself so out in the open like that. Crimson, though, with this Kitsune rush, is going to be so high impact to be able to initiate this next fight as long as nobody gets picked off. So good disruptor shot, stopping everybody from walking up in that small corridor. Kitsune rush, there it is. Crimson, 2 HP! Surely he goes down. Sound Barry is going to make sure he doesn't. But uh, already, Crimson and Kepsa are dead. The railgun from Quartz. Oh, it's hidden. Kind Crimson down. And Vesto is not long for this world either. That sound barrier coming through from Marsa. It just got shredded. It got shredded, but it also missed Crimzo. Crimzo didn't get any of that over health, so he was still sitting at 2 HP with Twisted Minds being able to go in and feel comfortable knowing that they had the coalescence behind them. So uh, I don't know where Crimzo was in order to not get that sound barrier, but we are back to this neutral as Twisted Minds start to push this bot away from Ents, but Ents do have high ground control. You be just doing what uh, good trapes is done, just being annoying in the back line for the time being, and then setting up quartz. All right, trying to find some heads to click on right now. Oh, he finds Yubi on the high ground. Body shot, and then Master finishes off the kill. But KSA just in the neutral, just with the staff. Just kind of demolishing Kevster and Kai. Just a few headshots. It's quite annoying uh, when you get hit by the ramp, to be fair. And uh, with the Annihilation, it's going to be even more annoying for Ents to kind of deal with. Nice little 180 punches. KSA finds four in that fight, and Twisted Minds, they're going to take the lead here. They're going to take the lead. Checkpoint also in their sights, and the Annihilation is even better when you are so close to grabbing that checkpoint. And maybe even just going in to oh, watch the stick. teleporter too. Oh, but at least good it's a little bit of stick. damage. No Suzu to help Kevster out. And that's checkpoint for sure. Yeah, it's going to be just a little bit of a stall here from Vestola, but there is the checkpoint. Don't even need to use the Annihilation. But such great predictive play from Twisted Minds to know where the teleporter was going to be. You saw KSA wrap around to be able to lay down that AoE damage, and then UB on the flank to nail that pulse bomb. Oh, Twisted Minds, they're looking good. KSA is down from Vestola. There's that Suzu to come in to save us over in the nick of time, but that sound barrier from both sides. It's only the coalescence reach. We're trying to help people out now. Looks like Slay almost got booped off the edge of the map. Finally, Ents end up winning that fight. That was an expensive uh, ult fight for both teams. Twisted Minds used what? Cole? They used uh, the Ram ult, the Annihilation. They used Sound Barrier. They Everything. Used, uh, the Overclock, right? They've got a Pulse Bomb, <laughs> I suppose. But yeah, ends end up coming out. Uh, uh, and with the help of the Cage, at the very least, just setting up Kai too. Just shooting down at everybody who's trapped in the Cage. That's a lot of collateral damage. It is, and Photon Barrier here too for Ents. Great tool to have for this next fight, especially when Twisted Minds are at that ultimate disadvantage. There's the wall. Now Kevsa can get all charged up, but Twisted Minds are going to try and get out of there, but a quick teleport, but a good boot. A really good boot from Kellex. Stops them from getting on top of uh, the rest of the team and actually boosts them into the sightlines of Quartz. Just hook, line, and sinker for the uh, Sojourn. All right, Twisted Minds hold the bot yet again. Now, we've reached this point in the game in Colosseum where the bot doesn't really move the barricades either way. And it's all about just trying to win two preceding fights, maybe three. Checkpoint very, uh, in favor of Twisted Minds too. It's going to be hard for Ents to come back in this one, especially with two minutes to go. All right, they have the cage fight coming online here for Vestola. Kai with another overclock. He's been pumping out damage. Oh, but... you cannot <laughs> so die He's like that. He's just dead. Disrupt a shot, a couple of straight like uh, You cannot go down like that, Kai. Enter would have lost their main source of damage now as they are uh, going to get assailed on by Twisted Minds. The coalesce on the high ground, flipping the point. And the Kai dead. Uh, yeah, he's dead again. Died in spawn, tried to come back, and Quartz said no. Kevster also goes down to Yubi as Quartz and the rest of Twisted Minds. They do end up falling down to the ground here, but they're just finding pick after pick. Ents are scattered right now. Twisted Minds take the checkpoint, get forward spawns, and move on. Um, forward spawns, a minute and have left. Twisted Minds also coming up with a ton of ultimates in this fight. Actually, four on the board for both teams. So expect another old fiesta here as we start to approach this final destination here for Twisted Minds push bot. Sensation. 
Another TP in. Did that catch anybody? I think it caught Yubi there. But I think Yubi's going to be able to get out and live. And same with the rest of Twisted Minds. Oh, not quite. Yubi caught in the very end of that cage fight. Our uh, Twisted Minds are going to re are they going to re-engage? They might just want to take mid fight here and just burn out time. Yeah, just mid fight. You have uh, such a big meter advantage in terms of having that checkpoint already activated for your side. With 40 seconds left, Twisted Minds just have to play defensive. And with all of the ultimates that they still have held onto, they might just be able to close out the map here and now. That's going to be four with Slay's coming, Coalesce's coming up soon. TP up to the high ground, ready early. Suzu uses that as they try and flip the map again with that teleport. Annihilation, Rush, Twisted Mind support, their backline has still got two ultimates, they can just chill, they can chill here, they can make a swift rotation again, but they don't need to worry about the Rush, they don't need to worry about the Overclock, again it could all come down to just Quartz's Railgun, a good pick onto Yumi though, enters now up a person, as Krimbozo TP's back to his team, Ward does end up coming up, but KSA is just perma contesting that bot, folding his arms, just waiting by it, refusing to give them the checkpoint. Look at that. in deep. Two beats come in. Quartz doesn't receive it, but still has this railgun. Could just wait for this overhelp to wear off. And everybody's just going to line up for them now. UB ends up going down once again. His Quartz just trying to take care of Vestola. Has no eyes on the DPS in the front, uh, in the back line. It was just all Vestola just holding that door shut. Quartz getting chased down. Still finds another kill, but ends survive with two. They get the team kill and the checkpoint, but it's still an OT. Still an OT, but the forward spawns are the most important part of being able to grab that checkpoint. So Ents will be able to come back into this one with pretty equal spawn advantage to Twisted Minds. But Twisted Minds has sped in here with the amp it up while team members of Ents are still coming back to the point. you be forced to use that recall early, but no, they don't get there in time. It looked like it was going to be another touch, but Ents end up going down and Twisted Minds now on match point. A 4-0 in their sights. It's a very a very different twist of minds from what we saw against Ents in the upper bracket game the other day. Where are Ents in this series? Kai and Kevster, the dynamic duo, some of the best DPS we have in EU. They're just getting kind of diff right now. Yubi didn't have the best game of his life in that last one, but every single game, it feels like a Quartz show or a Yubi show, Quartz's railguns are hidden. And right now, Twisted Mind sitting on match point, confidence through the roof, but hence looking a little lost. And this is the map where they've got to get it done, too. This next one could be the last one if Twisted Minds are able to win in Suravasa. But Coliseo, now we can really see why Twisted Minds wanted to pick this map because Quartz is on it today. Totally nailing the shots with the Sojourn, able to get the one up onto Kai and a lot of these Sojourn 1v1s. And kind of feels like the Widowmaker effect a little bit. Like if, if you're feeling it, you're feeling it, right? and you do have that confidence to keep playing these aggressive big plays. Yeah, the DPS and Tristan is looking ridiculous right now. Even the backline too. Kalex is having some really nice sound barrier timing. Slay with the coalescences and KSA in the front line holding his own against the Malga. I mean, KSA's job here is really just to play front line and just help Quartz succeed and UB2 uh, for that matter. So nothing like no like 5k annihilations right but like the annihilation timings are really good and just being able to stay alive can be quite difficult against the Malgacom. there's just so much damage thrown with uh, at you that ksa has to cycle the cooldowns extremely effectively and he's doing just that keeping himself up keeping the team up too and with a first to four format twisted minds now on map point they're ready they're locked in suravasa is the map of next but rose is this just gonna be is this a classic like overwatch finals moment where it's just a 4-0 it's just uh, that's it, it and it's just done like that like it feels like it rose it really does feel that way and so as we look forward to this fourth map uh, ends have to figure out something with this ramatra composition on the other side i'm getting flashbacks to the world cup and just how good saudi arabia and ksa were with the ramatra and it just feels like run it back they they know what to do and they are executing yeah exactly that right uh, before we jump into suravasa we're going to give everybody a, a quick breather we're going to jump to a quick break do not go anywhere potentially the final map after this
think it's time to blow this scene. Get everybody in the stuff together. Okay, three, two, one, let's jam. Chill, Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Potentially on the horizon for this grand finals in EMEA between Team Ents and Twisted Minds. Everything leads up to Suravasa, the flashpoint map of choice here for Team Ents. But they have so much work cut out for them when we look at how the series has gone so far. Twisted Minds up 3-0 on that match point in this first to four. It's going to be really tough because Enz has brought such a unique composition into this matchup with being able to play the Malga, which is something that we had seen from Twisted Minds, but maybe it's that experience that Twisted Minds have had with that composition that is potentially allowing them to beat it with the Ramatra comp of their own. Only time is going to tell as we look forward to right. this fourth a potential map. Yeah. Potential four, map, final map. But yeah, potential final map, right? I mean, this could just be a 4-0 right here, right now. Reverse sweep starts now for Ents, a team that was so dominant throughout the entirety of the bracket. And now they're facing down the barrel of a 4-0, which is insane to think about. And this team was, you know, newly picked up and was one of the hottest prospects coming into this stage one. 82% of chat predicted that Ents would take this match, and it's no secret why. They got the win versus Twisted Minds yesterday. They have all of these incredible players that we've been able to watch their journeys in the Overwatch League. Now that we get a chance to see them in this new ecosystem, like Twisted Minds, a top EMEA contenders team gets a chance to be in here in the mix with all of these incredible all-star players and make a name for themselves. Suravasa on your screens. Have they got the answer to KSA? And the, well, either the Malga or the Ram. Have they got the answer to Quartz on the Sojin? Time will tell. It's been a rough, rough journey fence in this series and only this series it's been rough One. see what uh ends want to do out of the gate he's still gonna run kevster on sim doesn't look like it kevster Ooh. tracer crimzo on the moira and then vesoa is gonna match so it's a complete miracle across the board here 
Well, if this is going to be a way for Ents to get back into the series, it might just be running the mirror and just simply being better. That Mauga did not look effective against this Ramatra that KSA has been so dominant on. And it's time for Vestola to show up on yet another hero that really fits into his wheelhouse. Oh, Flashpoint is unlocked, and already Quartz has the high ground. Someone has to dislodge him, whether that's the Lucio or just a stray railgun shot, but there are no more railgun shots to be had from Kai as he bites the dust. And Marsa's head gets clean, uh, gets taken clean off too by Quartz. Someone's got to shut him down. Normally it is the Lucio's job to kind of boot people off the high ground, but you've got to be, uh, you've got to be kind of kiting with your tank most of the time too. And so I'm getting the cap first, which is very nice. If they can get one more stray kill here, they might be good. But because that fight was so messy, Ents can juggle point. There's no point presence for Twisted Minds. It's on its way back. As I say that, KSA appears on my screen. It appears on Kepsa's screen too, right in front of it. A little bit more progress there for Ents as they do have to back away, but with the Kevster being able to go in with this Pulse Bomb could just be exactly what they need. And uh, ooh, good that's kill. even better. Really good kill from Kai. Make that two, in fact, as both DPS fall to the Railgun. Oh, don't, don't let Slay kill someone with an orb. Okay, you're good. There's the quick cap. Nice smart rotation from Kevster too. Just uh, knowing the rest of his team can clean up the rest of that fight, so they try and get the cap ASAP. So 50% of building now for Ents. Decent time on the uh, point for Twisted Minds, but 40%. Uh, so 40% is uh, quite low uh, when, you, when you're considering how uh, quickly they build up, or the flashpoints build up. Yeah, it should, it should be, even if like Twisted Minds get this uh, flip, then Ents should be able to come back into this one if right. the fight is short enough. But Ents, they do have four alts to throw at this and uh, going close to that victory. Good stick. Oh, Yubi kills two. Kai and Crimzo just stacking on top of each other. And that is a fight winner. Quartz doesn't have to do much now. Can just sit back, relax, and watch Yubi do the rest. A double kill for the Tracer Pulse Bomb as Twisted Minds regain control. Uh, well, that's one way for the fight to be quick, is um, if you just get a double with the pulse, you'd be so sick with it. But and they did only expend the coalescence, so they still have firepower coming back in. But this is what we were talking about even before that fight is and have one more shot. They can come in and they can contest. Sound barrier at the ready as well. Do you have that beat to match? Oh, Kellex has to pull the beat at some point. Only hits three. So, of course, Nubri in a little bit of danger here from Kaiu, who was just up on that high ground the whole time, just waiting for the DPS players to appear in front of them. Both annihilations being used in a classic Ram fashion. They just kind of look at each other and just one of them starts punching, then the other one just falls over. OT flip for Ents. Is there anybody from Twisted Minds that can touch? I mean, maybe, but it's looking quite unlikely they win that fight. So a complete back off here and Ents they end up taking the lead on Saravasa. Okay, well, uh, the last time we did see both of these teams on this map, it was Ents that got the victory, but this Pulse Bomb is so nasty. Crimzo got stuck, walked into Kai. Uh, maybe just Fade not online there to be able to I think it was get away like from that damage. One second away from like coming online too. Like, it was yeah, it's a rough time. It's so close. <laughs> Oh, quick rotation here for Ents. Of course, winning that fight, you do get a bit of a priority position on the point, but they managed to catch Twisted Minds on the rotation pretty early, and Kevster just cleans up, and they do cap. Oh, there it is. Quick capture, and again, just Ents being able to get the better of Twisted Minds early on in this flashpoint. Uh, so being able to play a little bit closer to Twisted Mind spawns. Ooh, wow, UB is very confident. Yeah, I very confident. I mean, Kai uh, being a little bit scared and just like look back, Tracer. Okay, me slide away and uh, try and push the uh, rest of the team out. He did exactly that. I mean, the coalescence. Oh, Tipo's ram. Love to see it. <laughs> I don't know why that happens, but it is ridiculous. <laughs> it looks so fun. He's trying his best. That's, that's very good. He's trying his best. Oh, that's very funny. Uh, and so they're already working up to final fight territory as Twisted Minds get one more shot at being able to come in and recontest this point. UB is another false bomb, so maybe it's going to be another double that can open things up here for Twisted Minds, but not if Kevster can pop it first. 
Someone from Twisted Minds is capping right now. I can imagine that is uh, Yubi, who is pretty close to that pulse bomb. Like you said, Kalex is in trouble. Same with Slay. Has to amp it up. Has to throw out a healing orb. Has to throw out something to stay alive. But it is Kevsa that throws a pulse bomb in Slay's direction. Few trades, but with Vestola dead, Kevsa has to be dealt with on this point. So on, Kevsa gets clotheslined as Quartz finishes off Master for that final kill. A team kill for Twisted Minds. They find the cap again, but Ents can come back in here. They've got a lot of ultimates to spare especially that sound barrier, but it's fairly even uh, when you look at both alt banks. It's all about, it's all going to be about the neutral. Well, when I say neutral, I mean Kai or Quartz getting <laughs> huge robot kills. That's what it's, that's, that's the new neutral. Yep, that, that is sure is the new neutral. If you both have overclocks online, does that really mean either team has an advantage? Exactly. I don't know if that matters out. between these two great soldiers. <laughs> Quartz on a position where they managed to win the map earlier on. There's the Annihilation, both overclocks being used. I mean, we can see Vestola and he's staring right at him. Quartz is in big trouble now. That sound barrier coming out just in time to save his life. He ends up backing off and Vestola, that whole time he's been AFK basically in that bush. Someone help him. The Annihilation did a fair amount of work and here comes the later Coalescence. Everybody grouped up in that small room. The Pulse Bomb landing onto KSA, taking pretty low, but he can't get finished off. He's just hiding behind that small bit of doorway there. Even the damage orb, not enough. It's actually Yubi that comes up with the first fight of this uh, team fight, the first kill of this team fight, as Master just walks into that Pulse Bomb. A flip that enters, OT ticks down. Yubi tries to find another touch here to help KSA on that point, but a struggling tank player and a DPS that has to hit that recall it's looking pretty dismal for time uh, uh, twisted minds right now as that overtime will tick down as UB eventually ends up getting finished off so any quarters left but this will be Ents taking the point here going 2-0 the series almost slipping out of their hands but very much uh, picking it back up right now and ready and waiting for this next uh, rotation for twisted minds but it looks like it being so far away they can't catch him on the cross again almost felt like a bit of a fumble there for Twisted Minds to give up that point capture because they walked themselves into a bad rotation when Entz was already set up behind that point. Well, we're on Gardens now and Twisted Minds are able to beat Entz to the punch and get set up, but oh, for how long? Uh, Vistola's going to be able to come into this one soon. Well, there you go. Never mind. Master going down early. That's not good. We'll see how Entz uh, end up approaching this one. Oh, that's how they approach it. Okay, just to stick onto Quartz. Okay, that's pretty good. It's a pretty good way to start this one out. Slay used that coalescence, pushing people back, and Yubi actually gets the better of Kevster there with a pulse bomb of his own. Makai repays it in kind with a railgun shot through the dome. Sound barrier from Kellex, making sure they can stay alive on this point against this coalescence as they uh, now try and flood onto it. Slay's in big trouble, ends up going down to the disruptor shot as Vestola tries to push KSA out. And the KSA uses his ult here. Unless he really feels like he can win it, but without Kellex, without Slay, there's no chance to stay alive. But Twisted Minds still make it hurt somewhat. 41% in the time, uh, in the percent bank now. Similar situation to what we saw in that second flashpoint, though, where if the fight's fast, Ents could be able to come back in and get another recontest of Twisted Minds, take back control of the flashpoint. But Ents, like, uh, Annihilation, Sound Barrier, that is such a survivable combo that it's going to take a lot here for Twisted Minds to be able to break that if Ents pull the trigger first. It's got Kai dicing with death there, and oh, ho, ho, he dies with death, and he won. Oh, the little boop on the KSA. No, just going for a reset by the looks of it there. Kai was just weaving, bobbing and weaving in and out of Quartz's just uh, AD strafing as well. Oh, no, 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 no. You get a pick there, that I would lose my lose my mind if that Widow shot hit. But yeah, I mean, Kai was just square up, uh, squaring up against Quartz there in the little strafe battle, but it was Vestola who was just in the team with the Annihilation. It was tough for Quartz to get much stuff done. Speaking of Annihilation though, here comes KSA, but unfortunately, Yubi's already dead. That's sound barrier, same with Slay. I mean, that's the point, surely, for Ents. I mean, they got one to touch here. KSA is going to rotate to the point. He manages to kill two in the small room. This annihilation is going on for so long. And the post spawn from Kevster goes a little wide, too. Well, it looks like Vestola's going to join the fight once again. Without all these heals, Twisted Minds don't really have a stay in this fight, and they have no staying power either. Here's the flip. The reinforcements are coming in for Twisted Minds, but someone needs to touch. And Kevster is just kind of ripping through them right now. The 
Tim Taris are doing a lot of work and keeping him at bay, but Vestola is just being a door guard right now in front of Quartz, making sure Quartz can't get an angle on the back line. And now Kai can just the use the overclock for free. That coalescence surely ends it here as Twisted Minds try to get back to the point, but it is Entz with the shutout. They're back in this series. Twisted Minds go down and Entz find their first map. Ramatra, Ramatra, we love the Ramatra from Vistola. It's like, uh, what a big difference maker that tank choice has made for Ents to be able to get back into this one. So much engagement pressure when you're able to just walk forward, and it's a different utility than what we see from the Arisa and obviously the Mauga as well, but it looks so much better, so much better. Just looking real good. Maybe taking a lead off out of KSA's boot, you know? I mean, you don't mind that at all. Going to uh, the halfway point of the series now, or it could be the halfway point. Still Twisted Minds on match point. Ents have to be perfect. So first to four format, they could just shut it out in the next couple of maps. Let's have a listen into the winning comms though from Ents. We'll see how that confidence has changed, uh, changed up. Yeah, on the ramp, on the ramp. still main, care. I'll cap it, cap. I'm low. Okay, I'm walking, I'm walking top, I'm walking top. They're gonna touch, they're gonna touch me. Okay, keep push, keep push, keep push. Oh, oh, no, 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 so you're not slide, 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 so you are not slide 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 so you are not
That'll uh, crack open the defensive hole. And I always really enjoy watching the defensive holds here. I think they, they do they do very much work in your favor. Although you're going to give a little bit of ult charge over to the enemy team, uh, especially when you do lose the fight. You just guarantee yourself that extra one. Um, and even if you, and to be fair, if you win it, like you, you just burn off so much time at the time bank too. So. Twisted Minds, no surprise, they want to hold super far forward. We'll see how fast they want to go. They should be able to hold this on this corner, especially with the with the Lucia speeding them up. Oh, Kai taking a lot of damage. Yeah, they're going to hold this really close because, as you said, want to get those two contested. So this is the best corner to do that second one. There's the Vortex on the points. Can stop people doing any cheeky things in the front line. Speaking of which, Kevster is just hounding down Yubi right now. Both DPS pairs end up uh, trading. So uh, Kai, Yubi dead. So it's Traitor versus Sojourn now. Quartz narrowly missing Kevster's head, but here comes the sound barrier. Kevster with a pulse bomb does land on the floor, but it's going to be Twisted Minds backing all the way up to the caves. They're going to actually surge on forward. I take that back. Uh, with Master dead, the, this go time. No more speed? Okay, sure. We'll just run into you. <laughs> it's not too bad. Uh, that does force Ents to have to back up, and this is where you sort of want to stop that card if you want to keep a very strong defensive position and go a lesson. Uh, you also look at the Annihilation coming up soon here. Almost full slate of ultimates here for Twisted Minds, but big wraparound for Ents. Yeah, Kai went super low. Oh, he's behind cover. Couldn't get the heals from the Coalescence there from Crimzo. Soundbarrier from Kellex. Didn't last all too long especially with the Annihilation and the ultimate from Slay. Quartz playing at quite a distance to just basically free fire into the back line of uh, Ents. Quick reset from Kevster, a minute and 40 seconds to go. Okay. Ents' offense right now, not looking that great. However, it can all be changed around. These railguns, these overclocks, they have been the difference makers. And it's once again comes down to Quartz and Kai. Well, if you do stop the cart where it is now, it, it just becomes so difficult for the attacking team to assail. You always have to go under this archway. All that post from Kevster. Quartz kind of sh shrugging that one off, Rose. He just dodged out of the way. It's like, yeah, whatever, it missed me. I'm still going to stay here, fire a few more railgun shots off. <laughs> All right, now it's Kai's turn. What can he do? Nice headshot onto the tank. Doesn't find too much after that as the Vortex goes down, hindering that movement. Finds another angle, but again, can't quite click any heads. And Overclock not finding any purchase as Kevster just juggles onto the point and now turns his attention to the flanking DPS. Yubi ends up falling. That was a 180 there from Kai. Saw Yubi trying to take out the Moira. Quick whip, quick kill. And now Quartz in trouble. Has to back off, use that slide to the caves. A little bit of a disengage, but to some minds, they don't want to give up this point. Also with 30 seconds left. Okay, so it's so low. They're happy for the trade here, our Slay. 20 seconds to go as Yubi finds two kills in the back line. You saw Slay there just trying to heal up the front line and actually just deciding against it. They were healing up the front, then instantly switched to the back. Like, if KSA goes down, that's fine. We can speed them back, not a problem. We just got to take care of Kev, so we got to take care of Kai. Five seconds to go now touch. as Enz tries to use that coalescent to get the touch. Oh, the boop! The boop on Tomasa! He does hit the beep. He hits it, but for how much longer can he stay alive? The beat lands, the overhealth goes through, but Kalex is going to have a better beat here. Vesola is going to be able to march on forward with that annihilation, but Kevs is going to start off the fight with a kill. Make that two. Pulse bomb and just the manual pulse pistols onto Slay. Maybe makes a, a couple more kills too. Master helped out by Kevster, taking care of Kalex. UB to touch, but the annihilation actually falls to the fist of Kai, and eventually Ents make it work. An OT push onto first as they manage to cap the point. I thought that Masa was going to Ajax. Like, that was so close. Also, the boop away from Kellex meant not only was the sound barrier delayed, but also you could have also stopped somebody from just punching that cart. Uh, but so, but Bastola popping the Annihilation at the very least to be able to move in a little bit closer he does by ends an extra life in this round. But, oh, they got to make this overclock count.
Yeah, I'm really liking how fast they're taking these fights as well. Very willing to kind of press the issue and press ends uh, to the very extreme and just pushing every single corner, every single opportunity they have to kind of get in their face and find kills. They are taking it. A late death onto Crimzo too is going to cost them a little bit. We'll see where Twist and Minds want to hold. I'd imagine just kind of in the caves, but they could be really cheeky here and just holding this first corner if they really wanted to. If they want to, but I think it's too dangerous given that Ents, uh, they got a little bit more cover to work with. So I think if you're Twisted Minds, you always back up into caves. You always play this window, which you can see them sitting in, in a defensive position. And that just is better sight lines onto Ents with that high ground control. Right, Kev's it, juggling the payload. UB forces him to recall, so both tracers don't have recall anymore, but Kevsa has a pulse bomb. Gets booped away, straight to the caves, but Kevsa's in trouble, has to get out of there. A coalescence from Slayers once again is in the back line. Goal Kevsa comes out on top. Okay, didn't expect to see that one coming. Slayers coalescence ends up fading away now, as Ensign's got a couple of support ultimates of their own. Shouldn't need it, though. As Rebels just kind of dance around KSA. But with a kill onto Grimzo, this could be uh, a different story. But of course, Kevsa just existing and being alive has very much turned the tides in their favor. Entz now just trying to clear off the last couple of members on this point. Kalex is so low. Kevsa comes up with his, what, like 17th kill of this fight, holding down the fort for Entz on the point. Kevster's Tracer is such a joy to watch. <laughs> I love this hero for him. He gives us such a good show every single time. Just the pop-offs, the pulse bomb. But this is it, Jaws. It could be it. In less than 10 seconds remaining. Got a pulse too. Same with Yubi. 10 seconds to go. Like you said, Rose and Overtime fast approaching. Two sound barriers available for either side, but Yubi's already dead. Kai with a swift railgun shot. And Yubi goes down. Twisted Minds carrying behind this pillar, trying to withstand all of this pressure that Crimzo is just exerting right now. Speaking of pressure, that's for Solar in the front lines too. That annihilation, ripping and tearing through Twisted Minds. Slay ends up falling down to it too. A sound barrier from Kalex just goes by the wayside as Entz once again in OT find the point. They had to use his three ultimates there, but I think you're a four, actually, if you look at the pulse bomb, but you need to in order to get past this defensive chokehold. Now entering into the third point, this is where things start to get really, really tricky here on Shambali Monastery, but you do have Kai's overclock, maybe able to open up a window, and you can see the angle that he's taking is easy sight lines onto the main point of this third. Both the Sojourns pulling the overclock. Here comes the Annihilation. Of course, Vesola used his in the last fight. Oh, how does Kevsa get out of there? Against the raw aim of Quartz, it looked impossible, but he still managed to make it happen. All right, that should be fight done. Now, 45 seconds. You got maybe a couple of fights, if that. Just Minds can take a, a little early peek here. But with the, the payload and where it is, it shouldn't be too long for Ents to kind of get back to the point even if they do die in this preceding one, but Twisted Minds want to make it their last. And they can too, with like the 30 second time bank is whittling down ever so slowly, Slay having the coalescence too, and still really have a whole lot of choice except to kind of walk out into the open here, which is what makes this third point so difficult. Coalescence available for Slay. I mean, Ents just need support ultimates right now. That is a priority. Slay goes super low. Pops the healing orb and pops the coalescence. Masters the target, but slips out of vision of Slay. And a pulse bomb go off there from Kepster. Found a lot of damage, actually, on KSA. Ends up paying for it with his life. Yubi's pulse bomb not finding the same amount of damage as Festola. It hit a shield. And now they basically flipped the map on them. Quartz is alone in the back lines. A quick jump up onto the high ground for Crimzo as he takes care of the Sojourn. And then there's now Kelex and Slay behind enemy lines, still finding kills somehow. Kirizo's chasing them out. They gotta find these. Kelex cannot get out of here alive, but he does somehow. The supports from Tristan Mines managed to slip out of there. Well, now that their supports are keeping each other busy, it's beat. all about this front line pressure, but Kelex gets the beat. vestola has gotta stay up, but he ends up going down. He was so close to the Annihilation, and that's where the cart will make its end. Two points and 65 and a half meters just round that final corner or just on it. Twisted minds, they stamp their flag there and ends. Look, they got an upward hill battle. They finished both those points in OT and we've seen what Twisted Minds can do with a payload push.
Look, look at Hollywood, for example, in an overtime situation. They managed to get it to second point with only a minute in the time bank, Rose. I mean, I'd be scared if I was Ents right now, and especially with how the score line to go into Twister Minds, they're on map point. Let's have a look at a small replay of this uh, final fight here in OT. And look at Kellex. I called it out there, Rose, but Kellex and Slay staying alive. Oh Kellex with 9 oh. HP, went to <laughs> nine, 9 HP, HP <laughs> and then came back with the beat. Kellex staying alive there was life or death for Twisted Minds. It really was because like 9 HP in a dream, you still get out of there. You earn the sound barrier in the process for how busy you kept the supports of Crimson and Masa. And if they are busy trying to duel out with the supports on Twisted Mind side, well, then they're kept busy from being able to heal the front line that we had with Vestola and Kevster. So great stuff from Twisted Minds to be able to stop that cart in its tracks and you're right here. Twisted Minds is a team that works really well with generating momentum and it's gonna be the Mauka against this Rumatra. Maybe they can fare a little bit better but it hasn't looked good when Ensis tried to do that to Twisted Minds. Oh, the Widow. It's got such a good sight line here if they want to peek around that little corner. Everybody's like huddled into what? There you go, right? Everybody's just kind of huddled here because they don't want to get in the sight lines. Kevster and Kai, though, still come up with kills. Quartz wasn't really in that fight, of course, or for the majority of it, as they were on the Widowmaker. And it's making a good stand. I mean, this is what you want, really, right? You want to be able to at least win one fight here. You burn a lot of time off of the time bank. Teleporter usage does get Twisted Minds to the cart, which is going to force Ents to disengage. So that first checkpoint hold is going to be broken, but Ents still have two more that they can take. Really good pick again from Kai. Twisted Minds back up to the old shenanigans with the TPs. I mean, if they manage to TP behind them, that's great. But getting angles with teleports on, on this map without taking like infinite damage as you round a corner can be quite tough. It is hard. I mean, Ents here too, like, they've already gotten the job done. That's, like, one big recontest, too, honestly, when they were able to push Twisted Minds back into spawn. And two and a half minutes left here. Twisted Minds are going to have to break through this, maybe even with this rush. That is a big difference maker here in these two comps. Good Suzu there from Slay, saving everybody from that pulse by Kevster. Felt like that would have netted at least two kills. Coalescence for Crimzo. And UV goes down yet again. Again, they're trying to stop. Twisted minds from getting on the back line and getting onto a position like of a, a, of a high ground, for example. So taking down UB, who's fairly immobile on the sim, mind you, is the name of the game. Two minutes for Twisted Minds left in their time bank. Good defense so far. And just have to keep it up. Annihilation overclocked over Kai. Rotation defense. I cannot go down. That wall is stopped them holding. A small little room. It's actually going to round the corner eventually. Kai's in a decent spot again. There's the teleport. Can they get much stuff done? That's the question. Master laying down the beast. Same with Kellex. Did hit everybody, but look at the damage coming out from Yubi right now. But Kai once again just sending them back to spawn. Vestola was able to somehow keep himself alive. And that's the big danger, too for the Ram Rose is just having the Sim perma look at you with the beam, just getting up to full charge and then just lasering you down through, even through your block, it's like really hard to stay alive. So that is uh, the perfect target again for Kai to kind of pick off when uh, UB's up in your face like that. Yeah, and major credit to Crimson and Masa to be able to keep Vestola up in those scenarios because that's a lot of damage in from UB. Uh, but right now, I'm looking at the fact that Ents could get a full hold. 45 seconds remaining as they make their approach. Again, Twisted Minds have one more shot. Fakey TP for UB that time around. There's a coalescence, and Crimson is just staring at UB right now. That's all he's doing. Ends up having to fade away, you know, healing orb available, and of course, Quartz pops the overclock, finds two almost instant kills. Kevs is lined up in front of him, hits the recall, judged where he was. Kevs to one HP, oh, predicts the blink onto the mini health pack as well. Quartz finds three in that fight, and there is the point. Not in OT, but pretty damn close. Looking like uh, Ens' defense as well. Both teams extremely competent and like know how to play their comp on uh, 
the defense of point A and point B, I'd imagine. We'll see how quickly uh, Twisted Minds can push up to point B. That Sojourn reaction for the Disruptor shot over the health pack, take that one to your ranked games if you have a Tracer that uh, you are having trouble dealing with and you're playing the Sojourn. But now on the defense, like if you take a look at Caves and the positioning that Ents have, you got a little bit better sight lines here if you are Ents. Kai able to shoot down this high ground. Jefferson still got a pulse in his hands. Once again, wall used to stop Kai getting much stuff done. Then you don't have to invest the sound barrier either. End up backing up here. Oh, Pokemon, that landed too. Didn't matter. Suzu exists. Sound barrier from Master, sound barrier from Kellex. A little bit of a better one there from Kellex, as this one didn't hit Kevster. Oh, this charge too. It's going to be a bit of a pain. You've got to kill Yubi. If Yubi stays alive, the longer he stays alive, the more havoc he's going to cause. But it's up to Quartz. I mean, now it's up to Crimzo. Quartz has been the man of the hour and the man of the match so far for Twisted Minds. And ends up killing Crimzo and the rest of the team as they got a minute and 30 now to push towards this second point. And should have a retouch here. But it's going to be a bit of a staggered one, at least for Twisted Minds. They've got the TP, so they're able to actually group up fairly quickly as five. Five of Crimzo's coalescence could be big here. Yeah, Pushing push him all the way back. Here comes the rush from Slay, pushing them around the corner. Coalescence is off in a second. Grimzo using that healing orb to sustain everybody up. And now Quartz can try and get a high ground advantage. Hits one body shot, looking for Kai. Swing and a miss. Kai ends up just taking him out as he tried to dash towards him. If Quartz wins that, maybe 180s gets another kill, but it shut Quartz down. And Twisted Minds have one more fight now to try and get this payload going. 40 seconds left, not much in the ultimate bank. KSA should be the first to win all for Twisted Minds there with that cage fight. And that is a great ultimate to have to be able to put right on top of that payload. But Ents, like Masa, if he's able to get even just a little bit more damage, may have the sound barrier as a good response to that. But it comes down to this, Jaws, if Twisted Minds can extend their time in this map. Beat, cage, wall, everything they need to win the fight. Well, apart from that overclock, I suppose, from this Quartz. Speaking of which, there's Kai, there's the cage. Vestola in trouble. So much damage. No beats for Marsa. He ends up laying it down, but he doesn't catch Vestola. It's a four on three now as the health bars for Ents are dwindling. And Twisted Minds, again, <laughs> near OT or on OT itself, managed to cap point. Both teams struggling on their attack, but just managing to make it work. Same situation for Twisted Minds as Ents uh, were faced a moment, a, mo a moment ago. A minute and 20 seconds rounding this corner and that golden box of victory in their sights. This is so close. This fourth, uh, this fifth, this, I don't know. It, so many contests coming through here. So many ultimates now on the board as well. Rush or Twisted Minds could open this up. Yubi's got full charge. Yubi's just running a Vestola there. The coalescence from Grimzo does nothing, does nothing against Twisted Minds. The rush too powerful, and Twisted Minds are going to be able to push up. This is a delayed fight now for Ents. Delayed fight. UB has the photon barrier as well, so all the sight lines in Twisted Minds favor. Quartz can just sit out in the open with that photon barrier coming through, and Ents, they have to get to the point. They have to close it now. In order to win the series, there's a quick touch there Kevster from Kester. Gets the touch. There's the wall. Pulse buff for Kev. Has to go big. 30 seconds to go, but Master's already down. Twisted Minds are just going to run away with this one. The new kings of EU have been crowned as Twisted Minds take the series 4-1. to one such amazing play coming out from Twisted Minds, really showing everyone why they are one of the top teams in EMEA OWCS and proving it by grabbing the title. Such a big revenge match for Twisted Minds as well. When Ants beat them in the winner's final, sent them down to the lower bracket, Twisted Minds had to win not one, but two matches today in order to take that title. And they got warm in that first one, worked with that into this grand finals match. Congratulations to them. Twisted Minds, yeah, that revenge definitely tastes sweet now. A three and one victory. And they lost, they, sorry, they won one map against Ents in the upper bracket. They turned around it. Uh, just unbelievable play across the board from Twisted Minds. I mean, this is a force to be reckoned with.
Twist of Minds and Ents. It felt like it was going to be a bit of a closer series, and a lot of the chat was very much in Ents' favor. It was like 80 plus percent or something was the Pred. Like, it, it was ridiculous. No one expecting that. Large payout for the for the Preds, uh, for the Twist of Mind Predators in chat, and everybody, I think, can breathe a sigh of relief. Twisted Minds take the crown. They win the main event here in EU in stage one. I mean, we're going to jump to the uh, desk now as they can break down the series a little bit more. Charles in there, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. They have rumbled. Did they call there? They did, right? Yeah, they have rumbled. Side point, side point, side point. Yeah, side point, okay? Yeah, send the bite. I'm shooting at the mart, okay? There you have it guys, our very first OWCS stage champions, Twisted Minds. What a crazy game that was. Wow, wow. That was so t so tense in the end as well. Yeah. I mean, Twisted Minds carved out an early lead, but those last couple of maps. Once Kepster was on Tracer, I kind of felt that, that that is like the last stop to pull, right, for, for Ents. You know, throughout the first three maps, nothing they were trying was working. It wasn't coming together for them. And then with Kepster on Tracer on Flashpoint, I, I started to believe we were we were yeah. backstage well, what jumping up and down, chanting, <laughs> Lisa al <-Kaib, laughs> but, <laughs> but, but even, even Lisa al -Kaib couldn't take down Twisted Minds there. What a fantastic performance for them. And I think crucially, right, they win with the Ram comp into right. the Valga for the first three maps. It starts to look like, oh, maybe this comp just wins, right? And then to come to flip the script and do it the reverse on Shambali, there can be no doubt really that Twisted Minds is the better team here. They won both sides of the matchup. They're just better. Yeah, it's crucially what you said in the end there that yes. Twisted Minds, they dominated early on. We saw a bit of an adaptation come out from NC Esports. They said, all right, let's mirror it. Let's go head to head. But immediately, you see a quick response from Twisted Minds, really confident in their ability to bring out this Mauga composition when they felt the moment was right. UB, like you said, Jake, get yeah, crazy, you, you, you saw the future. between the Tracer <laughs> and the Symmetra at perfect times. It really does feel like Twisted Minds, they earned this win so very much. They were so prepared coming into this. So many different compositions they showed as well. Uh, being able to play both the Mauga and the Ramatra, great adaptation coming into today after losing to NC Sports yesterday. So there's, there can be no doubt about it. This is the best team in the NBA right now. I think this is really, this is Overwatch 2, right? This really bodes well for a lot of the teams around the world that have dedicated themselves to mastering every composition, every strategy. You know, you can be a one-trick pony, but when you go up against these highly flexible teams who can just go back and forth to different styles, it's so hard. It feels like they always have the edge on you. And Twisted Minds, no matter what comp they're playing, they're keeping it clean, focused. Whether it's like the individual plays from Quartz, so, so reliable on the Sojourn. You know, UB's flexibility across the hero pool. I just love, though, Kellex and Slate, very, very consistent backliners. And then none of this works if you don't have a tank that can handle the whole roster. And that's exactly what we're seeing from KSA, just a rock-solid frontliner throughout and his comms as well right always keeping the team on the same page with him letting them know what he needs how to get the most value out of him i mean this is a full team play here whereas i feel like for ents we're talking about these individuals we're talking about big pop-off moments but it, it, the team strength the, the fighting together that's where twisted minds wins and especially in a rush meta i mean there's there's not a more valuable asset to have yeah i want to shout out ubis tracer as well because when that swap came on from kevster okay it's on flashpoint we're gonna swap over kevster to the tracer and that's the hero he's going to do dominate on ubi swapped over to the tracer as well and definitely gave him a run for his money you know kevster is one of the best uh tracers in the world but here we see player of the match quartz i mean this is one of the best hit scam players in the world like yeah you're playing sojourn ash soldier cassidy you name it uh being able to have quartz on your roster Big boon. I do think we have to start thinking about outside of the region for Quartz, right? I mean, he's coming off a World Cup championship. He's now EU champion in OWCS. I mean, this is Twisted Minds being EMEA champions for like over a year now. Like yeah. they dominated yeah. contenders yeah. last year. They won World Cup and now they win OWCS EMEA again. Like this is a, they are like the, 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 the crowned champs of EMEA for over a year now. And for me, Quartz is the better Sojin in the lobby today. I mean, Kai's a fantastic player. I don't think he had a bad game. I think Quartz is just that guy. I mean, we, we got to start putting him in the same conversation here as the best in the world, right? Like, I think this is one of those guys we need to see now at the majors on LAN against the best teams from every region because 
I think Quartz has already kind of put himself now. He is the best hit scan in the EU. Yeah. Is he the best in the world? Is the, is the sort of conversation we have to start we have to start asking ourselves. And also, I think just Twist of Mind just uh, surprises every single time they, they're they're on the server. It's just so surprising how great, how good they could be uh, playing this playing the, playing Overwatch. All right, uh, let's move on to our post match interview. We're gonna have uh, time to talk to one of the champions, and it is none other than KSA. KSA, big congratulations on getting the win. I just want to start, you know, how are you feeling right now? Uh, yeah, I feel feel very, very good, of course. Uh, yesterday was quite rough. It was like, yeah, I mean, we played the ball, but it just didn't sit right against the Rooster Cup for some reason. Just every time you're getting poked out, every time you, you go in. Mm -hmm. And like in today, we just stood like, whatever, you know what? We're just gonna play. We're gonna go back to what we're gonna go back to Ram, ban maps. We did Lee. We banned Lee Jang. We played maps we never played before. We've never played Hollywood. We never played uh, Nepal a lot. So we just took took in like, uh, how do you say it? Out of their comfort zone, out of their script, you could say. Because I feel like these guys are. Uh, they're like kind of uh, like study the map, you know. If you know, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah, I feel like they, they had so, you yeah. guys pinned as like, oh, you're a Malga one-trick team, you know, that's all you're going to play. And then it felt from, even from map one, when you bring out a different look and you're sticking to it and, and it's working against what they prepared, it felt like they didn't have an answer for you. I'm curious for your guys' perspective to make that swap and to be like, all right, we're going to, we haven't really been practicing this. You know, you're on Ramatra, you've been playing Malga pretty much the whole tournament, uh, being one of the only players continuing to play it pretty deep into the tournament. How was that for you personally? Like as a tank, you know, you're kind of the center of the team. I hear all the times in the listen is I'm hearing you talking to the team, letting them know what you need. But how is it playing with all your teammates and like coordinating with them under a new comp where maybe you don't have the prep time really? Oh yeah, uh, I mean, we all went in with a mindset of, uh, you know what guys, we're in grand finals. Uh, let's just do something different, you know, play for fun, then go back to ram comp. We we were, we were expecting to go Mauga after we won like a couple of maps uh, and we expected like it to be like really hard then all of a sudden it's just I'm just holding block holding block against Symmetra and Mauga and they're just focusing on me and then my my tracer is free my soldier is free because they're all trying to kill the ramp but they can't kill the ramp because I'm just holding block it's been a, it's been a just, pretty just long run here of you know dominance from you guys now do you feel like you have anything left to prove here like what how do you feel like as an achievement as a player now winning owcs do you have anything else to prove and maybe how are we gonna go celebrate this win uh honestly i don't know i'm just I'm just gonna go outside have fun you know <laughs> not enough much else to do uh but yeah i think we definitely established that we're the best team in yeah. EMA once again. 100%. We keep this in the next stage. Yeah, I mean, you guys are the best. I think you, you guys deserve that rest. Uh, before I let you go, KSA, I do. I want to do a final question. I want to open up, open up the floor for you because you guys are definitely the uh, best team in EMEA region right now. So anything you want to say? Uh, I just want to shout out to UB. That guy is the best team that I've ever played with. Like, I know Quartz is just perma patriotic people. You guys don't see what uh, what Yubi does. Like, but he's just basically, yeah. Like, in-game leader does so much for the team. Yeah, and of course, I shall out Quartz because he's actually helping everyone, but yeah. <laughs> uh, we saw the Yubi Tracer. The Yubi Tracer was Yubi crazy. Tracer was crazy, yeah. yeah. 100% right. Yeah, right. Really good on Chase. KSA, thank you so much for your time. Again, big congratulations. You guys are the best team in EMEA. Get some rest and hope to see you soon again. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for having me. All right, everybody, that was KSA. What a fantastic answer. Like, I think at the end, him like crediting, you know, his teammates as well was, was a very nice thing that you could do in an interview as well. I mean, you can tell when you hear the comms that this is a very team play focused team. Like, always they're playing off each other. No, yeah. it's not about the hero plays. I mean, yes, yes, we know Quartz is delivering hero play after hero play. He's getting tons of kills, but that comes from the way the team plays as a unit. They open up the map for him. They give him space. I mean, if he's not an insane player, don't get me wrong, it doesn't look nearly that good. But it's those opportunities they build with their, their teamwork, their coordination, and their strategy. Um, Kellex, I feel like he always had the later beat this series. Every time he's able to hold on to those ults and, and deliver it, you know, to kind of close out the fight rather than needing it to be, oh, we have to use an ult just to open things up. 
it's their team play that, that's giving them the opportunity, and then B is a formality. It finishes off the fight. So yeah. across the board, I was really impressed with Twisted Minds. Sure. I want to see them on an international competition. Yeah, exactly. And that's where I was going to go next. You know, putting this win into like a larger contextual uh, kind of situation here now, because this is Twisted Minds, as we said, dominated EMEA all of last year. And then as well, you know, Saudi Arabia, they won the World Cup and really, you know, established themselves on an international stage right there. But then, you know, doubters, you know, people criticizing could be like, well, it's the World Cup, you know, it's not really these professional franchise teams or whatever. Like, now you've taken down ENS Esports here. You got Kai, Kevs on that roster, Master Crimson. Like, these are yeah. you know, tier one professionals right here. So, this is Twisted Minds over and over exceeding expectations, proving doubters wrong. And now, international comes next. You know, you've already won in stage one. If you have a good result in stage two, that means you're going to qualify for Dream Act Dallas. And then we're talking like Twisted Minds against Toronto Defiance, Woo! Falcons Esports, WAC, yeah. you know, in that kind of mix, right? So this has consistently for over 12 months now been a journey of Twisted Minds proving that is wrong. Yeah, I mean, that's hopefully that happens very, very soon. I'm very excited for that. Let's take a look at some of the highlights that happened today because we had some great plays. And this one, of course, it's Quartz. We were talking about Quartz, how you know this guy just doesn't miss throughout the whole series. You know, he made such an impact on that soldier. Oof. Yeah, he is fearsome on this hero. You can see why he doesn't swap off it all series long. I mean, why would you when you're delivering results like this? And for the team style, how much they play aggressively, push in as a unit, Sojourn's that hit scan who can really follow up on those moves from the team. You know, not leashed to the back line, doesn't necessarily need tons of defense all around him. He can play flexibly and, and move around with the team, which is clearly one of the biggest strengths, I think, of this Twisted Mind squad. And as far as doubters go, I feel like at this point, it's just a little silly to be doubting a team that's been this dominant, dominant for yeah, this long. Yeah, I agree, but then you saw 12% going into the day. Exactly, I agree, I agree. People still were, but I think at this this is the wake-up call, right? This is that, okay, you've, you've had all your excuses of, okay, it's the World Cup, and maybe the teams aren't as well established, and, you know, they, they beat the team from China and Team South Korea, okay, whatever, but we can, we, we can find some way to pretend that's not real, which, of course, it is. But here, this is professional Overwatch. This is a team with, I mean, you've got Gunba, world champion coach. Mm. You've got players like Kepster and Kai. We've yep. been singing their praises all weekend because they're phenomenal players. These individuals are incredible. And to overcome that speaks so highly to these players' skill, their potential, and, and where they could go. With these circuit points in the bag now for them, yeah. yes, OWCS stage two is crucial. It's worth double the points. You can't just talking about points. Look at there that. You have I mean, it. There you go. 250, right? 250. Like, you're in a spot where I just can't imagine Twisted Minds not being whatever in that top mix. They don't even need to win first place again, but I, I feel like they're going to want to because right. if they do, if they deliver that second first place finish, I feel like that really does well, that is solidifies thing, right? things. Circuit right? points, they double in stage two. So even though you get a really good placing in stage one, you got to be careful. Because right. Stage two, stage two placings is so important for those circuit points that advance you to Dallas. Yeah. But I mean, at the same time, you know, like like Jake, you said, like, like for Twisted Minds, because they won stage one, you know, they could, you know, they have... Well, they can like lose one or two matches. They don't have to place first again. So they're, they're a little bit more comfortable. They've got a big teams. advantage going to Dallas. Yeah. And, and I think the question now though is they've got the target on their back. They have a much difficult, much more difficult test ahead of them than they had behind them. Where in the, honestly, even though Twisted Minds was dominant in EU, there was still the big question mark of like, how about when all these OWL players, you know, come back to EU region, we get all these like the, the new juggernauts in, in the EMEA region. And now let's see if they can still hold on to the crown. Now that they have it with a 4-0 win, or 4-1 rather, win in the grand finals, the target's on their back. Everyone's gonna be watching Twisted Minds. Everyone's gonna be trying to figure out, okay, how do we beat them? How do we find their weaknesses? How do we punish them? If they can hold on to that dominance in OWCS Stage 2, they are gonna look really fearsome coming into an international competition. But by the same token, that's a that's a fraught question. You've got a lot of players, a lot of intelligence and, and effort. On all these other teams, we've seen great performances from you know, SSG, Exoblivione, and NC Sports here in the tournament. So I think any of them can still be threats. For it's it's time for them to go back to Korea. <laughs> go back go to Korea. Back to Korea. Stage <laughs> Couple of weeks, get some practice in Korea. Whack Falcons, come back to EMEA, sweep stage two, right. you're good. All right, well, that was it for the EMEA region, but every, everyone, uh, don't go too far because we're taking a short break and we'll be right back with NA. More Overwatch? Keep it coming, Woo! baby. They have rumbles. Did they call that? They did, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. They have rumble pulls. Rumble pulls. Side point. Side point. Side point. Yeah, side point. Okay. Yeah, stand by. I'm shooting at them hard. Okay. Can you shoot tracer? Can you shoot tracer on point? Yeah, I'm shooting tracer. Can you help me with three? Ram, 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 ram. Ram, 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 ram. Ram, 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 ram,
Unique New York. Unique New York. A U E R E U U U. Unique New York. Unique New York. What are you doing, Doc? Vocal warm ups for the sh for the show. Oh, like now. Vocal warm. Yeah. Kind of yeah. makes sense. sense. Yeah, yeah, we should do something, right? right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. All right. <laughs> Oh yeah. Immortals will take contender season zero. They will fly high. San Francisco is shot. I get to share it here. Whoever said lightning doesn't strike twice has never met San Francisco shock. Shanghai Dragons are your champions. Dallas Fuel takes their place amongst the stars. Florida Mayhem are your dreams for all time. Welcome back, everybody. America! I'm gonna miss seeing this. Get some NA Overwatch going on. NA Overwatch you time, baby. You baby. We'll be back. We'll be back, hopefully. Yes, we, we'll, we'll probably be back. Anyways, yeah, uh, I'm here with uh, Jake and Johnny. How are you guys doing? By the way, your tattoo is looking great. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Yeah, it is, yeah. You wanna show it off? Oh, what is it? it is. Are you a Shanghai yeah. Dragons fan? Yeah, you know, I got it for the Shanghai Dragons. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's let's jump right in. We got we got two really big matches coming up. So uh, before that, though, another important thing. Do you guys like drops? Chat, I know oh. you love drops. Come link on. your account. Is that even a question? Link, link. link your account. Sprays, icons, diva name card, Kiriko skins as well. Just link your accounts. Get you those drops. Play from Kiriko. You yeah, play after what you've seen in the tournament, sure. Kiriko, oh, and Kiriko also, looking good. Everybody, uh, you know, follow the socials as well because our social team is on point. So give them a follow to enjoy the memes, everybody. Oh, they, they, they did curse uh, NC Sports in the region. They said that they were brewing up uh, a reverse sweep and that didn't happen. So mm. I blame you. I blame you, Obochi Sports <laughs> Manager. You spoiled it. Right. Ents had a chance and you ruined it with your jinx. Yeah, I believed in Ents too. I thought I thought they could give us a little bit more. Even maybe one more map, but, you know, but you have to smite I, 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 I believed in Twisted Minds. You're so smart, Danny. <laughs> so smart. All right. Anyways, I mean, this hey. is we're, we're almost at the end of stage one, but also stage two is coming up as well. So oh, everybody, yeah. sign up for that. Why is it important? Not only you get money, but also if you win, double points. Circuit points. Double, points. double points. Double points. Double points. Double points. I love multipliers. <laughs> Multiplicative scaling. It's so powerful. How does, how does that go? Okay. Anyways, but hey, hey, uh, I'm not good at math. But what I know is if you don't, if you're not a, if you're not competing, you can still be part of this. How? Yes, yeah, so you guys could join us at DreamHack by buying your tickets. Buy your tickets. Come and have fun with us. It's gonna be great. Uh, I remember Johnny's the 2019 homestand in Dallas. True. Fans went crazy. True. 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 And Dallas is gonna be fun. From Texas. It's gonna be fun. Tons of esports. Right. All kinds of gaming, get all the regions together. I think that's going to be even more exciting than past international competitions because this time we won't exactly know which region's on top, who's got the best read of the meta. Of course, it's going to be NA. Any NA believers? Smile. But let's say we let's say it could be someone else. It could be someone. Theoretically, it's not it's not a guarantee. So we got to we got to find out at LAN. And I think yeah, that's one of the most exciting things about Overwatch. So everybody, buy your tickets for DreamHack Dallas. It's going to be great. All right, uh, we're we're going to get NA started, but I think before we get into the thick of the action, we should check in with uh with someone who's been following everything. And when I say everything, literally everything, everything. EMEA, Asia, I'll and of course it. NA as well. It's none other than Avril. Avril, how are you doing? Are you getting any sleep? I'm tired, bro. I'm, tired. <laughs> I'm, on, I'm on the unhinged 30 hour grind round. Oh, look, I, I was like, should I sleep tonight? No, probably not. I just co streamed Korea last night. They just finished up the group stage. And it's like, well, in three hours, MEA starts. I could just watch that. And then I'm going to watch NA afterwards. And then there's going to be like six hour break and then Japan. So I was, well, I'm going to do that as well. So by the time I'm done, I think I'm going to be close to about 30 hours. It'll be just, it'll be like late 20s or something like that. So. Yeah, I guess I guess there's no sleeping for me. It's just you're, not happening, is it? You're doing great work. You're doing great work, Avril. Now I need you to kind of explain the context of what is happening on your screen right now. You're wearing a Gator jersey and you're in a Yakuzi. What? Yakuzi? A Yakuzi. I mean, that was That's a Yakuzi. the most sweetest thing you've ever said. Wait, really? What That's what it's called, right? A Yakuzi? I'm cosplaying the Atlanta <laughs> yeah, Rain. Yeah, no? I'm cosplaying the Atlanta Rain in season two at the Mega Mansion. If you know, you know. So <laughs> that's what's happening right now. 
um but you know it's this is this is as much glazing as i'm gonna do for na you know what, i'm actually you know jake's doing a little too much glazing for na so i regret putting this shirt on now you've become a hot tub uh, i need jake to admit <laughs> i need i need jake to i'm actually in the hot tubs and pools category right now this is what this is what i'm, what I'm doing to an mf i'm just gonna be real with you right now don't look for him so in the overwatch my, category you won't find him right. you, find know, him. And, you know don't worry you know if you're worried about me dropping that one you you know owcs not being the swearing on broadcast allegations with the two f bombs that we saw from players on the on the comp six. Just saying right now, Jack, you need them. to admit that Asia's better this year. I need to hear it. Jack, Asia's better this year. Jack, All right, you tell me. I will see. We'll see in Dallas. No, no, I will come, no, 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 no. Wait, Seth, I, no, uh, I, wanna, I wanted to ask you that. We we actually have some questions for you, Avril. And what I wanted to ask you was about Asia. Like, how are things looking in Asia right now? Give me the DL. It's it, it was like it was like a changing meta every week. I know we had that Malga patch come through. But even without that, it was literally a changing meta every single week. I think in the last uh, weekend that we just had, Korea's been playing a lot of Winston. We had the Black Falcons game. You know, that's the Lip He Sang team versus the the Stalker proper team. And you got to check that game out because that is one of the best games. Super high skilled. Um, yeah, amazing stuff. Korea's popping off right now. Like every team is super competitive. And I think that's what's amazing about the region. Uh, I have one more. Actually, I'm just gonna do another question. Did you? Did you wait? Did you say that you got to see the uh, the EMEA uh, Grand Finals or no? Yeah, I just watched it. You watched it? I was here. All right, then if you, I'm streaming right now. Who I'm do live. you think is the strong, well, strongest team in a in Asia? If you had to pick one, well, who would? It, which team would it be? Well, WAC just beat Falcon, so I guess yeah. it has to be WAC right now. They're leading. Right now, if WAC went up against uh, Twisted Minds, four zero, win? WAC wins. Oh, four right. zero? He's probably not wrong. Okay. What? Really? But see, this is the thing we and don't Jake's know. Coping. I mean, they and have Jake's totally opposite reads. They have totally opposite reads on the meta. Like, if it turns out that Rush is the meta, then that series actually is very scary for WAC. If, if WAC is right and that Winston and Ana they can they can win with this like classic dive style, then yeah, they probably stop 4-0. But that's what I think makes international competition so exciting when the teams are region separated. Is you don't know who's right. Like nobody knows until the teams actually clash. Maybe if you talk like yeah, raw skill. If we do like if you force them to play a Winston Tracer mirror, sure I take WAC, right? But you don't know that. And Twisted Minds, they win this EMEA championship yeah. because of their flexibility and because of how well they execute on the rush. Historically, when, when the regions have clashed and rush has been meta, it hasn't been favorable to Korea. Wag well, is better. I mean, I mean Black, Black, they don't just play dive. Just to be clear, they're not a one-trick team. Yes, they yes, don't just yes. play dive. And what's really interesting right now is that just in the most recent matchup between those two top teams, um, Jimbin and Max looked better than Harbin and Smurf, and that's not something I thought I would ever say. So Wack is looking dangerous. Even, you know, the players that you thought weren't going to be the highest performers are on, on an unreal level right now. It's crazy. I mean, we were talking about, we are talking about EMEA and Asia. Everything's great, but we're going into the NA region right now. Avril, what are your thoughts on the uh, NA region currently? Yeah, I think Toronto kind of struggled, but they, they look much better in the series versus MA. It's it's Timeless that's the real surprise though, right? Because Timeless, I don't know how many people thought Timeless are going to be that team to come through and really put it to the top dogs. But I mean, they they pushed Toronto to a map five. They beat MA to a map five. MA are looking kind of weak right now. I'm a little worried about their rematch versus Timeless. Um, Timeless got a real shot at being Toronto, but that Toronto versus MA game, Toronto showed they were top dogs. So they're still the favorites. And Toronto, to me, even I don't know, you, I don't know if you're gonna ask me Toronto better than Twisted Minds as well, but <laughs> I think Toronto right now seem like the best are Western they? team. So I, I'd probably still take that. I think Toronto are, are still are currently the best Western team, but it would be close. I think that's more like a four-two, four-three towards Toronto. Okay. All right. One final question. Uh, what are your thoughts on like the the uh, the open ecosystem and your your take on future of competitive Overwatch? I mean, um, first of all, the co-streaming has been great. I mean, I checked the Overwatch category. It's like, I think 12 out of the top 15 streamers is all co-streaming OWCS. So first of all, I mean, just from a pro broadcast perspective, it's been absolutely sick. Um, but from a, from like the format wise, having separated regions where, you know, you get to foster domestic competition and then bring together a lot, a, a bunch of different styles, bringing EU back is huge. Like genuinely i've been aside from the fact that the time zone is really bad for me catching up or sometimes occasionally watching the emea region live has been really fun and just seeing how that develops so i'm just glad we have like three regions that seem to have you know their own reads and their own strengths and i just can't wait for the clash of dallas japan ow says japan is popping off yeah and, and japan's credit. viewship has been popping off we're getting good by japan the, those, i saw that japan's well. going hard right now yeah all right, uh, Avril, thank you so much. Uh, before we go, I mean, I'm sure you know, I mean, we don't have to say goodbye because we are going to be raiding you uh, after the broadcast. So be ready. I'm just telling you to be ready. 
We're gonna go in there. I'm looking forward to it. We're gonna, we're gonna we'll push, join you in the hot tub. Slash <laughs> we'll join you in your jacuzzi. Yeah, please. There's enough room. I'll, I'll, I'll make my cam smaller. We, we can fit more people in. Let's ah, do it. smart, smart. That's the, right. that's that's gracious of you. All right, brother. Thank you so much, man. Thank you, Avril. Thanks, guys. All right. I mean, Avril, another great co-streamer, co co-streamer for the uh, uh, for the OWCS uh, series that we're doing. Hey, you could also be a co-streamer as well. The applications are now open. If you want to co-stream these amazing games, put in your applications. Be a co-streamer. in. Let's get more co-streamers in. Yeah. Hey. 16, like you said, so many of the top streamers co-streaming. A lot of small streamers too. It's been tons of fun. Sort of like a different vibe to follow the games with. If you're, if you're into that, you follow your favorite streamer. Um, but still follow the esports broadcast and still, you know, kind of bring all the community together. Sure. That's been the mission of OWCS so far, right? Is bringing people together, bring it all under one you know, big under welcoming one roof. Under all into one Yakuza One together. big Yakuza together. Leave me alone. <laughs> yeah. Love Yakuza. Anyways, all right. Uh, we want to highlight some standout players from this stage, uh, but we need your help, everybody. It's really hard to pick. Uh, so the three of us, along with a special guest. Any guesses, everyone? A special guest? Fish. Who is He's it? That's special. Like fish. <laughs> he just comes in. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. whoa, whoa. whoa. Oh, you're gonna sit on it. Oh, okay. I thought you were gonna all use right, it. All right, uh, all right, all right. So it's gonna be us, and also with help of Jack, we nominated four <laughs> players we think stand out as stage superstars. But we need help picking who will take it from this stage. So we'll be doing this four times this year, by the way. So it's stage one, we'll do it again for stage two, stage three, and stage four as well. So let's see our four nominees, and we'll chat about them. Starting off with my personal pick, everybody, Pelican. I oh, think that's great alliteration. Best. What? Your, my personal pick, Pelican. Love it. Yeah, right? Better Peaky than Peaky. Yakuza, no? <laughs> it's fine. Anyway, <laughs> anyways, Pelican, uh, we, we, we get 30 seconds each, all right? I mean, I, the only thing I want to say is you guys have to uh, remember that he's playing from Korea. He's playing on 120 ping, and he's still dominating. Like, I mean, I don't want to say he carried the team, but I mean, he leads his whole... Lisa's his whole team, I guess. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, there were a lot of times. It's also in the interview that I did with Pelican, he did say Tracer is one of the hardest heroes to play on ping. And you guys, we don't even realize it. He still gets all the kills. Like, what else do I say? I think that's that's literally it. Pelican. His name is Pelican, not Pelicant. Wow. Wow. Yeah. wow. Wow. What a tagline at the end from you there. Nice one, Danny. You're selling it. The sizzle. Well, okay. <laughs> I guess I'll combat that with my pick then, which is going to be that rocket has been rising like a rocket ship. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh. Okay, this is Whoa. OWCS, okay? We know that Pelican and these Overwatch League players, they've established themselves as the absolute superstars in our, in our ecosystem. But this is OWCS. It's about an open format. It's about new prospects coming into the scene, making a name for themselves. And who better to vote for than voting for Rocket, who has come in here with Timeless and just made so many fans of us. A vote for Rocket is a vote with your heart for one of the more incredible storylines we've seen so far. You re you're there. reading the same speech as you did for EU. No, I'm yeah. not. Kevster is a sick legend. Kevster is a whereas, sick rookie, whereas, up and coming Ro player. Rocket is Kevster. like an up and comer, just like just turning things around. I'm pretty sure I heard the same speech for you. No, no, no. I mean, I have to agree. <laughs> it was a good speech. <laughs> Johnny, Give Johnny. Some credit. Rocket might be this like insane up and comer. You know, it's so exciting to see a, a new player like yeah. that make his name in the scene. But we got to talk about Merit. We have to talk about Merit because he is the standard bearer right now. We talk about best hit scan in the world. For me right now, it's Merit. For me right now, it really is Merit. I, I think across any region, this performance he delivered yesterday was absurd. There was no one else in the server. No one could challenge him. No one could stop him. He was just unleashed. And if he can continue to deliver on that level, for me, Merritt, he's he's the heart and soul of Toronto Defiant. He's the one, yes, you've got someone, you've got all these flexible players. What are they there for? They're there to make space for Merritt because this guy delivers frag after frag after frag. He is a freak of nature on any hits can you put him on. For me, this guy's, this guy's the best in the world right now. All right. Best in the world. <laughs> Great. Wow. Why is everybody fantastic, high fantastic high answer? High praise, Jake. Why is everybody <laughs> picking DPS always? What, what do you, what do you What's wrong with the other roles, it's, huh? It's a bit of a DPS meta. It yeah. is a DPS meta, but I've chosen Riker as my uh, Ooh, as my person, okay. as my star. Right. I'm listening. Let me hear it. Let's go. Riker play Winton, and Winton jump, but oh. Winton don't nap because no honor. No sleep. So Winton win. Winton primal. Winton backline. Winton kill. Winton win. 
I don't understand what's uh, so hard to well, think about. Banana, having argument right there. It is. It is. It's very compelling. Yeah. No honor means Winton equal good. I think Rucker's been great. Him and Icy's trading in and out, but he's still looking fantastic. Winton, Winton, go hard in this meta. Wow. Winton, Winton win. Wow. I'm Winston. Greetings. Winston. I'm Winston. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I mean, right. that's uh, th those are our picks. I don't know what you guys think. Uh, I think Pelican is probably best. Never mind. All right. Anyways, uh, yeah. Uh, tell us uh, who you guys want to uh, pick as the best NA player for stage one. And Jaws, I think. Yeah. yeah go. Bye. We're done. Okay. Are we just done with me? Okay. I'll, I'll be, be back. back. You'll oh, be back. Since, wait, wait, since you did the Lucio uh, sliding, can you do the monkey <laughs> monkey jump? <laughs> with my <laughs> stool? Yeah, and leave. Ross. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> You should have primal rage the chair away. <laughs> primal rage and start punching us on camera. All right, here's the NA bracket, viral. everybody. Let's take a look. <laughs> uh, I mean, we got two great matches. I think we're starting things off with the lower final first, and then we're going to go into the grand final. They're waiting. They're yeah, waiting. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I feel M80, they did look weak in that match against Toronto. They kind of got slapped around. I think they're veteran players on this squad, though. They can, they can pull themselves together and put up a big fight. But there's no doubt Timeless are smelling blood in the water here. This looks like a very winnable match with the way Timeless has been playing. I think Timeless has been a bit variable, but the more the tournament goes on, the stronger and stronger they look. I feel like they are peaking for this match. Yeah, Timeless looked so good versus yeah. Luminosity, though. I mean, they're, they're so good when both Rocket and Chopper are just firing on all cylinders. Mm -hmm. And like Riker's confidence yesterday in the interview, he was so confident yeah. between him and Icy being able to cover so many different tanks. They don't even know who's going to play before the day arrives for the match day. Um, I think they're going to go into this match up very prepared. They know kind of what Emedi's deal is, even though they also have Hawk, who's very flexible in that regard. This is a Timeless squad that I think is fired up for the opportunity here in OWCS to take on some of these Overwatch League, uh, former Overwatch League players, right? This is when the open tournament system kind of comes into play, and we're going to see guys who have been grinding for the longest time in Tier 2 now go head-to-head -head against a team like M80, and I think they're really hungry for this opportunity right here, and I think they're going to give a great showing to us. Yeah, for the side of M80, though, we've got lots of heavy hitters to rely on. I think eyes on, for me, particularly players like Hydron. I really need to see a huge performance out of the hitscan, in particular this game. I think with how well Rocket's been playing, it's going to be all Pelican can do to just, just hold him back in the end. With high ping, it's a huge advantage in the Tracer duel for Rocket. Pelican, though, he was the one in this tough loss of Toronto fight who I felt like was still battling back, was still finding openings and keeping his team alive. And so I feel like he, he isn't letting the ping get the best of him. I think he will absolutely deliver a great performance today. But yeah, eyes on Hydron, eyes on Ultraviolet. We're going to need to see some production out of these guys. We're going to need to see some of those picks uh, because with this very aggressive style, these fast, aggressive tanks that Hawk likes to play, it's kind of up to a lot of a lot of production from DPS players to follow up on those openings, you know, turn that opening damage into real kills. I mean, I feel like it's going to be a tough, I guess, series to sort of predict which team is going to win. Yeah. Uh, we're going to Ilios first, selected by Timeless, and then followed by Midtown, and then to Esperanza. Uh, what are we? What are you guys looking for in the first map, Ilios? I will say Riker, you know, looked great on the Winston. He's very comfortable on it, so I think that's probably why Timeless takes us here. Maybe there's a map or two where you can force the Winston here. However, when I did see Hawk on Winston, it wasn't yesterday, it was the day before, Hawk's Winston looked really yeah, clean. Better, yeah. He looked yeah. very practiced on that hero. I think he's been locking it in, grinding it. He's felt how much the meta has been towards Winston. And so in the months we haven't seen him play, I feel like Winston could be a very serious strength. It was not too much gameplay, but I really liked what I saw out of Hawk. So I think a Winston mirror could be actually a great start for M80. Yeah, I'm really gonna look out for the tracers here. I think the tracer matchup is crucial here. Pelican obviously established, amazing tracer player. Playing on a bit of high ping here. How is that going to affect his performance? Now you're facing off against Rocket, who has been one of the best tracer players in the tournament so far. All right, and I mean quickly, before we throw it to the casters, your predictions. Every, uh, chat has timeless 62%. 38% goes to M80. Are you that's, guys? That's interesting. I feel like yeah. that's kind of on par, right? I don't. I don't blame them. I mean, you just look recent performance. Timeless looks hot. M80 not so much. Mm. They are vets though, so I don't count them out just yet. I mean, a bad performance yesterday, they can write that off and, and move on. And I mean, they have the skill to take this back. Yeah, we got a good one on our hands. Yeah, to that. All right, let's get the game started. I'm tossing it to our casters, Matt and Jaws. Take it away. 
I'm back, and I've got a new friend. Friend. Uh, Matt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I have to start out the day like that. You know, if I get my jab in first, he can't get uh, his jab in first. You know what I mean? Like, come on. I, I didn't say a thing. I was actually going to uh, uh, shoot a shot at Johnny. Like, who in the hell says Yakuza uh, for a jacuzzi? I mean, that was the most, that was the most ridiculous thing I've see, heard in a while. Most Swedish moment ever. Switching the J with the Y. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he, he, uh, I don't he's understand trying to talk Johnny smack, at all. But yeah, he's going to be... Uh, right. Yeah, but, but get, get him off. Uh, th this series should be pretty epic, uh, all things considered. Is the first map, it looks like is Avril uh, there uh, at the bottom of the screen. No, Let's it'll go. be Ilios oh, there okay. uh, for map number one. Just watching uh, Avril's coast. Look, I think Timeless, Timeless is an incredible story, right? Uh, you know, players who are... You know, more, I would say, up and coming compared to some of the players in the region who we've seen compete, uh, you know, in Overwatch League in the past, uh, you know, at the kind of like highest level of pro competition. Uh, I, I think a lot of people are just kind of like rallying around this awesome story, though, right? Uh, you know, obviously, we've seen CJ and opener in the past, then, you know, uh, Riker, Rocket, so uh, Chopper coming in playing great uh timeless will actually have a uh, riker here in to start so they uh, kind of like switch between riker i see uh it seems like they just kind of do it on a whim but riker has been playing the winston and the die tanks a lot of the time so that's what timeless will come out and start with as uh, look at this for m80 you're gonna actually have them come out with a maga look so uh, a little bit of a different look here for m80 at the start el classico comp mats on this point just a bunker that's all it is just hope to catch someone off guard with one of those walls. It's going to be tough really for timers to make anything uh, work here. You're really looking for like an initial kill from Sunjun or somebody to burst someone out. Speaking of which, it's our uh, opener that gets bursted. Uh, Lep finds the boot. Not sure if that was a boot kill or just some damage. But regardless, M80 find that cap first and can be quite a tough point to really assail Matt. Timers are going to have a, a work out for them. I mean, Sunjun at least has nearly got a copy already. You're looking at like having some damage being put down, whether it's, you know, uh, the Tracer or the Winston just kind of like throwing down some damage and then the focusing beam of the Echo like coming in and trying to like finish one of those players off, kind of like, you know, surrounding the point and then just kind of making a play for it as uh, Reichel jump down. You do have the copy though. We'll see how they decide to use it as looks like they get wall out. This may be an opportunity for them to go. Here's Malga, the dupe target. Oh, Sunjun's in and he's out again. Uh-oh, uh he's not going to survive too long, even with that cardiac overdrive. Open is dead again to Hydron. They tried to follow up with that one, Matt, but yeah, that did not work out at all. Well, because m is taking so much damage, they're actually able to build up a beat already, right? Uh, so sound barrier in that fight uh, for m Coalescence here as well. Kitsune Rush going to be answered by that Coalescence as Timeless wants to take another fight. Yeah, you still want to kill those turrets, though. Quite annoying for the Tracer to kind of deal with, but there's the boot from Riker. Knocks Pelican off of the map, but as soon as he steps in to M80's domain, he just gets shredded. And there's the wall, too. M80 running away with this one. Not an unconventional comp, to say the least. Very classic for this uh, stage, and some stages in control. But at time, there's just no answers to deal with it. And the Winston's going to be difficult to play into, Mog, right? Uh, when, when Timeless has usually kind of gone like Ramacha or something else, it's typically been nice. Is it a TP just to get some players back to the point here? Uh, for M80, but Pelican takes out CJ right away. I mean, that is brutal. Opener not even to that first sound barrier just yet. Going to get it here probably towards the end, but it may not even mean anything. Opener from the highest rope possible. Drop that sound barrier onto the point. Riker dies. The beat comes out for M80, and that'll be it. Wow, timeless. Not even. I don't think they even got uh, one single like pixel of like capture progress there. It felt like M80 with a shutout performance. Uh, no, I mean, that was dominant there from M80. I think it's a really great read on like, okay, the, you know, between Riker and Icy, who's in the game? This is what we can play here uh, on this first point and really kind of catch them off guard. So uh, maybe the MAGA is not something that M80 wants to play all of the time, right? We saw them play it the other day on uh, Midtown for a little bit. But uh, I know in situations like that, where you can bunker up with the MAGA, the Sim, uh, and the May, I mean, it's very difficult to beat, especially if you're going to play dive. So uh, timeless still sometimes you make some changes here but uh, at least look like they're going to be running diva here at the start so 
uh, maybe thinking that there's going to be like a, a Winston possibly on the other side. We're going to get a good old Widowmaker matchup as well between uh, Hydron and Sojourn. Not complaining one bit, honestly. It's been a while since we've had a, a good old Widow 1v1. Feels like anyway. See how it ends up uh, turning out. It's actually Lep that goes down first. Not even a headshot there from Sonjin. It's just just a clean little body shot. Point unlocks. Time is putting themselves on it. Without Lep, I mean, it's hard for Hawk to really get much positioning there, Matt. Oh, wow. Good kill. Yeah, I mean, uh, we had a nice, uh, nice shot at range there onto the Tracer, where, yeah, it's difficult for Hawk to kind of, like, move up into position, uh, especially just taking damage at range from the Widow, right? The Widow, the Tracer just pelting damage down, where... You need that Lucio speed, uh, or else the Aris is going to have to use all her cooldowns to be able to get there. So uh, without that Lucio speed, have to kind of like just back up. It'll be a losing fight here, and a lot of this will come down to this Widowmaker matchup. Yeah, it really will. Oh, he's hunting for headshots. Saw Pelican. Both Widows exchanging body shots there briefly. Point is being contested, at least uh, somewhat, by Hawk. I think he's a Riker, Matt. He can just dip in and out, in and out, in and out onto the point, right? That's exactly what he's doing right now. Just holding that Matrix up. Just make sure that he doesn't take too much damage. Able to take the point, though, uh, M80, without giving over a single kill. Oh. Okay, finally. Hydra on the board now. Danny... Yeah, Danny talked to, uh, when he talked to Pelican the other day, like, really how difficult it is as a Hydron takes a shot, but uh, looks like you're going to be able to keep him alive. Yeah, as Pelican there to dive on in, but you know, how difficult it is for Pelican to play that, uh, you know, Tracer on that high ping. Uh, going up against Rocket, pretty uh, pretty brutal scenario there as uh, Riker will get D-Mech, so uh, he'll have to back on up and, you know, go back to spawn. Uh, now, maybe you switch tanks here? You consider it, right? Uh, yeah. You're going to give up that... Ultimate, maybe you don't want to play the D.Va yes, here they, as, uh, yeah, they're going to match the Orisa. So I, I think this is a good swap. I think uh, the D.Va was really good to kind of like access that back line. You know, maybe if they're playing the, the Maga, you can kind of like survive a little bit better with the Matrix. Uh, Widowmaker in for sight here uh, for Timeless as now they try and, you know, match the tanks and move on it. Yeah, here comes the rush. Both of them, in fact, on the points. Sunjun can see Hydron through those walls. Same with Rocket, though. Hydron's so low. I mean, surely doesn't get away from Rocket. No chance. Pelican with the Pulse Bomb. Does kill Opener. Pulse Bomb Rocket goes wide. Still peppering the back line, taking them low. UV in trouble. TP's away, but doesn't TP far enough for Rocket to hound them down. Even CJ taking care of Pelican there. It's timeless. They're going to get the cap again. They can probably stagger out. Okay, they don't stagger out too long. M80 72% to times is 50 now. Yeah, it feels like a lot of times where if Timeless can get it into like these, like, you know, the fights kick off, right? We end up in these like three on three scenarios, right? It feels like CJ and Rocket do a great job of just living throughout all of those. And when those two players are alive, you feel really good uh, if you're Timeless about being able to come on, on top. As this will be the infrasight here from Hydron. So gonna force everybody from Timeless to play a little bit further back, you know, obviously behind that cover. Oh, oh, nice headshot. Oh, the one bullet. No, couldn't quite get it. One HP with Sunjin. Sound barrier for opener. Is going to see them as team through. The rest of their small engagement. Good headshot onto CJ. Another one is going to rattle through Riker's skull, but oh, Hydron takes another head with him. Still, though, time is in control of the point here, Matt. It's still a bit of an issue for M80. They don't exactly want the Widowmaker touching the point. So they may have cleaned two, but yeah, I, I don't think what more have they got? This either. That you can't push this either, right? Because you're going to lose uh, or Ultra It's going to get quite low. You had already lost Hawk, so you can't exactly push on in. So both teams going to get back to full strength before this next fight. Sunjun. Oh, he takes the head off a lip. Or lip even. I mean, Hydron now in a situation where he needs to track down Sunjun. Oh, Pelican will do just that. So Hydron's a little bit more free now. Same with Rocket on that point. Oh, my God. Hydron again. A little 45 degree flick hang on the... Uh, on the Tracer? My god, he's good. Unfortunately, though, M80, they don't end up touching. You see UV trying to drop onto the point to get that retouch, but Timeless end up securing the round. Yeah, there are a few players there for M80. I think it's like a boop that comes out. Uh, and then also CJ kind of like pushing up and nobody able to really get there to get a touch. So a nice play by opener at the end. But yeah, I mean, Hydron uh, clicking some heads in a serious fashion for uh, M80 there in the Widowmaker matchup. Uh, but still, it's just not enough, right? Uh, no, you kind of like see a lot of these kills kind of coming after maybe they've lost a player or something, which, you know, obviously is not Hydron's fault. But uh, still, 
just uh, you know not able to secure that point where now Timeless, uh, they, they have an idea like, okay, so they can play the Maga here potentially, right? You know, the on the side of M80, they could play like the Orisa. It'll be Hawk actually playing that Winston that Jake uh, was talking about. So uh, Hawk has looked quite good on the hero as Timeless will play a little bit more defensive having a Cassidy in the mix with the Orisa. Well, oh, goodbye. Goodbye, see ya. Nice thing about having the Cassidy there. <laughs> Lay a couple of shots in. That Oops, kill happens so kill. fast, though, that, like, you're not going to be able to get the point off of that. Like, the kill yeah, happens, like, you're still going to have, like, you know, a few seconds here before the point even opens up as Pelican's going to just switch to Soldier and come right back. All right, yeah, Soge, name of the game now. Yeah, don't want to face the cast. Decent old charge on Sunjin, by the way, 50%. There's the cap, so MAT unable to kind of juggle it there. Pelican just under so much pressure. 7 HP, ooh, slips away. Mega health pack is his. Luckily for Pelican, Hawk is doing a lot of work in the front line, killing CJ as Pelican enters the fight again. Now on the point, Hydron ends up going down to Rocket. So much for Rocket's POV, just permanently just trying to check Hawk. That's the best thing you can do as the Tracer, right? Just make sure Hawk's uh, kind of kept in check. He ends up jumping in. If you can get an angle on him when Hawk's looking for someone else, you can really just melt the monkey. Yeah, they do end up flipping the point, though. So uh, M80 gets control. The one thing that's quite interesting is, like, for M80, typically, right, like, if you're going to see some kind of, like, hit scan, it's going to be Hydra. It's not really going to be Pelican. Because, but they come out with, like, the Echo and the Tracer right away, where obviously you'd have Pelican play that. Uh, it's going to force Pelican over the Sojourn. So just like how we were talking about how it's pretty difficult to play that Tracer on that high pink, uh, Sojourn the same way, right? Nailing those railguns against these really mobile targets. Yeah, super tough. Terra Surge, Hydron just slipping right through into enemy lines. Just be a little bit careful though, forced to recall. Riker's pretty low. M80 still with control of the point. Riker used pretty much every cooldown that he's got. It ends up working out. This is the big thing about the Orisa. So we've been talking about with the Malga matchup as well, Matt, is the Orisa doesn't need as much support as like this monkey does from M80. Yeah, and, uh, you know, look, the Orisa can really get in the back line, cause a lot of problems. Like, uh, you see how fast they're forcing out, like, Pelicans, you know, slide, and then they're just having the Tracer kind of collapse. As, uh, you know, the, the Cassidy is in an interesting spot here, right? Can play very defensive. Uh, you know, 275 HP, the damage reduction uh, as well with, like, a roll. So it would be very difficult to dislodge this Cassidy just kind of playing around this Orisa. And then you just get offensive with it. Yes. Oh, speaking of getting offensive with it. Oh, some skulls lighting up. Do not peek, Pelican. Do not peek. It's, no it's in the peek, rush yeah. as well. Yes. Yeah, disgusting. Uh, disgustingly fast charge. Oh, no. Oh, nice spear. And Rock is there to follow up with that. Pelican did not see that coming. Even on, like, uh, you know, land ping. I don't think you'd be able to react to that one. Or a spear being thrown at you and then rock it by your side. Once again, Hawk in a lot of trouble. Forced upon that primal rage, but it's just getting chunked out. This point being permanently pressured as well by M80, but there's always someone there to kind of juggle, make sure there's no free caps going through. Hawk goes down to a pulse bomb and it's kind of slipping away from M80 right now, Matt. Well, yeah, and Pelican goes back to the Echo here. So uh, gonna try and play this Echo again, which is gonna be pretty tough into the Cassidy and Tracer, two of the best heroes in terms of like countering this Echo. So uh, no, what, you're looking at Hydron's pulse bomb here. It has to be huge. Consider Rush for Ultraviolet as well, as Hawk starts well, off the get, fight with a kill. the sound barrier. Yeah, open a dead, no B for Timeless. Okay, fight on point. You're not too scared of uh, losing this one. You still have 50% to give. Pulse one goes out onto the Orisa, force them to use ult. So, I mean, Timeless can come back in, though. They got beat. They got Terra Surge. Maybe no worries. Or maybe a couple, because uh, Ultraviolet Yeah, you also think that Timeless probably... Timeless builds up towards a Kitsune rush here as well, right? right. So CJ is going to be able to build this up really fast. Uh, they'll probably just have somebody just walk out of spawn, and take a little bit of damage, and then uh, be able to get that ultimate. So uh, so I'm going to switch over to the Sojourn here. Uh, it, uh, a little bit harder to kind of deal with, you know, maybe the Echo, but also the Sojourn really good against the Orisa, just burning that armor. Yeah, an easy railgun charge as well, right? Charge up on the Orisa, go for a headshot on someone else. Do the same again, rinse and repeat. Kusuno Rush instantly used there as the Suzu comes out from CJ to sell, uh, help him save himself from the stickies. Pelican with the duplication too. Is uh, playing this one a little bit more passive, waiting for that pulse bomb to charge up. There's the stick, Terra Surge comes out and bada bing, bada boom, Riker down. 
That Pelican duplicate doing a lot of work for M80. And with 99% an OT incoming, Sunjin needs to be able to find something here. Rocket has got Pulse Bomb, but I mean, he's pretty low at this point. Manages to blink on there to re-trigger OT, but before he can get the Pulse Bomb out, he's already sent back to spawn. Hydra now got a Pulse Bomb of his own in about 5%. That Terror Surge locking the door behind Timeless, and that should be M80's map. And there we go. Map number one taken by M80. Helios is there. Yeah, really close map number one. I think it's just opener sound barrier, just a little bit late, right? Uh, you know, not able to save Riker. He gets hit with a pulse bomb, ends up trying to use the terror surge to use a fortify to like try and live on through it. Uh, and maybe they thought there was a sound barrier on the other side and you're kind of like saving it to like mirror the sound barriers, right? Uh, there's no sojourn on the other side of things. So like not really worried about obviously an overclock. So uh, maybe you thought that Lep had that sound barrier, they were gonna drop it. Uh, and then, you know, things are gonna, you know, just kind of progress after that but i uh, could have really used rikers orisa alive in that fight at the end yeah m80 taking an early lead first to three of course in this series then a first to four in our finals but m80 looking good timeless have been the ones to contend with especially through uh through the bracket stage they have just been man they've been beating back some of the best i mean we went to a map five right against toronto defiant who are currently sitting in the yeah. finals midtown is our next map now man yeah, and I and I think if you're timeless, like you can't really be too disappointed with the result in map number one, considering I think they got really, you know, game plan scouted there at the beginning, right? That MAGA comp, there was really no chance they were going to win that first point. Let's have a little listening, though, to M80 and their winning moment in that last round. I think the tracer play there is just the definition of being everywhere at a single moment in time, like chasing the tracer, yeah. cleaning the kill up, and then straight to the back line, just peppering down the supports, and then, oh, Zojan's in your face, oh, and then easy kills, right? That was a masterful play there from M80. Let's have a look at some of the highlights from this last map. I mean, this was a shutout map, but it's kind of strange. Like, when we go into a series, uh, or into a map, sorry, and we see these more unconventional comps that are just specifically built for that one stage, especially in control. It can be a bit, um, it can be a bit deceiving when it comes to results, I think. Uh, yeah, I mean, it can be really one-sided, right? You lose the first fight or two, maybe you have to make some switches, you end up with no ultimates, and then uh, you know, there's really nothing you can do at that point where it feels like you know, uh, ruins and well were really kind of the two I would you know look to to take some something from this series where both of these were extremely close uh, you know really nice shots here from Hydron on the Widowmaker like we talked about but as we move into Midtown uh, I think the biggest thing will be like okay if you're M80 what do they do in terms of tank right is it Riker or Icy and maybe that gives you a little bit of indication of what they're going to play and you know hawk has shown he's able to play the winston the Arisa, the sigma the maga right uh then you kind of start to form your game plan after that yeah it's it was funny hearing from timeless the other day when they're like well you know we just play whoever and yeah we'll just see what happens <laughs> it's one of my uh kind of favorite like strats from the strat book from coaches like oh, i don't know we just do it and then you know if it works out great we'll just keep the player in or uh, the enemy team aren't gonna know what we're doing because we don't know what we're doing El Clasico, it feels like. Hey, it's, it's better than some of the stuff we've seen in the past, right? We see a player like dominate and then it's like, oh, well, he didn't play this map during the week. So we have to take him out to put in somebody who hasn't been in all series. Yeah, uh, if they're on a heater, too, keep him in. You know, yeah, pretty difficult. Uh, looks like we do have some uh, subs potentially for Timeless. So uh, we'll get those teed up in just a, a bit. But I'd imagine, I uh, you know maybe you see Chopper come in. Maybe you see uh, Icy come in. Uh, and then what do they do in terms of composition here against M80 will be the story. Yeah, it feels like an icy map uh, midtown, especially with uh, playing like things like the Sigma, but we'll have to wait and see. Of course, we'll get those into you in just a moment. The players just uh, sorting them in. Sounds like we're just having a DPS swap, in fact. So Riker is saying in. Okay. It's going to be Chopper coming in, like you said, Matt. So uh, Sonjun is going to take a back seat for now. 
Yeah, they, they, they make the substitution in terms of a uh, damage dealer pretty frequently. Like uh, in yep. one of the series we've done with them, we've seen Chopper pretty much the entire way through. Then we saw another one where he played like the first like two maps and then, you know, they put in uh, No Sundren for the next two and then, you know, put them both in. Uh, they took a rocket on a final map. So uh, we've seen them kind of do all different things in terms of like their damage dealer lineup. I think just looking at it more, it's like, okay, with Riker in, you're looking at like Winston, Diva, or Risa play potential here on Midtown. Yeah, I mean, that makes the most sense to me. And they have a lot of, uh, especially when they go to like long range kind of maps uh, where you can play long range hit scan. Sunjun seems like the perfect fit there. So Widowmaker, yeah, I mean, the Widowmaker highlights real kind of speaks for itself. And then yeah, obviously the Sojourn play as well. So it makes a lot of sense. Hollywood, I think we saw him on the other day too. Um, High ground Hollywood, just another classic. Loading into Midtown in just a moment though. We'll see if uh, Thomas can come back in this series. Of course, both teams might struggle a little bit against uh, Toronto to find up in the final but I mean, times have already been there. They've already been to a map number five. They've been swinging uh, left and right. But the thing is yep. with M80, they have looked a little bit weaker. They haven't really lived up to the big like star power on their roster. And like they've touched on the desk, Pelican was really just kind of keeping them in it. So here's the time to really turn it around. I mean, they have to, I suppose, because it's the loser's bracket, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, you don't turn it around here. You're uh, uh, you're, gone. you're obviously not, not doing much of anything. Yeah, so... Uh, as we move forward, though, uh, I'm curious what we see with... Uh, so, M80 will be on defense, so it will be the Arisa. I was going to say, like, you know, if you have a potentially you new know, Sigma here, like the Winston here on offense for Timeless would be pretty strong. Uh, but uh, you also think, you know, just playing the Arisa in that head-to-head, -head, like, I, I think if you're Timeless, like, you're okay doing... taking that, like, you know, mirror matchup. Uh, I, I don't think it's something where you view yourself as, like, a, at a weaker state. Uh, taking that mirror, you know, uh, with obviously, you know, Rocket and Chopper being tremendous on the Tracer and the Sojourn. We'd we'll love to see Rocket swing with the Torb, but I don't think it's going to happen, sadly. One day I'll get the Meadow where Torb is perma pick, but I think that'd be quite miserable, actually, <laughs> thinking about it. Something drastically would have to gone wrong with balance there if uh, Torb was perma meta. Ooh, okay. Level three turret. Bring it back. Bring it back, and it just instant deploys. Hell yeah. Oh, Riker's wondering where yeah. the rest of his oh. team went. Well, I can tell you, they're dead. They're in spawn. Yeah, M80 sees that uh, nobody else goes with Riker through the choke, and uh, they <laughs> just push on right through and take out everybody else. So, a uh, pretty fast first team fight there in favor of uh, M80. As, now, Riker moves a little bit left, pushes up. Everybody else stays kind of like near the choke. And uh, at that point, it's Hawk with a spear spin, a speed boost, and everybody's in trouble on Timeless. All right, quicker rotation. Well, the rocket is under massive amounts of pressure. Really early recall force there. It's not the best, but I mean, you can at least still control the launch mat here. So it's all about getting onto that mega health pack. That's a good start. Chopper taking care of Hydra. Now the Lucio will join Rocket. Opener giving them a little support. There's a rotation up to the train car for M80. Just kind of hiding out right now, waiting for reinforcements. Yes, yeah, it looks like some damage went on the Hawk, and both supports and Hawk end up inside of the train car up on that high ground. That's going to be a second tick here for Timeless, as now they have Chopper in this great position here up on the high ground. Yeah, it's going to be really hard to dislodge Chopper up there, but just get out of his line of sight by rushing into the small room with that rush. 5% for CJ to uh, unlock that one, and a Pelican with another unbelievable pulse bomb on the staircase. Always seems to pull out our Midtown. Double pulses saving the day for Pelican once again. Yeah, and I know some of that extra, you know, ultimate charge right from that really clean first fight gives that Kitsune Rush to Ultraviolet right away. They use it in that, you know, close quarter area. There's not really anything Timeless can do at that point where uh, Pelican lurking here up on the high ground. Maybe just seeing if you can find a support here in the bank. Oh. Some damage on CJ. That's going to have the Kitsune Rush right away. Yeah, good clip. And Opener's already dead, Matt. Same with CJ, already gone. Oh, time is kind of falling apart right now. Rocket just end up uh, getting a kill onto Lep. The point is pressured somewhat by Rocket, but he's going to have to get out of there. No supports for Timeless. Oh, but Pelican going down. That is not a kill that you want to see if you're M80. Losing Pelican that late. But look at how quickly they're going to be able to regroup and push in. 
Yeah, I think just putting that point pressure, just bring them back from the choke, right? Uh, you know, M80 playing so aggressive at the choke. Really difficult for Timeless to Good deal with shots. sound barriers for both sides, but Chopper just able to nail those shots with the overclock. CJ picks up one. This should be Timeless getting first point. Yeah, there you go. Three minutes and 40 seconds. That Pelican, that Pelican death, man, you, you just can't go down that late. You cannot do that. And especially since Times lost both supports, and then they were literally on their way back, and they saw that kill happen. Like, yeah, that's a real rough on Pelican there. Which blame on Ping. Easiest excuse in the book. Yes, uh, Timeless, Timeless tries to push up there. Maybe control a little bit of that high ground, but... You know, Nadia will do so. M80 speeds right up to it with all five players. And then uh, they'll play Hawk on the low ground. Spear's been gone already. He's going to have to back up. Doesn't want to mess with the front line. Not Riker, my superstar. Oh, good spear onto Chopper. Another nice pulse, but didn't find anything else but damage. That's just good with the pulses there, but can't really stick the Arista, not right now, especially with uh, Kiriko too. It's hard to really get a lot of value with Pulse Bomb, so when a double Pulse does come up, it is a sight to behold. All going super deep into the back line now, trying to force CJ to make a move, use Suzu. It's exactly what he did, but Hawk overstepping, overstayed his welcome. Ends up going down, they trade it for Rocket, but I mean the high ground control very much in favor of Timeless. Hydron trying to fight back, jumping up to a high ground of his own, but Chopper receives the Suzu and Hydron dead before he hit the floor. It's time to get the payload rolling under the subway. Yes, I mean, uh, you do get that first pick off there. Uh, I know it's a it pulse bomb on the Hawk, and then they trade out like Hawk for Rocket. Uh, but you have that Arisa alive with Terror Surge, right? They just get right, right up to the high ground, and uh, that gives Chopper awesome position to pick up two here. Is, and now Timeless, you know, they get the payload through probably, you know, one of the, the tougher points here, you know, trying to get towards that second checkpoint. Uh, one player quite low as a hydro it's a nice shot into chopper not enough to finish him off though chopper's in a good position too they've got control of the bot right now they're gonna have to force m80 to kind of drop onto them hawk's gonna take a lot of punishment here they're gonna try and get into get into the mix chopper's so low no heals no one was paying attention to him uh, it was only pelican kind of looking at him there let us use the beats same with opener timeless and, and m80 openers, openers got interrupted i'm pretty sure uh, I think we can Wait, take a look at like a replay, but pretty sure that is like a hawk spear into opener as he went to go land that sound barrier because sound barrier comes down from left shield on everybody sound barrier from timeless uh, did not see any shield really go off so uh, we'll see if we can maybe get a replay on that get a confirmation but pretty sure uh, that is a spear from hawk uh, into the sound barrier there i know as lucio's going for it from timeless so uh, we saw that the other day as well it may have been from hawk too uh you know with the, the urisa side uh, you're able to interrupt these you know channeled kind of like ultimates uh, with relative ease so it's better for Hawk now. Doesn't want to mess with that though. That pulse one going right over his head. Just attached to the wall instead. Continue rush onto the bus. Now Hawk's in trouble. Pops the terror surge to try and survive a little bit longer, but nope. Not that far away from your support. You don't. Riker and Hawk end up going down. Same with Chopper here. Very messy fight. CJ Open and Rocket still trying to hold down this fort. The Pelicans just kind of peppering him from the side. They're trying to get up to this bus. They're trying to just look at the supports on high ground. It's just not happening, Chief. It's just, it, nah, you, you can't get it down from there. Nice kill. 17 yeah, seconds to go. Pelican will, yeah, Pelican will finish off Rocket there at the end. So yeah, that, uh, that sound barrier did get interrupted. So huge play there from Hawk as Timeless. They'll work their way back here. Let's see if there's going to be somebody able to get a touch as Looks like Riker's gonna try and get the spear spin. Gonna get pushed back, but does get a touch. They're gonna have their sound barrier yet again, though. Yeah, we'll see if Hawk can interrupt a second one. Another Ajax, maybe? Opener's got it. It's probably gonna be a little bit more safe this time. There it is. Beat from the underpass. Everybody running forward with uh, bright green health now. M80 a little bit green with Envy. If I'm honest with you, his left is so close to a sound barrier. 99% about to tick over. Chopper in a good spot. Here comes Hydron with the overclock. That sound barrier not quite enough to save him, though. Landed a fraction of a second too late. Rocket 3 HP, dipped by Pelican. As M80 continued to try and hold this point. A nice little boop. Lucio just pinned the payload, though, and Hawk tried as he might. Could not get another touch without giving up his life. In OT, looks like time is going to make this one stick. Not even Pelican can save you now. There is spawners coming in, though, Matt. I mean, just the spear spin should be good enough. And with a killer to Ultraviolet, that'll be it. Timeless managed to get that payload going. Get that second checkpoint.
Add some more time for their time back as M80 go for a reset. Yes, uh, crazy plays there as uh, they're able to build up towards that sound barrier. Uh, opener drops it, and then it, it looks like for a second that M80 does a great job kiting, right? They're going to be able to get their own sound barrier off, kind of like in return, but the kill on the Hydron happens right before the beat, so uh, losing that Sojourn is a lot of your damage. It's pretty tough. Oh, that's an unfortunate TP right into the disruption. All good, though. Shrugs it off. A lot of ults for Timeless, though. That's uh, a big problem, especially for Hydron. This chopper has that railgun advantage, and that overclock. They're just going to want to peek this corner, I'd imagine. Just let it oh, let it fly. Okay, well, chopper's flying now, unfortunately, up to heaven. Pelican with an easy kill. And uh, M80 just trying to stagger as much of these kills as possible. Any late kills here is going to be nice. Pelican with a floor pole straight on top of Riker. That'll do. 50, uh, 30 seconds to go, Matt. It's time to struggling to get this fight turned in their favor. Yes, maybe Riker thinks he can do enough damage there that, uh, you know, players coming off spawn can follow up, pick up a kill or two and make it a little bit messy, but not able to do so with the Terracer. So we're going to go into OT here yet again. Sound barriers from both sides, but Timeless with that Katsuni Rush could use it to open things up. Yeah, rush for CJ. He's in trouble though. That's a really nice position there from Hawk. Just rushes the back line, but needed to receive that beat in order to stay alive. Trouble trying to find some headshots. Ultraviolet peeking out for a moment there, but it's actually Pelican. It's Chopper's first victim in the front line. That overclock and then a punch. Easy kill onto Pelican. And there we go. Time is once again in OT. They're going to roll this payload on, but M80. They got something to say about it, and Hydron's got an overclock of his own, and there's not much left in Timeless's bank now. Yeah, Timeless needed to use their overclock and pretty much everything else. They end up getting the cart moving, where Hydron's now going to have his with no sound barrier on the other side. So we typically see the sound barrier kind of used to, you know, help teams live through the damage that the Sojourn can put out during the overclock. Oh, see, this is what a Hydron shot. Some kills. Opener jumping over the payload, trying to get away. Just wasn't able to do so. Chopper does end up shutting Hydron down, but is it really enough? I mean, the back line is just bleeding out on the floor. Chopper there, CJ gone, there we go, OT finished. As M80 make their stand on point three there, as uh, Timeless, they get it a fairly decent way, Midtown pretty hard to complete with time to be fair, but a completion would have been the best they could have asked for, but unfortunately they don't get that. Yeah. I mean, look, their their first push wasn't great, right? M80 was able to kind of like hold for a pretty decent time on, uh, you know, point A and then uh, going towards that second checkpoint as well. M80 did a really nice job just basically getting into OT. So kind of dwindled that clock. A long, uh, long run where timeless. I think you have to be pretty fortunate you even got it that long. Uh, I know with how uh, M80 was playing on the defensive side of things. So uh, we'll see if there's any comp adjustments here. Uh, I know going into the second half, uh, really probably looking more at like timeless on defense if they want to kind of like, you know, change anything up where uh, at least at the start. Yeah, no, you're not going to play. I was going to say the, the Ilari for Lucio oh, swap would be uh, oh, very yeah. interesting, uh, uh, but that is not going to happen. Oh. So uh, it's going to be a mirror matchup for both sides. If that were me, I'll be popping in the Ilari, bro. I'm ready. I'm just going to put that pile on down. Just sit there. Just start shooting people. Just play around the pylon, bro. He's game. I'm also not very good at the game. Why Custer won't queue with you anymore? Okay, that is not my fault. Scott is just mean to me. I don't know why now. I think you convinced him <laughs> otherwise since I've been away. Let's have a little M80 listening oh. at the, the end of that round. Oh, my. Not the end of round, right now. Is there a cop? Is there a monkey? Come back to play. I think they might play monkey here. Versa. 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 Okay, okay. I go left side. Can I get out of here? Can I get out of here? I want to get fire truck, guys. I'm about to go fire truck. I'm really good at going with you all. I'm with you all. I'm under high gun, okay? I got you. I'm under high gun, okay? I got you. I'm under high gun, okay? I got you. We can pick right there. We can pick right side. There's a quick thing. We can pick right side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Epic right, epic right. Walk, 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 walk. Look, look, look. Look, look, look. Turn up, turn up, turn up. Oh, what the fuck is this supposed to doing? We're set up, we're set up. We have all the space right now. Three, 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 three,
Yeah, and I think they go, uh, what the hell is that Orisa doing? Uh, I know, uh, maybe, maybe sub out, sub out a word or so. Uh, because Riker doesn't like kind of like back up around the corner, right? He kind of like actually kind of still plays a little bit forward up towards that fire truck. So maybe they were like, hey, what, what is this guy doing? Like, we can probably get a kill on him. They, they're not able to pressure him down. Shooting rush for both sides, but they find Pelican again early. Yeah, Ultra Riley said two is the end of the fight. They got a tick, but two and a half minutes. It's not the worst. Good focus fire from Timeless at the very end there. Yeah, I wonder how Pelican goes down to the just the random donuts to Lucio. It must have been a, maybe a railgun shot. That's normally what happens. It's also interesting that Timeless is like okay giving up like where the fire truck is and like you know maybe they don't want to fight like in that small room like hey let the like if they want to take fire truck and rotate to that left building that's fine like we'll take the fight in the open on the point right like as things open up allows a little bit you know uh, easier time for Rocket and Chopper to just make individual plays. Hawk doing the same thing as before just taking that high ground control as fast as possible. But be careful, sound barrier and overclock. Oh my! Okay, Lev almost hit, got hit with the AJ there. Opener booped him high in the sky. And because I think that sound barrier landed so late, Matt, unable to save some of the members of M80. Yeah, I was gonna say the the, the beat landed so late because he goes so high into the air uh, that they're not able to save. I think it's like the first member of the team ends up falling. So they don't actually have that sound barrier to save that one player, which uh, you know how huge sound barrier is. Really the only big support ultimate uh, you know, for any team uh, really throughout the tournament. And a lot of people have been playing, you know, uh, Moira, Baptiste, uh, you know, really Lucio, the only one with a big true support ult. All right, Terra Surges for both the races. Can't wait for them to use them on top of each other. Oh, no, maybe not. Pulse Bomb right on top of Riker there as soon as he used that Terra Surge, but Hydra's already dead. Who's going to meet their fate? Well, it's Pelican, and it's not, unfortunately, a kill for Hawk there using his ultimates. Lep also ends up going down. Wow, Timeless's defense looking unreal. 45 seconds to go, Matt, and M80 threw everything they, they had. They've only got a rush for this final fight now, and it's going to get matched by CJs. Yes, uh, both the Reese's when the uh, Terra Surges come out, just both pop fortify and just walk out. Uh, no, no, no real uh, impact there for those ultimates where, yeah, final fight territory here. Timeless has played this really well, just not kind of like playing for that close quarter fight, playing a little bit deeper. Both of them ripped at the same time. Riker super low. Hydron on nice little angle takes care of opener. It's Pelican in the back, forced a recall. Nice little pulse bomb eat actually from Hawk with that spear spin. Could have been the end of his life pretty swiftly as Pelican's found himself in the back line. Riker does take down Hydron, but I mean, Pelican needs to come up with big kills here. He's going to get joined by his own Kiriko, and they actually end up trading. Two ticks on the board. Chopper gets booped off of high ground, but it's only Hawk on the point. M80 are going to get shut out here as Timeless had a beat to spare at the very end and tie up the series. Yeah, really nice stuff there from Timeless. Like, they, they don't want to play. We know we see a lot of teams, right? They fight over that fire truck, uh, that like left hand building when you're kind of looking on the point. Uh, they don't want to fight over there. They never once kind of take that close quarter duel there, you know, trying to fight over, uh, you know, control of that area of the map. They kind of give it up, allow M80 a little bit further out onto the, the point, and then just kind of like poke them down a little bit and then decide when they have the advantage and when to go. Really nice strat there from Timeless. Yeah, I, I really like that. And thinking about that a little bit more, like you said, the way Hawk did that was go up to the subway on the little like staircase, and then they were trying to like just flood onto the point or like push people back. It makes sense going that direction because if you go to the mega health pack room, the Sojin on the enemy team on the defense has so much more of an angle and the disruption shot and like any rail guns that are getting fired through. So it kind of makes sense for Hawk there, but Timus was just able to trump him. Uh, on on defense we typically see teams play the position that timeless like played from with like a sigma in the mix you don't really right. play there with like an orisa right you play there like with a sigma a little bit more defensive right you know the the accretion if they have to like kind of like flood out uh they play it with a Risa, which gives them a little bit more uh like staying power on the point like the Arisa is able to spear spin get out like not you know the sigma gives up so much room uh there that you're playing so defensive so they play with the Arisa, which is really interesting well timers end up taking that map let's listen into their winning round comms there so how to see what they have to say three two one i'm really getting on Arisa. trap point so so i've got i've got three 
Okay, one. Kill one, kill one, kill one. I'm fucking bottom, I'm fucking bottom right now. Drill side, drill side, drill side, drill side, drill side. Nice. Winnable, winnable, winnable. I have a good angle. I'm up, I'm up. Carry one, carry one. Carry one. Carry one. I'm up, carry one. I'm on, I'm on, I'm on. Carry one, carry one, carry one, carry one. Nice. They have live, I have my ult. Lisha one, Lisha one. No, no, no. me, I have my ult. I have my ult. Rissa, 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 Rissa. We can beat, we can beat, we can beat. It's just Sojin. Shoot me, shoot me. Nice it. <laughs> there you go, win that at the end. I really like the player comms at the very end there, hyping them up. That was uh, a yeah. win on midtown. Esperanza is up next, Matt. Um, what, do, what do you expect to kind of see here? We've tied up the series huh. already. I, I think both these teams are just going to play like the Arisa Mirror. I mean, maybe if you're M80, you think about like bringing the, the Maga back uh, potentially. But sure. I, I think both of these teams are starting to get into a little bit of a groove, you know, in this kind of like Arisa head to head, right? Uh, no fortunate for M80, right? They win that, you know, first map. Obviously, they played it great and they had that kind of like Maga pocket pick, you know, kind of strat there, right? Because, you know, who knows what happens on Lighthouse, uh, you know, otherwise, right? They caught. You know, the time was completely off guard. Yeah, they really did. It looked very, uh, very winnable there for M80, especially with their defense looking really nice on uh, point three of Midtown. But uh, we'll see if the timers also have any substitutions there, Matt, too. It's also a big question. Every single map, and they've been the ones to use the substitutions the most. So I have to wait and see what uh, ends up happening after this uh, small package of highlights here. Uh, Malga, oh, I don't know. I'm, I'm slowly falling out of love with the Malga, the Arisa, and what we saw from like KSA and Twisted Minds, the Ram. It just works out so much better for, for most teams right now. Uh, yeah, I mean, maybe if you want to play Brush, like the answer is to play like Ramatra, right? And just yeah. kind of like play uh, the same type of stuff that you played with the Maga, but just Ramatra in the mix. Uh, he just powers blocks. It just doesn't give us like much resources to like the entire oh. uh, team. It's, uh, Renko will come in here for ultraviolet. Renko? So, uh, no, uh, with ultraviolet. So yeah, uh, this so this is like you don't want to do you not want to play Lucio here? Like, what is the what is the call here? I wonder. Mm. Yet to be seen. Okay, Renko smile is in. Lep is out. No changes for timeless as well. So not a substitution we thought we'd see. But hey, I'm a, I'm here for it. I haven't called Renko's name in a hot minute as we jump over to Esperanza. But I think he might be right there, Matt. Maybe Lucio. Because uh, Lep has really been kind of a Lucio player we've seen for, you know, M80 the entire time. Uh, potentially, uh, you still want to play it, but maybe you have some flexibility to play some other things, uh, you know, in the mix. Uh, you could be looking at like a, you know, do you want to play like a Baptiste like type of uh, situation? So uh, I think this will be really interesting what M80 decides to do. Nothing changes on the timeless uh, side of things. So uh, they're going to keep Chopper in the game, uh, keep Riker in the game and just keep on moving forward. Yeah, no changes. No, uh, no icy yet. Can't imagine we're going to see him at some point during the series. It's, it's got to be. I mean, time is swap him in and out in and out in and out so we'll have a look right let's have a look at m80's comp then because renko can obviously play the lucio yeah. too but yeah not something that i'd expect from the team but hey you never know yeah i mean uh definitely can play the the lucio i think just like when you see a sub like this you expect to be something else than you know just a, a clean like one lucio for one lucio swap right uh maybe Maybe there's a, another different type of composition they want Renko in potentially uh, to help them play. But you know, in terms of what they have now, I don't think you're going to see them change anything else. Yeah, they are just going to you know swap Renko in for Lep here and uh, you know, go with the Arisa base composition. Timeless here. Uh, they'll have Chopper play Cassidy. So uh, no Sojourn, at least at the start here uh, for Timeless. Maybe they thought there was like, going to be a Winston setup on the other side, potentially. Yeah, the, the cast is also something that we've seen uh, spatterings of here and there. Don't mind it, but in the neutral fights, Matt, the Soge is just so favored. The Railgun is just so yeah, if you powerful. If you play a round of like the central pillar and play a little bit more defensive, I think you can get some value out of the Cassidy, but uh, they lose uh, Chopper right away there. I think with how teams are playing this Arisa, we're like, okay, if the slide is out, we're just going to dive that character. You know, we're really like looking at the Sojourn. Uh, Cassie just doesn't have the mobility to play into that. So you're going to see Chopper make that switch right away. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I don't want to stick on the Cassidy for too long. Some cost fallacy with ultimates, but you haven't really charged much up anyway. Plus, you you still retain a little bit of the ult charge, but meh. Meh, you die pretty quick. It's all good. 
We'll see how uh, Timus end up taking this fight. Classic Esperanza moment. You push it around this first corner, just back up, go to high ground. You players weak from M80 there on the high ground. No, you know, Chopper lands a shot into Hydron, and then Disruptor shot as well, throws down some damage. So just trying to open up that area of the map, potentially. You see Rocket trying to take control of that high ground. Oh, nice couple of headshots from UV. That's going to grant them a rush. Pretty defensive looking rush there as it goes towards the, the little choke point, but it's perfect because Pelican's pushing all the way in there. Chopper's already down, and Pelican with a pulse bomb lands on the pillar, but still does an awful lot of damage to Raikou, who backed straight up into it. Another pulse bomb thrown out, instantly gets Suzu'd, so even if it did stick, it wouldn't have done anything. And now Hydron with a perfect angle, holding the mega health pack. Hawk says, get down, Mr. President, as he just stands on top of him to make sure he doesn't take any damage. But Hawk doesn't, uh, Hydron does end up falling, but still the payload's going, and there's no defense here from Timeless. That is checkpoint if they're not careful. Oh, that was close. Man, opener, uh, oh, riskiest boy uh, known to man. That was insane. Almost AJ again. Yeah. Sound barrier for both sides, and it doesn't even result in, uh, you know, Timeless holding on and not giving up that checkpoint. This M80 does get control of that first, but, man, that previous fight, Hydron was able to land some serious damage down, whether it be uh, at the beginning, just getting that first pick off, and then the overclock, you know, in that close quarter area is uh, starting to come alive on the Sojourn, as it looks like uh, Timeless trying to run away with the bot here. I don't think they're going to be able to get too far. M80 are a little bit quick on the rotation too. Hot on their heels. Pelican looking for a way to be relevant in this fight as well. Pulse Bomb about 20% away. Doesn't want to have to use Recall this early. Very much just trying to force Rocket. Okay, well they both end up using it. So all good. Neutral fight for Traces. This overclock shouldn't be that neutral, but I mean Chopper's struggling to find it. Rocket on the other hand is not. Rocket mode, pulsing Renko, not smiling anymore, I'd imagine. Here comes the rush as well to make sure this fight is one for Timeless. More kills would be great. Staggers would be even better. Yeah, I mean, what? They get first pick off there, uh, does Timeless, and then Ultraviolet has to use the Suzu, and then they just use the Kitsune Rush, and there's no way that M80 is going to be able to live through all of that damage that's going to come down. Is uh, Hawk spear spitting, fortified, just doing anything to try and live. Is uh, now Timeless will get close to potentially taking the checkpoint. And because that fight went that way rather quickly and Renko ends up falling, I mean, look at this. You have a little bit of a gap here between Opener and Renko in terms of sound back. Ain't gonna touch. Yeah, Pelican's got it. He's vibing on the point, but can't vibe for too much longer. Forced to recall. Now Hawks join the fray. Riker can just uh, sit up on this point, though. As long as Riker survives for long enough, Matt, he can use that ultimate. There it is. Terror Surge comes out. There's the sound barrier, too. Just making sure they distract for long enough to try and get that checkpoint in, but not to be. Their DPS just unable to get kills there. They were just kind of waiting for a pickoff from Chopper, from Rocket, but those pickoffs Hello. never came. Good to see you. Yeah, and I, I don't know if I really love the way they even played that uh, to begin with, right? Riker gets so low, they sound barrier, and then he kind of uses the terror surge, uh, kind of like clears players off of the bot, maybe trying to get it like across the line, but it, it still gets contested. Uh, and they're not able to make any progress, even investing all those ultimates. And now that gives M80 a pretty big advantage here. Okay, stable. Speed boost out. Oh, uh, okay. Railgun kill just kills UV. All right. I guess they were just peeking up on the high ground. Took a little bit too much damage. Chopper almost takes another one of them there. Pulse bomb available for Rocket. Hawk's super low, but there's the sand barrier. Stick does land, does the damage, but is it enough? Hawk's still getting healed up. Two big ultimates invested there, and uh, doesn't like timers. They're going to be able to win this fight. I mean, Hawk trading a pulse bomb for a terror surge. You take that any day of the week if you're an 80. Oh, yeah, they, they don't have that sound barrier. I don't think Hawk lives through that as uh, now Hydron actually pushes up, kills Rocket. So these Sojourns just going back and forth. It feels like, you know, uh, here, here's a pick for Chopper to open up a fight. Then now it's Hydron answering right back. So uh, they both had a huge impact on this uh, map thus far. Overclock available for Chopper. Yeah, 53 meters to 48. It couldn't be closer right now as we are at the four minute mark. Or oh, four minutes to go, at least. Oh, nice double shot onto Renko. They're going to be able to survive on high ground? Of course they're not. 
UV tried to save the team with that Suzu, but it wasn't to be. Three minutes and 40 seconds now, and MAT end up losing that fight. Timers can move on, and this is a big uh, big turning point here. If they manage to get this checkpoint, which it looks like they should be able to, because Pelican's the only one real close here. They can play that corner. They got the rush and the Terra Surge if MAT want to try and run into them with their own rush. Yeah, and they're going to have that sound barrier again. These sound barriers are like offset between Renko and Opener. So uh, you're going to have that sound barrier yet again as well to kind of like boost your chances in this fight as uh, both of these teams exactly even in terms of the amount of meters. Suzu, there's the pulse. There's a... Oh my God, the Kutsune rushes are exactly on top of each other almost. Sound barrier from Opener, like you called back, keeping Riker alive as he was spinning to win. No kills for Timeless until uh, until I say that, and then Hawk ends up going down. M80 slowly losing control of this game now. Is uh, they are going to let that bot go past that next corner, and it is closing in on their final checkpoint as well. Now we're heading towards the danger zone, Matt. Esperanza is pretty tough to come back from once the barricade has moved this far. Yeah, and, and I think if you're timeless, I think just kind of like the goal of this next fight, I mean, you'd love Chopper to get a pick early, right? Maybe you'd see if Renko will use that sound barrier as they feel a little bit desperate. There's that first pick. They're just going to save it, but this is massive, right? You want them to end up having to use that sound barrier to like basically leave spawn and prevent a cap because they're going to have to get the bot so far the opposite way that with 2.12 on the clock, hey, that that's the type of situation where what, you're going to get like below a minute, a minute on the clock, and they're going to have no ultimates to use you just need one defense and you pretty much have like three chances uh, to do it so this is huge here for timeless yeah i think you hit the nail on the head matt just force them to use that beat just to make like a, a meterage of movement right i mean not even that because the bot takes so long to get back to their barricade so time is trying to force as many ultimates as they possibly can out of m80 that one minute mark is nearing. There is uh, one Terra Surge being thrown out. A lot of that damage Suzu. It's actually Pelican that falls. They're the hands of Rockets. 106 meters and counting. Hawk in a lot of trouble. Has to receive the beat to be kept alive. This is exactly what Timeless wanted. They want M82 Zolt here. A sound barrier. A Arisa ult. Like, uh, any more would be beautiful for Timeless. They can come back into this next fight with a beat and an overclock. Yeah, I mean, you can tell that M80 definitely didn't want to use that sound barrier there, but they, they almost, you, you're kind of forced to, right? Uh, no, if you don't use it there, you may you may not even get an opportunity to use it. You may get like a map completion. So Chopper. Uh, you will have Ultraviolet with uh, the Kitsune rush here. Maybe just trying to find a part of the map that you can better set this up as uh, Chopper actually you know, takes that front spot and goes towards their side of the high ground. Lucky he doesn't get caught out. Yeah, that's, if that spear landed, I think that'd be one dead sojourn. All right, high ground control for Chopper. He's got OC. He's got a pulse gun with his name written on it, though, I'd imagine. Up to the high ground went Hydron. Here comes the sound barrier. Hydron in trouble. Chopper trying to land out some shots. There's the stick. Pelican lands it. Chopper down. No overclock for Timeless now. Gonna have to respawn and use that one as M80 end up winning that fight. They got that checkpoint. They got that forward spawn, Matt, and a team kill. But overtime is 10 seconds away. Yeah, and here, here's your big window of opportunity for M80, right? Uh, it's going to be on the, the, the Sojourns again, both with Overclock. Uh, potentially here you have Timeless with like a setup we've seen a few times, right? Terror Surge, grab players in, then use the Overclock and let Chopper just put down damage as ever, all the players kind of get like sucked into that ultimate, almost like a mini grab. Yeah, it looks like they want to maybe set up something like that, but they can't quite get past the front line as Chopper takes care of Hydron. Both overclocks looking at each other, and Chopper comes out on top. Everybody pretty fearful of Chopper right now. You can see M80 trying to run away and cower undercover. Hawk, well, I mean, that's the only thing he really could do there, was just try and set up something with his ultimate. The sound barrier from Renko hits two. Ultraviolet kills Opener, but the spawn advantage for Timeless might be too great. Opener kills, uh, Ultraviolet kills yet another one, but it's too little it's too late timeless take the map as m80 and now down one and timeless on match points map number four up next and it could be m80's last hurrah yeah, I mean, you just see the overclock there at the end from Chopper, right? Uh, no, you're able to get one kill there. 
Hawk using the Terror Surge, trying to like grab players together. It looked like they were playing around Ranko's uh, sound barrier, him trying to get the sound barrier, and Chopper just burns him down in seconds. Uh, I mean, you know, a little bit uh, difficult to get that one off, and the Sojourn's right in the face, but needed probably that extra cooldown or survivability, but uh, timeless, you know, in a, in a map where they did not have the lead for a majority of it, right? You know, yeah, M80 gets right. a really good first push, and then after that, I feel like it is all timeless. Yeah, it feels like they're such a scrappy team. That's the kind of vibe that I've got from them, uh, especially playing the most maps uh, out of any from the North American region going through uh, the different stages. And it's been a really magnificent thing to watch. A lot of uh, a lot of what the desk talked about as well was there's a lot of old heads uh, in Overwatch CS, especially in North America, that have been around Overwatch League for a long time. And now these young guns coming in and really just I would say punching up, but they're just kind of punching on the same level right now as uh, Rocket and Chopper specifically have just been so sick on DPS, bringing it to players that have had legacies built for them in the Overwatch League. Yeah, and uh, I, we talked a little bit about, it. obviously, Renko comes in here for lap for M80. Uh, this is the first game that he's played in the top 16, uh, right. I believe. I think uh, he played a game against uh, Na I'd win. Uh, yeah, but the, but you know, really, since their group stages, uh, you know, this is like he played a, a, a game there, and then that was about it. So, uh, there's a sub here for M80. Obviously, we're not uh, you know with, with the team daily. Not not exactly sure kind of like what's going on. Maybe they kind of see something that fits maybe a little bit more. I uh, know into Renko's skill set at the moment, but uh, yeah, not something we've seen as of late. See so if they want to sub him back out, or maybe just keep him in. I mean, who knows? We're going on to Suravasa as our next map. We'll get the substitutions if there are any uh, in just a moment. And actually, just getting confirmation now that there are no subs. So Renko staying in for M80. Timeless one map away, Matt, from landing themselves in that finals against Toronto Defiant, who they went yeah. to a five mapper up in the uh, upper bracket earlier on this tournament. Yeah, and that was a sick game, uh, you know, between those two teams. I mean, that one felt like it really could have gone either way. So uh, for for me, uh, you know, seeing that rematch would be pretty awesome. But I I'm sure that M80, you know, with the, the players that they have on this roster, you know, and uh, how much obviously kind of what they've already built as legacy is just them, right? Uh, you know, means they don't want to go out, you know, like this to timeless and then also not get a potential another shot at Toronto Defiant uh, until like next stage, right? Like it right, would be a right. long time between these teams like match up again. And uh, I know to have two pretty rough defeats uh, would be would be a bad way, I think, for M80 to end this one. All right, just making sure all the players are ready and set to go. We're going to jump to a quick break. Don't go anywhere. Map number four up next. Here we go, Suravasa, map number four, M80 versus Timeless. A place in the finals on the line now as Timeless head into this map on match point. Yeah, and, uh, you know, 
they're gonna keep Renko in obviously no subs here for M80 so uh, maybe just want a little bit of a different look in terms of Lucio play but uh, I, I think you're gonna see both these teams just kind of commit to these Aresis uh, it's been kind of what we've seen for pretty much everything outside of like that first point uh, on Ilios uh, which I think M80 does a fantastic job you know putting together like a Smaga Sime comp to really kind of catch them off guard uh, since then, it's been all Arisa, but also since then, it's been, uh, I know, a lot in favor of Timeless. Life. Oh, man, I want to see some dive. <laughs> I really want to see just Winton everywhere. I was curious um, if Riker was ever going to switch up, especially on some of these faster maps, but um, Arisa is really just a port of call. Same comps, same comps. Going in for the mirror. So, uh, nothing too surprising here is uh, M80. The end time, let's probably just take opposite sides here. So, so nobody wants to be the one that gives that soldier that charge, right? And then has to kind of push on into it. Ooh. I love the long range spears too. Should be kind of a... You know, you remember Doom Sumo? They should have that, but for Orisa. So yeah. It's just like the spears and you just have to knock each other off the edge. I think it'd be kind of wicked. I'll be kind of sick of that. I'm not yeah, okay. Okay, thanks, man. Thanks yeah, for the approval, yeah, Matt. Appreciate uh, it's that. Kind of my, it's kind of my thoughts there. Yeah, uh, that'd great, be great. Thanks. All great. right. You know, uh, <laughs> Boy, God, shut up. You and your fish, shut you and up, your fish can play together. <laughs> Boy, Boy cap by time. As Chopper gets a kill. Quit your yapping. We got Overwatch to view it. I, I, quit, quit my yapping. You're the one uh, talking about some some invisible made up Arisa game mode. I'm here. just trying to have fun, like, man. Off. I've been on broadcast for a long time today. I'm just having a little bit of fun, okay? Okay, open a window, go outside some more, huh? Just, uh, yeah, get that funny bone in order. Uh, I don't know. I think uh, the, the desk is the one who's putting in the heavy work there. Okay, we're going to have words after this, brother. All right, time probably is what not. you got for... <laughs> yeah, probably not. <laughs> Chopper taking a lot of damage to the front line. There's two rushes going on on the point. Chopper takes this guy. He's trying to find an angle into this fight. Uh, Pelican's going to make that rather hard for him. Here's the recall. Still, still, Chopper coming up with just damage right now. And the kills, nothing can stop Chopper. And his unquenchable thirst to Soldier and Diff. Nice headshot, too, onto Ranko. My God. All right, time to get the first cap. I mean, you know, we, we've talked so much, I feel like, about, uh, you know, Rocket for this timeless uh, team. And, like, you know, obviously well-deserved. Uh, it feels like since they've subbed in Chopper, I mean, things have obviously gone, you know, a completely different way. Is you know, that time, you know, the, there's not really even, like, long, you know, team fights that go on. It's, like, two different fights, maybe maybe a third, where he just gets the first pick every single time uh, on the Sojourn. And now moving into the next one, has that overclock. You just see the damage output, right? You know, at least here on it, uh, Suravasa, oh. where it was 66% for Hydra. He actually gets hit with a spear and yeah. then uh, followed up with a kill. Uh, he, he's like, what? You're going to have like a 40% lead in terms of old charge, 30% lead in terms of old charge here for Chopper at the start. And these kills are going to allow Timeless to take the second flashpoint. <laughs> Hydron is having the worst time right now. Time is uh, in a position as well, especially on this point. This Terror Surge can really wreak havoc, especially on these tight corners. I mean, Riker, I mean, Hawk can drag people through, but I mean, Riker just plays all the way at the back, just kind of baits M80 in. There's the overclock. They know they've got the advantage in terms of this one. I mean, Hydron's have to back all the way up, and Hawk just taking infinite damage. Tried to get away with the spear spin, holding S, but turns away for a brief moment. He's just lasered. 50% and counting now for Timeless. Yeah, I mean, you're nowhere close to a beat for both teams, really, right? And then that overclock comes out. Uh, there's nothing you can really do is uh, M80. They're going to have, like, one fight left here, probably. Yeah, that's uh, insane. And then you're already on, like, game point. Uh, I mean, this has been really fast so far. Yeah, extraordinarily quick. they got to come back with something. Here's Hydron's overclock. Everybody running, hiding behind those pillars. Pulse Bomb goes out, hits Hawk, receives the Suzu, but not quite enough uh, time to heal him all the way back up. Oh, he drags Rocket, and actually the initial cast damage there actually killed the Tracer. But Hawk was just so vulnerable living the front line, man. They end up just falling over to another Chopper Railgun. There is a rush, but how much use can you really get out of this, especially when there's a sound barrier on the side of Timeless? 99%, almost to 100. UV chased out. That's, that's Matt Point, Matt. Timeless need one more yeah, point, yeah. and they booked their ticket to the finals. Where are M80? Flashpoint. 
Uh, I mean, as since uh, map one, it has really been all timeless. As Hawk now switches over to the Winston here to uh, maybe just try and access this back line a little bit. I think you're trying to also help Hydron a, a bit, right? Put some pressure on the opposing team's soldier and to kind of like open things up a little bit uh, for your own is uh, they will have a big advantage. So you're going to have this Renko sound barrier coming in potentially. All right, dive, dive, dive. M80 trying to find themselves again. It's going to be rough for Hawk. Look at the damage he's already taken, Matt. Has to receive that beat. Here comes the secondary dive. In onto the back line. They're looking. They just back up. Yeah, they, I mean, they were looking at the tracer, but they, yeah, they just have to back up. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's totally fine, though, if you're timeless, right? Like, you're okay. You mean, you're up two points. You're okay giving up. They basically use sound barrier to get, you know, 20% on the point, right? Uh, you'll, you will take that trade now as they, they get that first kill on the Hawk. And that's what's going to be difficult, just kind of keeping him alive, right? There's going to be so much damage that goes down onto that Winston uh, that it, it's going to be really difficult for Hawk to live, especially because his point is in such close quarters. So he's going to go and play the Sigma. I, I think it's a better idea to not play the Winston here. Uh, yes. I know maybe you could have said, OK, we're going to do that Arisa mirror, but they're going to play a little bit more defensive here with that Sigma in the mix. I don't think that Winston would have worked out well. So I'm happy to see that M80 is deciding to make a swap. Hawk is a very good Sigma too. We'll see how uh, they end up taking this fight because a small rotation up to the high ground there might be uh, might be needed, but don't want to fear the boot. You've got to fear the boops as well, the boop off the map. That would be uh, quite awkward if he went down to that. Oh, nice eat by Hawk there. Just 180 spinning to make sure Rocket can't get that stick attached to him. Rocket ends up paying for that too. Overclock for the Soge. Uh, as Chop is trying to uh, look into this push fight. Into the point, though. It's, yeah, it's kind of rough. Look at all this damage. I mean, he's still and Opener's the got the sound Yeah, Opener's got the sound barrier, and I think they're just holding it for when, like, Ultraviolet uses the rush, but they don't feel like they need to use the rush to take the point. Okay, so they eventually just bully Riker all the way out, uh, where that that's, I think, what Timeless is looking for. Like, maybe if you can get Hawk low, which they did, I uh, you know, with the Terror Surge, maybe it forces that, you know, a little bit of a disengage and then the Kitsune rush, and then you just beat if you're Timeless and you're... You know, good to go. Uh, Timeless does come back with a sound barrier and overclock combination. Uh, gonna be very difficult to kill Chopper, and it uh, looks like probably resulting in some kills for himself. Oh, 100%. Ultraviolet has got a rush to counter, though, but here comes the overclock. Chopper taking an off angle as well. No need to beat just yet. Just split the team, and then you can go forward. But Renko's already dead. 90% for M80, but time is to just running away with this one. Hawks on his lone, so I'm on an island trying to fight for his life and fight for M80s too. But time is just going to wipe them and take the map and the series and book themselves a ticket to the finals. This is an extremely fast game of Suravasa, yeah. where, uh, no, considering how this series went, uh, right, Jack? I mean, uh, no, M80, they brawl it out towards the end of, uh, no, Ilios, right? They end up coming out on top there. Uh, and then what? It's like a full hold on, uh, no, Midtown, pretty much. And we just kind of, like, fly through the rest of the series. Uh, yeah. I mean, I uh, know uh, what they beat them on push by like a considerable margin as well, right? So uh, after that first map, it was really all timeless. I want to know how quick that Suravasa actually was, because that's going to be one of the quickest on record. Just especially the, it, it, it the first two like points were like minutes. Yeah, like instant. It, it was ridiculous. M80 end up going down and Timeless now get their chance for a rematch against Toronto Defiant in the finals. They got beaten down by uh -huh. Toronto in a 3-2 fashion, sent to the losers, and then have made their way all the way back up to the finals now. This is a revenge match for Timeless now. Yeah, and I'd say the first time that we saw, you know, uh, Timeless play Toronto, I really thought like Rocket had a tremendous series for Timeless. Yeah. I think if you're Toronto, you're a little bit like scared because like Chopper's playing like lights out so far uh, today. So uh, now you have the other DPS player really kind of like picking it up for Timeless. It's going to be difficult to beat. The DPS are beasts for Timeless. Let's listen in to the winning comms there at the very end from Timeless. 
you can't, they didn't have beat, yeah. Go fast. Job. Yeah, okay, I'm, go, I'm going fast. I'm walking now. Three, 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 two, 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 one, two, one, one. I'm walking fast. I'm walking fast. Checking sick hard, checking sick hard. Come point, come point, come point, come point. Sick up, sick up, sick up, sick up, sick up, sick up. Give me one, give me one, give me one. Cure no TP one, sick one, sick one. Cure one. Stabilize. Sick one, sick one, sick one. Just trace her, just trace her, just kill Falcon. Open her, open her, chill, open her, chill. Open her, chill. Nice. Oh my god. There you have it, guys. It is going to be timeless moving on to the grand finals. But we're going up against Toronto Defiant. I gotta say, I'm gonna be honest, I, I'm a pretty I'm pretty surprised, but credit where credit's due. They were definitely the better team compared to um, M80. They were amped up. They yeah. were ready. You I can mean, tell this what moment. this means to them. It's huge. This is uh, you know, this is personal, just starting with the storylines right away, right? This is this is personal because in flash ups in December, one of the tournaments here in North America, we saw the timeless actually won, but that was a different timeless. True. That was a timeless with Hawk on that roster and Wisp, who has Riker and all these story players. They were the team who got second in Flash Ops North America, right? So they wanted revenge this time and they beat out Hawk. Now, on that roster they lost to in the Grand Finals was also Rapal, Vega, Sugar Free, yeah. who are they are now squaring up against again in this Grand Final. So, you know, th these guys on the current Timeless roster, they, they got history. They got history with these guys. They were ready for this opportunity and they seized it. It was a great performance here against M80. Yeah, still a lot of big performances came out from M80. I feel like they didn't disappoint on an individual level. Saw a ton of production from Pelican and Hydron, but on the other's team, I mean, you've got to say Timeless, they were, they were just lights up. Map one, M80 did look pretty good. I thought, oh wow, maybe M80 really did come to play, but Timeless, they just, they speed up, they speed up, they speed up. They don't seem to ever be taking these hits and, and, and slowing down or, or losing any kind of confidence. Even on push, they fell behind and they brought it back from a pretty big deficit, um, which really speaks to their, their stick to as players, right? That they can take some L's and, and take some tough fights and still be right back into the engagement. And so I think they're gonna need that when it comes to facing off against the Toronto Defiant in the Grand Finals, who, who are a beast in a different category, I think, let's say, than M80. So I think Timeless, an incredible win for them. This probably means so much to them just to be top two. But now you start to believe, like, maybe they can win it all, right? Like, even though it's Toronto Defiant, maybe there's a chance. Yeah, I think that Timeless has established themselves as probably the best team in North America when it comes to the Orisa Tracer Sojourn mass matchup specifically. Mm. But now you're going up against Toronto Defiant. A Toronto Defiant team who has been very flexible, played so many different compositions, can always adapt, right? And so Timeless looking great here. Chopper on the Sojourn having a lot of impact. Nice Ooh. amount of eliminations right there, 11 deaths for him in this matchup. So this is a Timeless team that is just stacked to the brim. As much as we talked about Chopper, Rocket, the backline as well this time around with CJ and Opener, mm -hmm. all contributing this one. Riker on the Orisa establishing some differential and you pointed out here on Midtown, Jake, that you know it was a really good hold from Timeless and they really set up these damage players for success. Yeah, I think CJ for me has been really fun to watch. I mean, we don't get to see his cam all that much because for the most part, he's gonna be behind these key frontliners. But like, I love this frontliner. Look, CJ, he's right in here on the flank. This hits like a ton of bricks. Lucio, Kiri, Soj, all jumping up on that angle where you don't expect a single player to attack you from. That completely caught M80 off guard and was a huge part of generating the lead that won them the map. So for me, CJ, his ability to fight it out in the back line on Kiriko, he's been a massive difference maker uh, for me in the back line of Timeless. Yeah. I mean, we're talking about Chopper, we're talking about the DPS lineup. That's who we have for the post-match interview for this one. We got Chopper on the line to hear some insight about this match. Chopper, uh, big congratulations on getting the win. Thank you so much. All right, uh, I mean, I know you guys have to get ready for the Grand Finals and that is the biggest match, so I'm gonna make this quick. Was there anything you guys, spe you guys did specifically uh, to get the win against M80 today? Uh, to be honest, we knew that like after our luminosity game yesterday that we should just play our own game you know uh at the start of the tournament it was a bit shaky you know we went 3-2 with pip 3-1 with students of the game but every map was down to the wire you know and that luminosity game i think gave us a lot more confidence and overall i'm just really happy we beat m80 again because i mean you look at their players and they have some real like top talent like Overwatch League veterans, and we beat them in groups once, 3-2, but you know, you could call that a fluke, maybe, because they're a new team and maybe it was just a choke, but I'm real glad that we won again in 3-1 fashion, you know?
Yeah, Chopper, so I just want to ask you, you know, I talked to you years ago uh, when you were still, like, I would say, even for a lot further down on, like, the up-and-coming side of the spectrum as a DPS player in NA. And so I wanted to ask you, with a top two position now in NA, I mean, if you guys can stay top two after the second qualifier, you'll be going to, to DreamHack and playing an international LAN against some of the best players in the world. What does it mean to you guys, you know, all the players in your team are in a similar position that that would be a first for, I think, all of you, except, you know, maybe, maybe one or two. What does that mean to you to play and beat some of the biggest names so far that we've seen in the scene here in the OWCS? I mean, it, I think it means genuinely like so much, you know, like a lot of us are contenders players. We didn't really have the chance to uh, perform and show up in like Overwatch League other than like the Pro-AM, I believe. And, you know, top three, top three makes land. We were happy with top three, but being able to make top two is like you know, it's insane, you know, feeling, being Pelican, Hydron, Hawk, like all these veterans, you know, like, I don't know. I wasn't really expecting top three. I was expecting top three, but, you know, it was acceptable if we were losing to Toronto or Amity because you just look at their players and it's just, it's understandable, you know? So being able to come out on top is, it's just insane, really. All right, Chopper, I'm going to let you go. I know you guys have to talk, talk about the match uh, coming up. Good. Best of luck to you. Thank you so much. I'll see you soon. Thanks, Chopper. All right, thank you so much. All right, that was Chopper from Timeless. He sounds sounds like a, such a good guy. I feel like yeah. we have a lot of new uh, new talent or new uh, new players who are you know very they got these skills and they got they're like also like ready to do interviews and like show I guess their personality as well. I yeah. mean, it's, it's been a long road for these guys. I mean, yeah. I'm even thinking back to like the pro am last year we saw before the Overwatch League even kicked off. Uh, they they they've been fighting for the for this opportunity for a long while and so Chopper ready at the moment. Yeah, as you can see, uh, here's the bracket. It is going to be timeless moving up after beating M. 80. Our grand finals for NA region is going to be Toronto Defiant versus Timeless. I can't help but feel that this has kind of been been we've been waiting for this ever since that map five banger yeah. that Timeless oh, yeah. played against Toronto previously. I mean, they were the only team who has ever put this iteration of Toronto Defiant to a map five. And yes, it went Toronto's way last time, but Timeless they look more and more confident as the tournament goes on. The meta is shifting in their favor. The big question for me now is. Does Toronto the Fight have more cooked up? They are a team that with, with someone on the tank roll, it feels like they always have some sort of advantage. They always put themselves in a comp that gives them a, a favorable fight. And if they end up in a pure mirror, as you said, Johnny, that could start to look pretty good for Timeless. Yeah. Yeah, I think Timeless definitely has a good chance in this one. Uh, but you gotta, you gotta, you gotta watch out for what Toronto you gotta, throws yeah. away. You gotta talk about that. You gotta yeah. discuss strategy, right? Because if you get put on the spot and you're like, well, what do I do now? <laughs> like, you better have that figured out going into the Grand Finals match. I, I feel, though, that they pro probably talked this over quite a bit. Um, and they also know their strengths, right? Like, if they have Rocket facing off against Merit in a Tracer duel, I think they're pretty happy with that. I think that's their, something they look forward towards. When they face off against someone, if he swaps over to the Sigma, Toronto Defiant known at this time for the Casuars coaching documents and the, the <laughs> map picks and bans they have in store. Um, th there might be a lot of strategy involved here in this one. Yeah, sure. I think though, last time they faced off, you're right, it was Rocket versus Merit in the Tracer duel, and Rocket looked pretty solid, right? Like he made that a very, very fair fight, if not favored for Rocket. But Merit is like the second best Tracer player on Toronto Defiant. He's playing Tracer when Sugar Freeze on Echo because his Tracer is great. But I think ideally for the Toronto Defiant, they put Merit on a core hit scan, which I mean, Sojourn, come on, this whole tournament has been lights out for Sojourn. And it's it's Sugar Free playing the Tracer. I think that's the setup they want. And the meta has shifted now to where they're getting exactly what they want, I think. So I think Rocket has a tougher test in Sugar Free. Um, with Merit on the hit scan, I mean, it's not gonna be a Tracer duel. It's gonna be Merit one tapping you across the map if he's on. And there's just a limit to how well you can play Play around that. Yeah. All right, I mean, we're gonna have more time to talk about these teams before uh, we go into the match. So for now, uh, it's time to reveal the NA superstar, everybody. You guys remember that? The thing that we did, uh, the pre-show, uh, when we first started the show. Um, and, you know, it's not really MVP. This is chat. You guys chose the superstar for the NA region, and that goes to... Oh, yeah! Aaron. All oh, right. yeah! Good choice, good choice. My good choice. God, my kid. I mean, after seeing those amazing performance from him yesterday, right? I mean, you, who could say no? Like, he popped off in a big way. He makes it look like he's smurfing in the pro scene. I mean, this is some, dis even from Merit, I was pretty stunned by some of the plays. I mean, we know how consistent, <laughs> yeah. how strong he is, but it was just over and over and over again. 
I mean, like, whether it's, he's like the Terminator, man. He just walks in and, like, it looks like, you, this makes me want to play Overwatch. You watch this guy play, you're like, let, let me, give me a shot. Give me a shot. Makes it look but easy. I can't, you can't, you can't do like this. You can't do you don't it like look that. like this, bro. <laughs> not like Merit. Not, not like that. this. It's, it's not like that. You know, it's okay. You don't have to be like Merit. That's a, that's a standard we can't ask of anyone. I mean, you just saw the way that, like, Merit differentialed Hydron yesterday in their series yeah. against M80, right? Like, that's Hydron. That's yeah. one of the best hit scan players in North America. And Merit just, like, gave it to him. It was disgusting. I, I just remember when I was doing the interview, and I was like, hey, Jake wanted me to ask you, <laughs> what does it feel to be touched by God? Long way to put it. <laughs> I mean, I was joking around, but like, no, come but on. This he was guy close. Yeah. is a monster, man. And that yeah. performance was one of the best I've seen from him. And to think he's still a young player, like we talk about up and coming players. I argue that Merritt has higher to climb. Like, I don't think we've necessarily seen the best of his career. You got to remember, this guy's been playing pro for what, two seasons of the Overwatch League? And he's already, I think, I think seriously in contention for best in the world in, in hit scan. I don't think Sojin's his best hit scan. I think he's better on other hit scan. That is terrifying. True. All right, all right. Well, we'll I mean, we're going to talk about uh, Merit and a lot more after this. Uh, but, uh, you know, Overwatch is special because, uh, you know, it's building a future with all of you guys. You know, you guys are the stars along with all the he wonderful heroes that we have. I'm going to be honest, I don't know where I'm going with this, but uh, we're going to we're gonna look at a quick video of uh, what the game director Aaron Keller has to say to you guys and for the future of Overwatch. Wait a second. Looks good. <laughs> I'm getting excited. Good? Yeah. Ready for this. Can I just go? Oh. Hello, everyone. This is Aaron from the Overwatch team. And welcome to our first developer update of 2024. We have some news that we're excited to share with all of you. Today, I'm going to talk to you about how we release heroes, a new way of unlocking mythic skins, as well as some gameplay updates. So let's start with heroes. Last year at BlizzCon, we gave you a look at our next hero, Venture. They're an eccentric and daring adventurer with a unique kit that includes the ability to dig underground. We can't wait for them to join the lineup in season 10, and we want all of you to have the opportunity to play Venture as soon as they are released. Heroes are one of the most exciting additions to the game, and we want all of our players to have immediate access to them when they launch, which is why I'm thrilled to share that Venture and all future heroes will be free for all players when they launch. Starting with Venture, heroes will no longer be unlocked through the Battle Pass. This includes all previous Overwatch 2 heroes. In addition to this, we're introducing a new way to unlock mythic skins in Overwatch. We'd like to give everyone more choice in how they unlock and upgrade mythic skins. Our goal is to give you more power over which mythic skin you would like to work towards. And starting in season 10, we will debut our mythic shop. This will enable you to acquire mythic skins from previous seasons you may have missed. So if you've been eyeing that Cyber Demon Genji skin, this is your chance to get it. We'll have more details to share about the Mythic Shop and how it works as we get a little closer to Season 10. Alongside these changes, we will also continue to evolve and add to the core of the game to keep things fresh. The changes we made to our competitive system and some of the core mechanics of Overwatch Combat in Season 9 are all great examples of this, and it's something we want to continue doing. Part of our vision for these big updates to competitive is to give the game a regular heartbeat. Newer updated systems, shaking up PVP, rank resets, and new rewards are all examples of the sorts of updates we'd like to continue doing. How often this happens is something that we're still looking at, as well as listening to all of you about. Additionally, we've already made several sets of balance changes in Season 9 and are committed to continuing to make the game as fair fun, and competitive as we can. Let's talk about maps. We're going to be releasing several maps in the next few seasons. We have a new push map, Runasapi, coming in season 11. Uh, Runasapi is set in Peru, and it gives players a glimpse at the Solar Warriors as well as Alari. And it's also gorgeous and a blast to play. We also have a new mode, Clash, with two new maps releasing later this year. And we're excited to announce that we're going to be running 
a limited time clash playtest on Hanaoka at the start of season 10. When we first launched Overwatch 2, we set out to create at least three new maps every year, with the intention of releasing one every other season. But as we've added more and more maps to the game, we heard from you that you'd like us to put as much time into our live maps as we do into making new ones. Based on this feedback, we'd like to continue to make existing maps as fun as possible. We're going to be reworking Coliseo in Season 11, and even more exciting, sometime after Season 12, we're looking at creating a season that will be focused on map reworks rather than a new map. This final map list is still being discussed, but you have given us a lot of feedback about Dorado, Circuit Royale, Havana, and Numbani, so we're closely looking at those maps. The most important part of these plans is you. The Overwatch community is on track to reach 100 million players next season, and our team is dedicated to developing this game alongside you. We've been listening closely to your feedback, and ahead of season 10, we'll be back with another developer update to share even more upcoming changes. You'll hear from different developers at Blizzard and Team 4 to share how we're addressing disruptive player behavior, grouping restrictions in competitive, and player anonymity. So keep an eye out and make sure to follow us on Twitter and YouTube for upcoming announcements. Thank you so much for watching, and let's make a great game. Do you want yep. to save the Twitter again? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm so sorry. Yeah, it was just the yeah. tail of the airplane. Seriously? Yeah. Okay, here we go. The final ma map list is still being discussed. We've been listening, listening. Cool. Thank you so much, Aaron. I mean, there's the future of Overwatch is truly bright. There's so many things that all the fans should be excited there's about. There's a lot to look forward to. Right. Can't wait Dude, to every day better. we get off the show, I'm like, I want to go home and play some Overwatch after watching these guys pop off <laughs> and match, and then I'm like, well, I can't quite do that anymore. Dude, you're, you're still just grinding out hey, there. I love it. I love the game. I love the game. And talking about, talking about pop off, I feel like we're going to see a lot of that right now because we're going into the NA Grand Finals. Let's talk about Toronto first, Johnny. The most versatile team in the region. Someone, he plays Saria, Sigma, Urisa, Doomfist, Winston, you name it. They're gonna bring it out all in this one. They're cooking to just an absurd amount, okay? I don't care if it's sushi or Korean barbecue <laughs> or pasta, what? like they can do it all. It's just whatever timeless things they're coming out at and they have a great plan, Toronto is just going to outmaneuver you with strategy. They can do whatever they want. Now it's all about executing their star stuttered incredible backline. Merit, one of the best hiscam players in the world. Sugar free, flexibility between Tracer and Echo. It's a stack roster dining. I mean, and they're going up against Timeless, Jake. Uh, why should Toronto be scared of Timeless right now? I think it's, I mean, Toronto's not going to be scared, right? Toronto has to be coming into this confident. They are the top dogs. But I think there is a part of you as Toronto the Fight, as these established, well known players that's watched players like Rocket and Chalk for just wreak havoc on these other established players on other teams. So I think Toronto's gonna be confident. I think they have every reason to be, but I think Timeless, they're playing with the house chips at this point. Like, they're playing for fun, they're playing for the love of the game and for each other. And sometimes that's when you can really do something that you didn't think was possible before, right? There's not gonna be that tension or the fear. It's just playing with, with freedom and creativity. And sometimes that's when you pull out your best performances as individuals. So I can't wait to see especially what players like Rocket and Chopper have in store. But with Icy in the starting lineup, we could be seeing some sort of interesting new strategic take, maybe that Timeless have been holding on to. Uh, but for me, eyes on CJ. I want to see production from CJ. That Kiriko has been really impressive for me. He fought off Pelican incredibly well in the last series, made his own dives happen. So I really want to see great stuff from him. All right, well, we're going to be starting off the map with uh, Nepal. Um, no surprises? No surprises. Anything? Same Anything map good? as last time. All right, last let's jump right into the game, guys. Nepal, Hollywood, it's the same ones. All right, Jack, <laughs> Matt, take it away. Thank you very much, Danny. Johnny was like, please, let me get the point out. Please, please, help, please. Just one more point, please. I'm on the desk. <laughs> he was trying. Oh. Uh, th this should be a sick series, though, right? Yes. Uh, no, obviously... Toronto Defiant could have been, you know, cooking up some different stuff, uh, you know, in the break, you know, obviously. Uh, they, they probably had a decent idea that they were going to see Timeless again, considering uh, how close their match was, and then I uh, know how they kind of, like, swiftly dealt with M80. Uh, and it looks like for Timeless, uh, you'll have Icy here at the start, so maybe even Timeless took away some things from that series that they feel like they could do a bit different. 
Yeah, maybe so. I mean, IC in means a little bit more Sigma play, maybe. We're going to Nepal. If it's yeah. Sanctum, I mean, that makes a lot of sense for Sigma, who is someone play. I mean, someone can play anything. It doesn't really matter. Johnny's nodding along. I'm right, Johnny, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what I thought. Yeah, I mean, look, at the end of the day, timers have a deep bench, and they've not been afraid to use it in the past. Uh, but Toronto Defiant, uh, they're a different, they're just a different breed of human being, I feel like, Matt. Like, they are just so good. They are reigning champions, or some of them at least, for a very, very good reason. And this roster hand -picked, uh, was hand-picked to be the best. You say that, what, two days ago, we just saw these two teams play and they go went to five, five, right? Yeah. Yeah, you're like, oh, they're this like unbeatable juggernaut. It's like we literally just saw this series decided by like a single team fight, pretty much. Uh, most people in the chat obviously going to go uh, side with Toronto Defiant, uh, but I believe that's even a little bit closer than we had it the other day. I think it was like oh, in the 80s the other day. So uh, some people jumping off the, the Toronto bandwagon, uh, <laughs> liking what they see with Timeless. Well, the Toronto fans coming out, man. Let's get it. Let's get it. I mean, I, you'd be a fool, I think, to count timeless out. Like you said, it was an extremely close match the other day, going all the way to five and it being a couple of fights in it. All right, Toronto timers, what do you have for us? I wouldn't be too surprised to see Toronto stick out on this, put Sugar Free on the Tracer. And we are going to Sanctum too, which is which is great, honestly. I want to see what Icy brings to the table up against, and I will use your word, Matt, the Juggernaut, because he is a Juggernaut, somewhat on the Sigma. <laughs> Yeah, is, uh, they all end up playing the Ramatra. So uh, we've seen this a few times now uh, from Timeless. So typically when they have IC in, it's, you know, Ramatra, you know, Sigma. I uh, you know some of Risa, you know, Riker really playing the dive tanks with Arisa as uh, the Ramatra can push into the Sigma. You know, uh, one, of, one of the tanks you can kind of like, you know, stand toe to toe with Sigma is uh, nobody making their way towards the point just yet. Uh, just playing the poke game. We have the Sojourns to find a shot. A way for someone maybe to kind of walk up and then IC can take advantage of that using Nemesis 4. Very, very slow start. Not even uh, the Tracer's finding much entrance here into these Are we fights. on Coliseo? It does feel that way. All good though. Timeless, don't worry about They're capping. They do be capping. Well, Rocket was for a brief moment. Took a bit of fire and uh, ended up ducking back in. So, <laughs> okay, someone's going to cap like, uh... any day now. Yep, time was a bit closer as, uh, yeah, that'll be Rocky who gets on the point. <laughs> that was absurd. I think that's the longest Sanctum opening I think I've ever seen. No kills either way. Don't jinx me, Rocket. Come on now. All good. We're chilling. Well, I mean, both tanks, like, don't really want to, like, push up and engage on that high ground. And now someone will drop down to the point. You know, this, uh, it, it's actually kind of huge that it, Timeless does get uh, the point first. Probably forces Toronto to feel like they have to do something, and Icy gets caught in a bad spot. Yeah, real bad spot. That rush is just so deadly. Especially having a little flank, too. It can be really hard. Icy, you've only really got that one cooldown, right? You have got the Nemesis for... Oh, oh, this trick in the book, Merit. Lucio painting you out of there. A little boop, <laughs> and off the map. I think Ober is going to get away as well. He so did. He got away. He's out here, of you know, with a, with a, <laughs> Yeah, with a, a, a bit of a, you know, opening and make a play. As he's got the beat here. Oh, no need kill. to use it. Yeah, I mean, that's huge. The, the, the boob then getting away. Uh, that, uh, you know, gives them a player advantage. They get back and they just win that next fight. So uh, even with, you know, Icy maybe, you know, getting... I, I don't think he really, like, overextended. I think what happened was, is, like, they just kind of, like, roped around with a speed boost and caught him off guard in the previous fight. Uh, it's only going to result in 20% here for the Defiant. Yeah, wow, that late kill really did mean a whole bunch. Oh, overclock start here for Merritt. Who wants to test him on the point? Well, Rocket does. Oh, stick Suzu instantly, though, there at Merritt's side. Open it with that sound barrier to try and contend with that overclock. Either finding much. Here's the flux. Where'd it go? It missed completely. Everybody dodged out of the way just in time. And now we're on to with Sugar Free. As he's taking the fight to opener in that small room as they try and find the flip. Uh, but both teams trade Lucio's and RuPaul's so weak, it's going to be very difficult for him to move out as someone uh, ends up off the side. So uh, that is, it uh, looked like actually it was Icy using uh, the Annihilation, the Ramatra ultimate, but then someone just kind of falling off. But they couldn't actually push out on the point Toronto because RuPaul was so weak and they had no other healer left. 
Could have been a boop as well. You can sphere on the wall as Sigma, and it won't count. It won't count as an enemy kill. Worth keeping in mind because it does give you a little bit of a movement. Sound barrier counteracting Chopper's railgun. He's still carrying for cover here. As you can see, Merritt on the other side of the map, but Merritt paying a lot of respect to Chopper, not insta peeking it. Sugar Free starts to fight off with a kill. Open it down with the Lucio dead. Ice is in a little bit of trouble, although I say that. Hope. Uh, so death won't go in vain. The Sugar Free also ends up falling. Good double punch from someone who's come back on the Doomfist to try and get the extra little touch here, but he is so low. Chopper chases him down, and Rocket is soon there to clean up with him. 99% for Timeless as they find the flip. Toronto to find have Sugar Free up, alive, and well. But are they going to be able to get back? I don't think so. And there we go. Round one over to Timeless. <laughs> yeah, that is uh, obviously a rough start for the Defiant, just losing that first point. Uh, but in that previous fight, you know, Rocket just ran around and killed three players. Uh, we saw him do that pretty much unchecked through a lot of the last series between these two teams, uh, where if they are going to let him just kind of like run around and do his thing on the Tracer, uh, th this is going to be another long series, uh, I feel like, between these two teams. This Toronto looks like to potentially be hovering that Doomfist again here to kind of uh, counter potentially that Sigma, uh, not the uh, Ramatra that's going to be in play. Yeah, expect a lot of swaps coming out from both teams, especially in the tank role. Is someone happy to run out with a Doomfist? A bit different, uh, especially on this map. The Doom can definitely work, map, but actually getting on the point and holding it with the Doom comp is going to be rather tough. There's not a lot of great avenues for the Doom to play on this point, right? Uh, typically, it's why you see, uh, I know, as uh, Merritt just takes out Chop uh, Chopper, takes out Merritt off the start. Uh, typically, why you see, you know, teams play a little bit more stationary comps on the point. So, man, I mean, Chopper. Uh, picking up where he left off in the last series. I mean, two quick kills right off the rip. Jesus. All right. Quick and clean cap there for Timeless. Yeah, I'm curious if someone actually ends up uh, getting back and swapping. Maybe he feels like he's in a little bit too deep at this point with the Doomfist. Well, quite literally, I suppose, is he in the point or uh, on top of it at the very least. They're so split, though. You see, like, some of the, right. you know, two players trying to come up top right high ground and, like, a few players down here on the low side where it seems like they have a great read, like, these two players Ooh. trying to come out of the top. Good pick. Toronto find that flip, too, as Rocket ends up going down to a kunai. It's worth thinking about as well. The last time these two teams met, that map five series, it was Toronto to find taking the ball 2-0 and oh to start it off. So the, the complete opposite right now for Timeless. I told you about a uh, spoke about sticking power on the point, man. This is what I mean. Like, who touches here for Toronto to find? Someone is always so low before he can actually make a move and get on there. Yeah, the Ramantra is going to be really difficult to dislodge, right? Even if the Doom dives in, uh, you can kind of kind of keep him there with like the vortex of the the Ramantra. And I mean, look at that. Someone there, yeah, there's nobody shooting him, right? Just, just kind of let him stand there. Just chill. No power block. Uh, you know, we're going to be looking at what double support all for both sides here. They're going to drop down, try and rush. That rush. Where did that punch go? Maybe it hit this uh, the Soge map, but like, because you haven't got power up punch, it's not doing a whole bunch. You can still get kills with it, but it's uh, a little bit easier with the power up. We've seen a rush on the point too. Oh, Chopper tries to retreat past that shield, and Merritt managed to uh, bend the railgun shot around the shield by the looks of it. Takes care of Chopper. So now someone's a little bit more free, especially since now he has his ult. Annihilation available and uh, pops instantly from Icy there as he runs on forward, but quickly matched with a sound barrier from the Toronto Defiance. Quick clean up too, as Timeless end up going down, and there it is. A little 69 uh, flip there as Timeless end up losing the point. Yeah, is this is where for Timeless, I'm curious, like, do you feel you need to actually swap here, like, to counter some of the Doom stuff? Like, the Aris is awesome against the Doomfist, right? I uh, know that kind of would be the tank you would go towards. Uh, and then, you know, you kind of find yourself in that Arisa mirror eventually. It's kind of how we end up there. Is uh, so we mirror with an overclock here. Oh, oh my God. Chopper's going to pop his. Oh, mess with the best, die like the rest. Railgun straight through the dome. Chopper goes down. Merit. Proven once again, one of the kings when it comes to the Sojourn pick. Good spawner kills there as well. CJ trying to escape. Okay, so they're going to go queen. So uh, they're going to have the queen in the mix and here with a Cassidy. So uh, if you're timeless, you're going to play this comp. You're not really going to kind of like vie for that high ground, right? It's going to kind of play into the exact sight lines that Toronto has. Probably going to try and force this fight on the point. 
Yeah, the cast is going to be a big hindrance here to do, quite literally, with a magnet. But someone shouldn't fear too much, does have the ultimate. Wants to put out that power up punch first, maybe trying to get in Kitchen, cook up something special. Punch does end up going in, and Shopper ends up falling over. Good stick on the Queen, too. No shout, no problem for Sugar Free. They're going to clean this fight up pretty easily. And with 90% on the board and a late dive, uh, late death on the Lucio Matt's timers are in trouble. Rocket ends up falling as well. And uh, well, who touches? Uh, nobody. Uh, that's who? I don't think they can get back in time. It's Toronto. And they even up the score. Yeah, so it takes a little bit for Toronto to actually kind of get the points playing this Doomfist. But uh, once they do, it seems like Timeless didn't really have an answer, right? Uh, once they can't exactly just kind of sit on the point and play from that position. So. Uh, really, it's like Toronto just playing for when they get that Katsuna rush, and then they're able to empower that Doom. And uh, I like this decision for Timeless. I think play the Arisa comp. Like, uh, they talked about in the interview, like, hey, this is what they're good at. So it got them here. Like, may as well stick to it. Also happens to be Arisa pretty strong against just about everybody at the moment. Yeah, oh, 100%. 100%. And with the Doomfist, I'm curious if someone's going to, they're going to kind of half get to the point, realize Arisa's on the other side and switch. We'll see what someone wants to do or if he just wants to stick on the Doomfist again. This point's a little bit easier, map for the Doom, of course. It's not as open. You can play around the giant pillar and you can kind of dance around the other small ones as well. Um, they're a bit too far deep in now, I suppose, so can't really go back to spawn right now. But there's a small window, but it doesn't look like they want to do that. No, I, I I don't think so. I think maybe if they kind of lose first fight, you see them make a change, but it's going to be on someone to try and stay alive here, right? You know, Spear can just kind of get get pushed out of the way. Uh, great survivability now. Well, you know, Arisa can kind of like collapse, right? Get you know, moving pretty fast right at you. Well, I just use that spear spin to get away. Just Merit's trying to line up some shots. All someone is doing right now is punching in, getting out, punching in, getting out, just trying disrupt times as much as possible make choppers life a little bit harder getting in front of those uh, line of sights to the back line it's actually rocket that goes down okay just a on a sideline flank tried to get some work done but no swiftly met his end sure is jumping off the map Ooh. maybe should have gone for the punch oh nice punch on cj Ooh. Ooh. very nice <laughs> Yeah, as uh, they find that kill onto Rocket is uh, probably just kind of like pestering over on the side uh, there a little bit and maybe took a shot from like Merit and then uh, finished off by uh, someone is uh, they're going to have the Cassidy in yet again. So I think they're really trying to punish someone as he comes in. I think he's just playing really well in terms of uh, you know, not really being that aggressive, right? Uh, like just kind of like you know, waiting for the right moment as opposed to just kind of going in deep, like right there, just a punch, a slam out, you know, kind of do the same song and dance over and over. He's going to make the first move though. Well, there is the, oh, see ya. Well, nice rush, buddy. Now your team's going to have to contend with a, uh... This railgun coming from Merit. I mean, there's just no shot. Icy survives that either. Yeah, that fight's done. This fight's over. We're going again. <laughs> and he's been getting up. He's just uh, got to be one of the sickest Sojins uh, in existence. Like, he's up there with proper yeah. for sure in terms of Sojin play. One of the best to ever touch the game. Oh, without a doubt, is uh, Toronto really kind of uh, showing their dominance here these last two points? specifically is where do they want to go timeless it looks like trying to go set up here on the high ground spears been just to get out that's going to be the shot going to do some ticking damage yeah up to the roof oh opener oh. did not see that one coming neither did rockets oh mary smells blood in the water and it's all timeless an 85 percent lead now on that point and they're trying to make this death hurt icy going super low now as toronto are playing up close and personal to their sport yeah and this is why it also feels like you cannot just kind of move away from that sojourn as a hero right incredibly strong as it'll be icy who sits oh. up Open up. control of the point, but no, uh, no armor there. Opener doesn't get the feed off. Is man, uh, this one looking like it's going to be all oh. Toronto here for map one. Oh, they may have went down on round number one, but almost a complete repeat there of their series on the upper bracket. Toronto defiant taking that first map two and O oh on Nepal. And Matt, it's worth pointing out as well. This map set is identical to that series yeah. from the upper bracket, huh. which is kind of insane both teams pretty happy with I the maps the way, that they went to and won 
yeah i think the way that timeless ends up making this a game is to uh you know potentially you have like riker in and you're either you're rotating either dive tanks or you're rotating the arisa uh, and i think you have to kind of commit to really sojourn tracer with all of those sojourn tracer swap the tank out if they play sigma we're gonna play more dive we're gonna go like a, a winston or like a diva or something along those lines uh maybe even like a maga for instance if they're going to play doom they're gonna play winston like we're either gonna play the orisa or match i think that's kind of the path that timeless has to take throughout this one i will question the doom fist will it work up against the orisa up against the ram okay someone you shut us up you shut us up and i think you shut everybody up else up as well i mean merit also just uh, just an absolute beast on the sojourn and uh, you were talking about it a little bit earlier on matt when Rocket has been just sick, but and everybody's been hyping up Rocket. But Chopper has also been up there in terms of like carry potential on Sojourn. But now he really is um, up against one of the best Sojourns ever. And if there was a test, if there was one thing you got to do now is win against that, it, it's pretty tough. And maybe a little bit more of a daunting task too. And we did see Chopper jump over to the Cassidy to zero effect. Yeah, and the one thing I think for Timeless, like you can't really uh, you know, let set in is, uh, you know, sometimes you're just like, oh, hey, we're like surprised and happy. You know, we even just got top two, right? And it kind of <laughs> like takes out like sense of urgency, like in a final of like, oh, well, we've kind of already accomplished like what we wanted to. Like, well, no, you have a legitimate like, yeah, this went to five the last time circuit points on the line right who knows what a meta looks like uh, i know in the the second stage of owcs uh may, may not work out as good you need kind of that buffer going into dream hack yeah more points the better stay choose important but what's important right now is that time is locked in is that KDA differential there uh, by Toronto? But not too much of a surprise after you win the map. First of four, remember, if you're only just joining us here for North America, first two four, very classic uh, Overwatch rules. And yeah, going on to the next map, Matt, uh, how are we feeling about substitutions for Timeless? Reckon we're seeing Icy still or uh, uh, Riker? Uh, I think you probably will see Riker come in. Uh, that would be my guess. Uh, now they also brought in uh, Sunjun the last time we actually right. watched this series, I believe. It was like just so we saw Chopper in map number one, and then I think uh, we saw that happen. Yeah, the rest of the series. So yeah, here, here we go. So uh, that's exactly what we're going to see happen. So Riker will come in. Uh, Sunjun will come in as well. Uh, so this is uh, this is kind of starting off exactly how the last one did, right? Uh, I know map one may have been a little bit closer the last time uh, in terms of like how the rounds went, but in terms of like what we're seeing sub wise uh, and what we'll probably see gameplay wise, I think we're gonna gonna see the same type of thing. Yeah, a little bit of a uh, little bit of hit scan, a little bit of rail. I think uh, for Sunjun is probably gonna end up picking up and out the Widowmaker. It'll be nice to see but it will be the Sojourn. Hollywood, just uh, El Clasico map for that one. And um, Riker, maybe just pull out the Winston too. I mean, it seems like them and Icy, they're happy to also play the Orisa. I mean, Orisa, when it comes down to it, it being a, not like a new hero, but like it being reworked to a point where the place I was completely different. Every tank that's touched Overwatch 1 can play the Orisa and Overwatch 2. It's just, it's just whatever. Riker at least then gives them flexibility if they want to go more like a, a dive comp, for example. We are going to go to a quick break, though. Don't go anywhere after this. Map number two, Hollywood. Toronto currently in the lead.
Welcome back. Hollywood up next. Toronto Defiant taking an early lead in this series. Very reminiscent of what happened in their upper bracket match earlier on in this uh, tournament. There we go. And uh, we had substitutions too. Uh, we had Riker in and Sunjin in for Timeless. So we'll see who starts on the attack and defense first, and then we'll load on in and, uh, yeah, see what's up. Because uh, someone... <laughs> Matt, does he run Doofist again? I mean, he's probably not, right? But there's a real possibility you could, no. especially uh, on Hollywood. But Sigma seems like the better pick to me. But we'll have to wait and see. They're on the offense first, that being Toronto to find. <laughs> Yeah, no shot. I think they run uh, Doom <laughs> yet know. again. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 I wouldn't even say like Doom is a hero that I would say like, you know, someone I feel like is way better at other tanks outside of Doom. Like not saying his Doom's bad, but I feel like it's a, uh, you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't say it's like you know is a uh, rank one like go to uh, type yeah. of tank. As timeless on defense that, will yeah. play a, a diva here. Um, the diva's probably expecting like a Winston on the other side. Uh, that would kind of be my uh kind of breed on this here but toronto looks like they yeah so it'll be someone playing the zarya so they've kind of like have really terms in, in terms of tanks like we're counter picking like crazy let's go for a quick toronto we're listening see what they're saying this uh upcoming attack i'm ready walking i'm already walking ready yeah, Diva, Diva, yeah? Okay, okay? Yeah, ready, ready, ready. Hey, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold no, I died. Oh, <laughs> oh I died. <laughs> oh. oh, poor uh, RuPaul. <laughs> look, they, they game plan that perfectly, knowing potentially like a D.Va on the other side, right? You run the Zarya, like we've seen Luminosity run the Zarya. I know not to the same, you know, uh, success all the time. We've seen them run it. Uh, I know I have some success uh, I know at moments, but that time I really like the way that they pushed in, took control of that top cafe right away and put so much pressure on Timeless. Someone taking a lot of damage there. It's go time, it's go time for Sanjit. Oh, someone's out. They're all pretty low though. High noon for Merits. Where's he at? Just making sure no one pushes around that corner. Oh, he's wearing the classic Mayhem skin too. The uh... <laughs> God, I love that skin. You look a, a little. McDonald's one. Yeah, you look a little uh, garish, but I think that's all, all the more funny. The Magnate also working out super well for them on their offense there, Matt, as well. They managed to take out Rocket after he got hindered by that nade. Rush on the high ground as Rocket and Co are pushing on forward. Hello, not getting too much of a distance here, but Toronto are happy with that trade. They just back off for uh, no deaths and CJ using his rush. Yeah, and, uh, no, Toronto will come back with like rush beat of their own. I wonder how long they stick on the Cassidy or how long they want to play the Cassidy for. It was some really good sight lines for the Sojourn up on that high ground. Suzu used here to just kind of keep someone up as uh, maybe you're trying to force sound barrier around here. Could be huge, but you lose sugar free yet again. So yeah. it's the power of the Sojourn. Lenny down, Sunjun with a swift rail gun. Someone also 1 HP, just managed to get away. Yeah, it's real rough. Not much you can do about that against a cracked Sojourn, so all good. Reset, go again. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, uh, Look, you, you can, this is a pretty difficult point to take, right? Uh, you know, how many times do you know, reset go again before you may want to swap as uh, Merit's nice shots there. Almost actually takes off a soldier oh, in range. He doesn't oh, miss. Oh, Bro does not miss with the, with the cast, with the soldier, with uh, whatever he chooses to pick up. Yeah. Sound barrier for open a mat. Like and they were disengaged already. Yeah. They got no beat, bro. It, well, it's, 
it's the Kitsune Rush that comes through here uh, from RuPaul, but it's also just the damage that Mira puts down before then. That kind of like has Timeless uh, maybe panic a little bit. Deadeye here on the high ground. Oh, almost not open her into it, but it's going to be someone finishing it off. Yeah. Didn't have to get the full skull there. Just had to wait around and uh, wait for someone to finish that kill. Oh, Riker doesn't even get to the mega health pack. I mean, this is Toronto to find on a new level currently. Sonjun's going to have to go nuclear right now. Pulse on the floor. Should have enough damage, but Sonjun takes two clean out with him. Merit's in trouble as well. A little 180. Almost a 360. Almost gets the kill, but Rocket's there to save the day. Sonjun and Rocket holding the fort. I mean, they, they are fortunate uh, those players pick up those kills because that is looking like potentially Toronto taking that second checkpoint as uh, Timeless. They'll have Riker go over to D.Va here. So D.Va actually, uh, no, not exactly a Winston counter, so to speak, right? But uh, D.Va, you know, duels pretty well with Winston, right? Can blow up the bubble pretty fast, you know, do a decent amount of damage and then also chase. And it's going to have Merit here go over to the Sojourn. This is a good move here. Kiriko's, one of them's got the rush, and that'd be CJ. It's gonna be pretty easy to lay it down on this uh, payload, but the problem is Toronto Defiant not playing anywhere near it. Happy to just kind of take high ground, maybe try and flip the map. Vega falls, Rocket's gonna fall after him, so it's a one-for-one -one trade. Now the Sojourn's in trouble. Gotta help Merit right now. Everything invested from RuPaul there to keep the Sojourn alive. Merit is still alive and kicking and gets the D-Meg. No baby diva kill, not today. Merit is pretty low and still somehow surviving in this small corridor. Dude's 30 HP, man, and he's still up, but he's still killing. Like, how is this even possible? Toronto to fight yeah. is still head and shoulders above Timus right now in terms of the man advantage, but Timus have the spawns, and with a minute to go, Timus aren't out of this just yet. No, they'll have a self-destruct to kind of like keep this one going for a while. And then they'll also have a bead. Is Rocket with a false bomb needs to come through with a big one. That's going to be a Suzu. I know. Oh, false bomb. Gone. Why? All good, though, because Rocket's already down. There's the self-destruct. Vega on the point. Dodge is out of the way. Sonjun, you got a railgun to contend with now. And he slides straight back to the spawn as Merit once again comes alive with that overclock. Two minutes on the clock as Toronto Defiant unlock the point. And it's time for them to push to third. And it's not a great sound barrier there from opener. It doesn't really connect with uh, you know, anybody of impact as you had already lost Rocket. Riker using the self-destruct ends up getting taken out before you can re-mech. So uh, that beat kind of goes for nothing there. Opener, surely he doesn't uh, Opener oh. gets quite low. Yeah, he's going he's gonna to die. So that's a pretty bad start here now for Timeless. Oh, it's Lenny time off on the high ground. Any kills here is just a bonus. Sunjin dead. I mean, you're getting past the main gates here, Matt, which is where a lot of teams have been held today and uh, previously in the tournament. So you're feeling pretty good about yourselves nearing this final, final box of victory. Someone goes into the back line. I mean, they, they're going to be able to live so long Good in play. the timeless back line. You think, oh, that's a, a huge kill. Uh, sound barrier doesn't connect with Oh, they don't with touch, though. Someone... They, oh, just don't they, touch don't, they, the, don't they just there. don't touch, though, so oh. they don't touch. Any touches? No touches, though. That's, uh, wow, that is rough. I mean, to be fair to Toronto there, someone was using Primal Rage in the door, but Riker was trying to get onto the back line and kind of deal with that, right? But, yeah, that's, uh, that's just rough from yeah, time. I mean, someone... Someone is trying to like pummel players away, right? With primal, they have beat, so it looks like they kind of like scatter timeless. And maybe Riker, I mean, you no, know, obviously not in their comps, but like maybe the, the call is for Riker to touch and like thinks he can back up a little bit, maybe towards it. Somebody got booped or displaced. Um, quite unfortunate there because timeless actually gets that first pick, you know, Rocket. Uh, I'm in a little bit of a rough one here, you know, it seems like they're. You know, focusing him pretty hard, and uh, they're able to pick up some kills on him. But he gets Merit at the start, uh, yeah, right, and just not able to capitalize. That kill on Merit was really clean too. Managed to whip around the corner, filling full of lead. Toronto finished with time, not over a minute though. So you know, all good for timeless in that respect. 54 seconds in the time bank, but. This defense is something to behold with the Winston too. It's, um, I'm surprised we're not seeing a little bit of someone Sigma, but the, the pace that they're playing at, it, it feels a little bit too quick for Timeless at times. So up to Timeless, you know, Rocket or Sunjun, especially um, on that second point to come up 
clutch with a with a railgun or just the overclock. And so Toronto, I feel like they're in seventh gear. Toronto so currently in sixth. Need to kind of catch up to the pacing Toronto is setting right now. Let's go for a time. This quick listening. See how their attack ends up going. I can't have speed for Atlas a little bit. Yeah. I'm gonna go. No, I can have you. Okay. Ready? Go in. Go in. Switch, 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 switch. Yeah, MP, MP. I'm on Jordan. Bottom man. Jordan half. Jordan one. Yes. Thanks for coming. I think I could go three. Yeah, with you, with you. One. Three, one, three, one, three, one, three, one, three, one. Three, one. Mookie, Mookie. Wait. This one. This one. Oh. Maybe trade. Okay, Mookie half. Mookie half. Point. Shit. Let's on to Vega there as they try and push the advantage. Vega a little bit too behind the rest of his team trying to get out someone who was kind of tussling in the front line. One tick for Timeless now. Toronto are going to be able to make a re-engagement. Vega coming back in just a moment. In fact, there he is. Full five for Toronto. They push onto the point. Primal Rage nearing for someone as well as Cafe Control is the imperative. Someone super low. Railgun shot onto Sunjun who slides away, away from Merit now. As the fight begins to slow down just a little bit, but uh, Rocket actually just goes down to a disruptor shot. High ground control, very much in favor of Toronto to fire him right now. Riker takes RuPaul with him, but the Katsune rush, a parting gift from RuPaul, it helps them win the fight. Yeah, as uh, I, I think you can see how Toronto, like with obviously their pace of play, but I, I think they just have like you know a, a lot of experience on this roster of like these types of situations. Like, oh, we're down a player. Like, you know, we don't have to really kind of like panic engage. We can kind of play around someone. And this Winston oh, yeah. is it's oh, going to yeah. be the Kitsune rush, but primal inside of it. It's not looking good right now for Timeless. It's not good primal rage there though from Riker. Survives that pulse. One refreshes that health bar. But here comes the sound barrier from Toronto Defiant. Sugarfree was so low too. Desperately needed healing. And he got over shields and uh, over health, sorry, and all the more for it. Manages to stay alive. Someone comes back and Toronto to fight, holding firm. I mean, uh, look, for a lot of people who didn't, you know, tune in maybe last year, right? You know, Merit, someone in RuPaul, like a crazy combination for the Florida Mayhem, right? Yeah, pretty, like, cra pretty crazy. Won the, entire, won the whole thing. <laughs> won the entire thing, right? So you're playing against a team that has, you know, with just those three players. I mean, this is just silly. What? Uh, they have so much like synergy playing with each other for so long uh it, it, that now i mean look you throw the sugar free in the mix and then vega right uh it, it, very difficult to deal with rocket actually gets one here uh maybe you can make something out of this pulse bomb and it doesn't connect and it, it just feels like the pace is like a little bit frantic right like it yes. just feels like a little bit all over the place at the moment which uh i think look if you're gonna play like at this hyper fast speed you're gonna take the players who have done it with each other for a very long time oh someone tries to get out of there and get out of there he does such so a trying to land a, a railgun shot there's a couple into someone, but there was no like immediate kill. Now Sunjin's in onto the high ground, receives a sand barrier and tries to square up against RuPaul. TP's through the wall to help someone, but Rocket's already claimed two of the Toronto Defiants. And there we go. Timeless. Managed to stamp their way to victory. They've got the payload, but how far can they get it? Two minutes and 50 seconds to go. Every scrappy uh, first uh, first point there, Matt. Stage two opens. They're going to need a really fast push through the second phase of the say, map, right? I was going to say, and especially with Toronto dying so, uh, like, in sync with each other, they're going to be able to get high ground. Yeah, I mean, Toronto, right? Uh, if you're in their comms or, like, if you're thinking, you know, from their point of view, right? Uh, you know, you win two team fights here with the amount of time on the clock. You're looking at a hold here, or you're looking at like basically having a better, you know, everything goes horrible after two fights. Uh, you're still gonna have a better time uh, in terms of time bank. So really own in focus on these next two fights. Someone dives in. Oh my God, CJ did not see that one coming. Merit just sometimes, it appears out of nowhere. Nice dodge of the pulse bomb too. Oh, Rocket goes down to his own pulse, adding insult to injury. We'll call that a fast reset because you knew you were gonna lose the fight, Rocket. No worries, pal. All right, Toronto now 
it's a problem dealing with Merit. Because someone also is able to just engage with this bubble. Every time Riker steps up, Matt, he gets uh, someone shooting at him. Sugar Free Merit, everybody's shooting at him, right? And then he has to use this bubble, not on like an engagement, but just for uh, defense. Sound barrier, continue rush. Okay, maybe over eager there for Toronto to find, but sending a message is sometimes uh, more important. I mean, every fight is kicked off, it feels like, on the Toronto Defiance terms uh, at this moment, where Sugar Free oh, deep Unlucky. in the back line. Uh, yeah, now not going to be able to get out from there. I mean, uh, Rocket over chasing him down as someone goes in yet again. See what I mean? The pacing, the pacing yeah. from the Toronto Defiant is well, just outmatching timeless right now. And you also notice that, like, someone will drop his bubble and Merritt is able to just, like, slide on into it and just play safely, like, basically in the mix. There's a sound barrier. Merritt's waiting for them to come to him so he can just exchange places. Goes Mad Hatter on. As Merritt is getting booped around by the Winston, eventually taken down, but not after a sound barrier and a Kitsune Rush used. However, time is still three ults in the bank, and with a late kill onto Vega, they're in good stead to push this payload to the second point. Yeah, and I think this is kind of like Toronto, right? You just force some of these ultimates out of Timeless, and then you really just have this one last fight. Uh, you, you win this, obviously you take map number two, you lose, you're still going to be in a spot where you have a better timing. It is go time for Sunjun now. He's trying to match Merit. It's Riker that steals that kill away, but you'll take that any day of the week. Getting Merit out of the equation is good for Timeless's success percentage. It's going up. Rocket down though, not the best. Timeless still have this primal rage. If primal. they need to use it, he's 66 HP. He's gonna have to pop it soon. As Toronto Defiant are pushing them to the very brink. Overtime is in session now. As Toronto have control of the point. No more C9s for Timeless, please. But with CJ going down, it's gonna be hard to stick to the point where it's out receiving an infinite amount of damage. Riker retreats to the high ground there as someone chases him up, and Sugar Free 2 was lying in wait. Toronto Defiant halts the payload just before that second point and shut out Timeless. A 2-0 lead now for Toronto. Yeah, as uh, Riker actually in Primal had uh, you know, the, the opposing Lucio uh, Vega really low, but yeah, I couldn't chase because uh, you know they needed somebody to actually end up kind of contest there in OT. So uh, Vega makes it out with his life, comes back around the corner, you know, a little amp healed, then as a beat drops at the end, but it's uh, really not even necessary as uh, Toronto pretty much cruised through Hollywood. Look, Toronto cap two with time, so maybe it would have uh, been a different story if they didn't, you know, maybe they stayed on the payload for a little bit, but timeless are down here, but they're not out just yet. Of course, it was quite a backwards and forwards series when they first met each other up in the uh, upper yeah. bracket, but we're going into the third map, Matt. Match point almost there for Toronto Defiant, but they're just playing at a different level right now. They, they very much, I don't want to say like warmed up throughout the bracket. I guess that's kind of a thing, but it just feels like they've nah. unlocked a new level of play right now. I mean, having world champions also kind of helps. Let's listening though to the winning comms of that final round there from Toronto. Hello. Hi, yeah. uh, Toronto. We have spawn advantage. just another game in the books for Toronto Defiant. They're looking clean, Matt. Like, uh, nothing's going to shake them at this point, I feel. I mean, it, yeah, it would be, uh, you know, with the way they've been playing, you know, for them to kind of get, uh, you know, razzled and, you know, just a little bit stunned, it feels like uh, it'd be very difficult to do. I think it really kind of starts with someone being able to play all these tanks at a high level like it feels like they never can get counterpicked in terms of like the tank right uh and then if they're willing to you know mirror like winston or you know play something like that it, it feels like that is like you know a spot where toronto is totally fine ending up in yeah and having someone so versatile on your team like you mentioned means you don't have to uh, sub them out 
time in, time again, right? I mean, Thomas have been using their subs to very great effect, but if you could just got an all-rounder like someone, you don't really need to worry about kind of splitting time between scrims and like different maps and whatnot. So, yeah, I mean, it, it was going to be a tough match for sure. Thomas put up a, a ridiculous fight, very much the underdogs coming into this match, but it was a lot closer than I think a lot of people had on paper. Well, apparently not. The chat was uh, loving Toronto to find in, uh, in the Preds at the very least. <laughs> Yeah, and I think if you're timeless, I think there's probably like a discussion of like, okay, what do we want to do the rest of the series? Like, are we looking at kind of playing this same exact play style to be Chopper coming in here uh, for Sunjun? Uh, no change in terms of tank, but uh, do you want to keep trying to go with like Orisa Winston kind of base stuff? It feels like that's like one Bucky you kind of fall into right. or, you know, the other options, right? You know, you're trying to play uh notes sigma you're trying to play ramatra they'll keep a uh, riker in here uh no potentially to play some more of the dive with a risa in the mix yeah esperanza the last time they did face it was a toronto defiant win on uh, esperanza and then new junk city went the way of timeless after that so we'll see how they fare on both these matches. yeah about a new queen stream uh, for, for Timeless as uh, Toronto go into this one. Uh, choose this one, sorry. Esperanza. I, I really like Esperanza, and I think the, one of the big reasons why it's one of the better push maps is because of the variety of comps that you can play. Um, you, you can play the Malga, play the Ram, you, you know, Ryan, if you really want, if you want to be crazy about it. But you can play the Doomfist, which we've seen actually a lot of uh, coming from teams like Toronto Defiant, who've played the Doomfist here before. So maybe that's what they're going to end up rolling out with here. And if you're Timeless, knowing that you've played against them on this map. I mean, having the same map set definitely helps in terms of like scouting, right? Uh, maybe yeah. you come out with the Orisa straight out the gate to try and shut someone down. Yeah, I think that's probably the answer here, right? Play the Orisa base composition, see if Toronto goes into the mirror and take your chances with it, right? I think that's probably Timeless's like best path to get back into the series uh, and really, you know, even from their own words, like kind of like got one of them you know, back on track throughout this event, right? I think if you're going to try and, uh, you know, mirror or match or try and, you know, counter, uh, you know, what Toronto is going to do, I feel like Toronto is going to be always at the, you know, the, the forefront of what's going to happen there. Yeah, I mean, he's hovering the doom. I think it's going to be it. TP out, quick swap from Sugar Free over to the Tracer. And it'll be all said and done. But yeah, Timeless running the cast, very much predicting that uh, someone's going to be on the Doomfist. But we've seen how the cast rolls out before. I mean, Chopper is a ridiculous sojourn, but the Cassidy, very susceptible to these dives, regardless of that Magnate. It, it's still kind of weak when you have every single member of Toronto diving in on you. Yeah, I, I've liked when they've had the sojourn in the mix. Like, uh... Uh, obviously, you know, a little bit harder to keep alive than the Cassidy uh, at times, but uh, I just think both, uh, you know, Chopper and Sunjun have been so good on the hero. Like, uh, we, even kind of uh, at times going toe to toe with Merit, who uh, we all love. Uh, so I, I, I think uh, obviously Cassidy has uh, knows some spots and some moments, but. Uh, I, I still favor the Sojourn, I think, most of the time. Yeah, I feel definitely feel the same way. It feels like they're just trying to counter comp right now, just counter someone to the highest degree. Well, Sugar Free's had a really good Ooh. series, right? Uh, I know okay. in, in, in uh, right there, as Sugar Free goes to the back line, picks up the kill on Rocket. Like, maybe it's kind of more to have to try and, you know, keep this Tracer in check a little bit. Yeah, a lot of that, whew, a lot of that was a disruptor shot as well from Merit. He just put it down and Rocket was like kind of walking through it, like, oh, please save me, please heal me. And then uh, guess who's in your back line? Well, it's Sugar Free. Here's the push bot. It's going to take that small little lead there, and now they can just hold high ground, just wait for Times to roll out of the spawn. And they're going to play Zarya. So this is like the composition we saw Luminosity play, right? Uh, where they played like, uh, you know, Dante uh, on the Zarya. Uh, I believe it was Vision on the Cassidy. So like, uh, this is a, a different look from Timeless. Uh, definitely one where you're going to have a, a little bit more protection for that Cassidy with a bubble. Also allows Rocket to stay in the back line a little bit longer. Yeah, just uh, saving Private Chopper. I think that's going to be the name here. Just uh, as soon as he gets descended upon, quick bubble. And then hopefully he can click a couple of heads or even throw out that magnate. Pretty frustrating to deal with. But, well, Mary's got Railgun, Matt. And they have Rush too. That is a very quick fight. That Rush just 
It's just too much, man. There's just no way. They kill Vega, but whatever. This is Lucio. He'll get back in time. Yeah, they get just backed into a corner, right? And uh, you get back to that really uh, short corner up there on the high ground. Kitsune Rush, Doomfist flying in. Uh, I know Tracer from one side, Sojourn, Disruptor Shot, and all the damage from the other. I mean, no way you're living through that. It's a uh, marital charger rail shot back up here to the high ground. Oh, there's the checkpoint as well. All right, they're gonna have a, a decent angle here, and they're gonna have a decent line of uh, line of sight onto the bot. Although Toronto Defiant is just backing up at this point, they don't really need to press the issue. Although Mary definitely wants to. They're just looking at the Zarya. Oh, no bubbles, no problem. Or oh, Mary gives a little 360 there, making sure he doesn't get picked out of the sky by the uh, Cassidy Ultimate. Uh oh, Chopper it is in a little bit of trouble. Yep. Like milk and butter churn, he is done, so bro. Just turn into a different substance, substance entirely. Timeless, they lose this checkpoint, Matt, and Toronto Defiant is just running away with this game. Yeah, it's, uh, this one, you know, kind of going like a lot of the rest of the series there is that you, you get that mag grenade onto the Doom and it doesn't matter, right? You just power blocks, just, you know, it turns into a, you know, a new punch and just it keeps on moving. And as, uh, Timeless, the benefit for them will be double support alt here. You're probably trying to build this up for, uh, you know, RuPaul here. Coming up. As, uh, you, yeah, you don't have to play down here if you're in Toronto, right? You can kind of play up on this high ground. You know, let them try and come into you, you with this uh, Zarya. Yeah, rotations, rotations, rotations. Oh, you go high ground to force us off. Oh, we'll take the low and take the bot. How about them apples? Oh, there's the this rush. This RuPaul to build up a rush. Oh, Sugar Free's down. Sound Barrier comes out a little bit too late there from Vega to save Sugar Free, but they can still uh, attempt to fight this. As, yeah, RuPaul does have that rush. It's whether they actually want to or not. They end up backing off, and Timers are going to be able to pinch them if they choose to go through that Mega Health Pack room, but it doesn't look like it. It looks like they're going to go all the long way around and maybe retake control of their own high ground, and yeah, that's exactly what they've done. Yeah, no need to play a little bit risky here if you're the Defiant, right? I know, oh, take good the safe route, rotating away. Very good grab, just catching someone on the rotate there. RuPaul did have Suzu, but oh, you RuPaul. know, Suzu to grab. He's, and he uses, he uses Rush too. He was like, I got this. Uh, why, do, why do you <laughs> stuck in the grab? Ends up using his Rush, so... Uh, pretty, pretty fortunate there for Timeless, is someone now will go over to Winston here, so... Uh, doesn't want to kind of continue to play that Doomfist into this uh, Cassidy uh, plus Zarya setup. Just, uh, you know, really difficult to just kind of like you know, mow through both those characters where the, the Winston offers a little bit more flexibility. He's just vibing on the high ground right now. Got to find a way to deal with a Riker though. Riker's pretty low and actually it's open to using the sound barrier to try and keep Riker up. Riker was pretty high energy as well, to be fair, as someone retreats back to the rest of his team to get topped off as well. But now they don't really need to worry about it, and Merrick can just get a free overclock here, potentially. This ends now. Oh, speaking of which, <laughs> speaking of, is, okay, is Sugar Free just going to run away with these kills? Maybe, maybe not. Rocket gets a <laughs> pulse bomb onto Vega. Mary's trying to find a head to click on, but time is just way too scared of it, and rightfully so. Here comes the rush from CJ, trying to find a split up at this point as they were trying to go very deep and get Merit some damage and get some kills in. So maybe they're going to have to escort Merit out. He's on the high ground and Timeless closing in on that checkpoint map. Yeah, I think Toronto though just wants to deny checkpoint. I think that's what they're focused on in the moment. And uh, yeah, he jumped in that small room, disruptor shots and Winston cleave damage on everybody. Now we get the bot going the opposite way. So even with Timeless winning like, you know, two fights in a row there, uh, not able to result in a take of the checkpoint. And uh, now you're in a scary situation because uh, I mean, look at this. Timeless will come back in with a dead eye here. Uh, but the support ultimates is so heavily in favor of the Toronto Defiant. Uh, you, you can use both of these and maybe even get to like 100 meters or so, get close to a completion. Don't worry though, we got Dead Eye. Worst ult in the game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't worry, guys. Well, there's the rush. Chopper's in trouble and he's in desperate need of some help. Unfortunately, he does end up going down, but not after throwing a magnate out and killing someone. But, I mean, Merit. I mean, just try and come at the king. Luckily, though, actually, Rocket's there to dethrone him for at least for a brief moment in time. Time is just kind of ripping and roaring in that small corridor. That was a lucky kill. Well, maybe lucky. 
uh, kill with the with a magnate onto someone. If someone doesn't go down there, Matt, that is a very different fight. Oh, yeah, with without a doubt, right? Uh, no, if you don't lose that uh, tank, you're in a great position. This, this will be the checkpoint here for Timeless. Is, uh, they are definitely not out of this, uh, Jack, uh, just no, yet as not. what? They're down about 20-something meters, right? Uh, they're going to have basically all five ultimates to work with. Uh, so if there was ever a time for Timeless to come online, right? Uh, I mean, you find yourself down 0-2, half the clutch up here. Five ultimates in Timeless' bank right now, pretty much. Let's go for a listening real quick. I'm with you, I'm with you. This is... Shoot, try, shoot, try, shoot, try, shoot, try. Kick your own point, kick your own point. Kick your own point. Kick your own point. Oh, okay, okay. Let me do it, let me do it, let me do it. Let's be it. Let me do it, let me do it, let me do it. Mucky, 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 mucky. So much dead, baby. Nice, nice, nice. I'm living. I'm getting out of here. 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 Five ultimates invested into that fight, but they've gained the lead. Timeless and not out of this just yet. Trying to define. Gonna have to be wary though. Casti in the back lines with the Lucio or the Magnate. Oh, it found its way to the monkey. Don't worry. Auto aiming. All good. Someone still gets out, but a hinder not lasting all too long. Yeah, they long. have the Suzu. He has the Suzu bubble and jump though, right? So uh, they kind of have to like back up just a second. A few huge, huge uh, you know, key abilities used there by the Defiant. She's open as a death, which sometimes with these wall rides does end up going down to a headshot of Vega. But Merrick getting a little bit too ambitious with his push. That pulse bomb from Rocket to another star player for Timeless, really coming up with the, with the kills and just uh, the whole package, really, in terms of DPS, uh, Chopper and Rocket, doing a lot in that fight. Being able to force all those cooldowns, yeah, with just that one mag name, Matt, really helped them uh, stay in that fight for at least a little bit longer. They've gained the lead, uh, 79 meters to 92 now, with 40 seconds to go. Yeah, it's massive, right? Gaining the lead is, uh, you know, the other day we saw Luminasi run this comp with that Zarya. It was, uh, it, they, they, they were not able to really make it work, like, consistently. There were moments that where you're like, okay, this is this is pretty nice. And now, see Timeless running it and, uh, you know, really showing why even Luminosity probably went towards that, as it can be pretty strong in certain situations. It's, Everybody is so you put, low. Low, that's going to be Suzu oh, and Rush. The Suzu didn't hit Riker. That's bad. That's real bad. Sugar Free, a force to recall though. <laughs> Goes through the rush of time. It's a pretty risky maneuver, but he makes it work. 4v5 now, high noon on the high ground. So Disrupt early, a though. shot and he's stuck. Gets taken out of it. Overtime is here. Toronto Defiant trying to find tr uh, pickoffs. If they manage to get any late staggers, it's going to be disaster for time as the lead isn't that much. Yeah, Timeless takes the fight so early, though, that it gives them an opportunity here towards the end. But look at how aggressive Toronto's going. They don't want to give them another opportunity. Nice little hinder nade there onto Mary, but it isn't going to hinder this damage. Primal Rage takes care of Riker. There's the stick. Oh, it did a little bit of team damage there, but it does not matter. The veteran presence from Toronto to find wins it out. Map point now for Toronto. A 3-0 lead in the series. Looking like a timeless game at the very end there. Able to get the checkpoint, got the lead, and in the end of it all, Toronto defiant. Just the grit coming through, and they end up taking it, and 3-0. We're looking at maybe a 4-0 here, Matt. A lot, uh, a lot more one side than the EU was. Yeah, that, that's a brutal one to lose as well. Uh, it's almost easier being really far off uh, and kind of bouncing back and being like, hey, we weren't in that one. Like they battled back into that map so, so hard and then to kind of just lose it all at the end. Uh, that's really difficult, especially now being down 0-3. Uh, you know, you win that map. Hey, like we're right back in it, right? New Junk City coming up. Like, you know, we, we, we know we can play pretty well there. Uh, you know, the vibes are starting to be a little bit better, but to lose that map in the fashion they did, uh, yeah. uh, that's a, a really tough loss there for Timeless. It's a really tough loss on the on the mental for sure. A three and O lead for Toronto Defiant right now, determined to not lose a single map after they lost two times previously. I mean, right now, uh, and you're expecting this team to do extremely well. You're expecting this team to be the top of North America just on name value alone. 
It'd be crazy to think that they, you know, they go through the upper bracket, Matt, they're losing maps, and then they come to the finals and they lose zero. Like, <laughs> it's like they were just holding out on us. Uh, yeah, a little bit. Uh, I also think that now there's been a little bit more time for, uh, you know, this meta, not really to get kind of figured out, but like for teams to have a great understanding of like, okay, if they do this, this is what we're going to go for. And this is what we're going to try and do uh, where Toronto have all the pieces in place to, you know, just come up with some tremendous plays. So uh, stats after that map, you know, look, uh, you, you lose maps in Overwatch, your stats are always going to look pretty poor. So uh, nothing to That's really nice. gleam too much uh, from this. Uh, you know, uh, pr pr pretty big, you know, damage disparity there, right? 6k. Yeah. Uh, no know sure. in favor of uh, the Defiant, but you no know, Timeless on the other side, right? 3k in healing. So, you know, everything kind of just gets evened out eventually. Uh, it's really just, uh, man, the way Timeless, you know, you fight back and then you lose in the end. That is, uh, you no know, differ difficult to get the mental back on track. Yeah, I mean, Toronto, they do seem cool, calm, and collected every time we jump to a listening. Let's have a little listening to the final few moments of that last map there. Oh, okay, we're not turn, push, 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 everything. Turn, 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 turn. I have point, I have point, Lenny, I have point. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. Throw me. Can we take it out? I don't want to see you, careful, careful. Shit, 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 shit. Do it, 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 do it. We can't do it, we can't do it. Hey, 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 Sorry, 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 Small roster update though from Timeless. Still willing to sub people in and out. I see back in Riker to the bench. Uh, yeah, it, it feels like if you were gonna start mounting the comeback, it would have, you know, hey, clutch up there on Esperanza, right? Everybody starts feeling a little bit better. You come in here to Flashpoint, boom, we have a tie game, right? Uh, that kind of feels like where it would have turned, right? Uh, now I think it's going to be really difficult for Timeless to battle all the way back. It's going to be tough. I mean, the the, the veteran mindset too, and, and being at the top of the game in the Overwatch League for so long, like that's really what does separate a lot of these teams. And eventually that will kind of come to pass and like everybody's going to kind of be there. But coming off of a winning year from uh, three players on Toronto Defiant squad, you're feeling, you're feeling like you're on top of the world and you're unstoppable. You were almost stopped, to be fair, in the upper bracket. But uh, right here, right now, and like you mentioned, Matt, the, the meta and everything over the last few days, it's solidified a little bit more. And with this series, it's kind of proven that you know, veteran presence does end up winning out sometimes. New Junk City with Icy in. What do you expect from that? Uh, I mean, I think you're just kind of looking for answers at this point, right? Um, you know, they try Azaria there. It doesn't exactly work. Uh, maybe this is to kind of go back to like Ramatra type of play. Uh, I know okay. potentially you can play the Ramatra here. So uh, that that's a possibility. Uh, it, it just feels like whatever they kind of throw at the Defiant though, right? The Defiant, uh, no, obviously you don't have to change their roster and just kind of come out uh, and make the swaps. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see. We load it in just a moment. This could be the final map here for North America. This main event, stage number one. New Junk City picked by Timeless 2. So you're expecting them to come in with a, with a game plan kind of formulated as we rock up. Dorado would be kind of a fun one to go to. I feel like we haven't seen Dorado in forever. My God, when was the last time we saw Dorado? My word. Yeah, it feels like it's uh, Eternity. been a bit. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, you kind of like look through I, I think even if Timeless loses here, right? Like 0-4 after how close they kept that series the last time. Obviously, uh, you know, not ideal, but uh, you know, still, you know, battle through some, you know, M80 Luminosity, like some really tremendous teams in, you know, NA uh, to be able to get here for this moment. So I see at least at the start, looks like to be hovering over 
the Orisa pick. Uh, probably won't see the Brig because you need Lucio on Flashpoint. Um, or else you just get less fights, right? Like, mathematically, you just kind of need the Lucio uh, in the mix. Um, Toronto looks to be uh, hovering a Ramatra based comp. So, uh, someone. It's curious what they think that is Timeless is going to come out with, but maybe they think that it's going to be Arisa and they kind of win this being a little bit more aggressive on the ramp. Yeah, we'll see how they want to take these fights too. Of course, the ram, as soon as they've used Nemesis form, they're a little bit more vulnerable to kind of people pushing into them. Uh-oh. Well, <laughs> Matt, I, I will tell you one thing, sir. That is not a good start. How neat is that? Uh, no, I mean, you, you, you kind of keep Merit with the, the rest of the gang, run him around is, uh... And he, he makes the railgun shots like you know look look like connecting them so easy is uh you know, break all uh, break all the rails doesn't want to have you know one of those uh, railings interrupted you know, his flow as he's dominating yeah i would say he's dominating yeah i think that's a uh, that's putting it lightly i think i like how far uh you can play up on this map too if you really want to make it hurt you can really just play in this small corridor but playing against the Arisa it's a little bit more difficult so it will be toronto to find just hanging back near the point just looking for this rotation wow icy has used every cooldown yeah and someone knows it too the Arisa are extremely vulnerable spear spin no fortify even the back line taking shots right now i mean with this railgun primed and the punches just flung through the whole of timeless it's so rough Merit taking yet another two kills. And this is a, this is a point. This is a point winner right here. Oh, goes down to Chopper. All right, Sugar Free. <laughs> Waving goodbye to his teammate. Yeah, it, it it feels like shooting at someone is just like a big bait, right? I uh, you know uh, earlier with the MEA, right? Uh, you know, KSA was talking about it, where like, hey, he just power blocks and just, you know, let Quartz and Yubi just kill everybody, right? Like where uh, it kind of gets scary on the Ramatra so close, he's like, you know, nearing your back line, like you know, maybe start putting down some damage, but really he's just kind of taking up that space. All right, Kitsune Rush trying to shift the point and Toronto to find more than happy with that. Hey, use your rush. We got uh, five O's pretty much ready to, ro ready to rock and roll. There's the rush from RuPaul. I mean, Rocket trying to get in, but what can he really do? I mean, Merritt's going to charge this railgun up at lightning speed. It is Rocket to touch, but Merritt's just going to chase him. Almost hits him with it. That was a cheeky pulse bomb there from Rocket, but it didn't matter in the end. Just turning tail and running. Everybody looking at Merritt, and you should do, but you still got to be scared of Sugar Free on the Tracer. First point for Toronto to find. Yeah, it's uh, Sugar Free. We talk a lot about Merit, but Sugar Free's actually had a really good game, right? Considering how good Rocket's been on the Tracer. Uh, I know Sugar Free, we obviously been waiting for, you know, his presence before, you know, the last you know, few years in the pro scene for a very long time. And then when he uh, comes in, just plays lights out and bringing that over to the Defiant as someone will actually play the Sigma here. So changing from the, the first point, I know was playing the Ram, uh, now looks like a little bit more of a defensive setup, right? You can play a little bit more at range poke here, uh, forcing Timeless to be the aggressor. Just break it down. Rocket didn't receive that sound barrier, sadly. Sugar Free did, luckily. Merit in the front line still got that slide. Oh, <laughs> slides away. Plus one for style points there as he snipes Chopper on the exit. Matt, mate, this is a, a blowout right now. Yeah, I mean, this is just a Toronto Defiant masterclass. Like, uh, it feels like someone uh, just can, hey, I'm going to go back to the spawn and just play a different tank, right? Just yeah, kind of right. constantly just juggling through the roster of tanks. Is uh, Icy will play the Ram, uh, so they, they play sigma you don't want to get uh you know you can kind of like do a little bit of long range damage as a ramatra and then you know uh be a little bit more effective in the close range as a ramatra than sigma uh so that's kind of the answer there but look someone if he falls right you're just gonna see them go back to the spawn and just counter pick it funny we see the counter pick of tanks uh and all the other players stay exactly the same Ooh. no need to change anything else to make these comps work my god sugar free start rocket there luckily cj was quick to throw down a suzu just the cleansing milk. Oh, nice eat as well by uh, someone. You step up, you get the pulse in, and then you die. You get shot, you die. Timeless, end up capping the points, but at what cost? Toronto Defiant can still fight this, especially now Chopper's dead. 
I mean, you just gotta clear I mean, off alive, Icy. Right? Yeah, as, soon, as long as Merit's alive, you can do anything. And that's a promise. Rail got available to him as well. Uh, what are you trying to do, Icy? You're trying to get close to Merit? I mean, he's got a, a million and one people to kind of back him up. Nice little angle, too. Hits Icy in the head, which is the single rail gun. Here's the sound barrier. Backs off to the rest of his team. And a rail gun for a sound barrier. Not too bad of a trade for timers, but they still lose rockets. It's like a headshot on a tracer there. I mean, it's so difficult. Uh, at that angle, and he's able to pick up the kill onto Rocket. Is uh, no, it, it's uh, if I showed you this match right now and then told you the other day that they played a series, it went all you know, went to five, you, you'd be hard pressed to oh. believe me. I mean, with the way it's looked, Jesus, Jesus, just leave him be, man, leave him be. Chopper gets chased all the way back, and uh, that's a recall and a death for both EPS, the timeless. Oh. It is funny watching the Lucio ragdoll at high speed, I will say. One of my favorite things in Overwatch. Looks really funny. 30 seconds now into the next so point. Now Toronto, locks. I mean, they're on that point. One point, point away. And they win. GG. Yeah. yeah I mean, uh, they're, they're going to have the double support alt with the Gravitic Flux in the mix. Uh, no way on the side of Timeless to like interrupt that, right? Also, Timeless, no sound barrier to kind of live through that. So this, uh, this Sigma ult could be huge. get their first touch as well, Matt. So as Timeless once again, like attacking into them. And attacking into the Sigma, especially with Flux, is pretty damn hard. Oh, and Chopper's already dead. Like I said, Matt, a different pace that uh, Toronto Defy are playing on right now. Annihilation's decent, though. That sound barrier is going to match Spicy, overstaying his welcome to the nth degree there. Timeless just wiped off the face of the map as Toronto are going to cap. Yes, uh, you know, sometimes, uh, yeah, you know, you look at like that series the other day, uh, you know, and how close it was. Uh, you, you, sometimes it's better, like, if the Defiant don't really know who they're going up against, right? Like, they knew that now that, hey, Timeless is a serious team. Like, we need to ramp it up to 11, which they have today. As uh, looks like Timeless going to go back to the Orisa here to try and go against this comp. Uh, someone still with this flux. Still no sound barrier for Timeless as well. Still waiting for that flux to come out. Oh, that's a good pulse. And there's no Suzu there to back it up, but someone still manages to stay alive. Finally, Merit is down, but not before he can take Rocket with him. It's like, it's like Rocket has a magnet on his head. And Merit is a perma, just making sure he pays. Nice little uh, attack there from Chopper, but I think this might just be it, Matt. 80% and a stomp. Timeless are getting pushed back. It's 90% and counting now. Who touches? Who touches? I mean, it's got to be opener. I mean, but he's not even going to make it. He's down, it. Matt. He is down. I mean, Toronto defiant in an absolute shutout. Some kings were born to rule. Toronto defiant are going to be able to take this series at a 4-0. Timeless crumble before them. And what an absolute blowout. Toronto from level to level. They just keep on getting better. And uh, oh, what a dominant performance there for the Defiant. I think uh, they were also sending a little bit of a mes message, right? I know how good they played against M80 the other day. Uh, wanted to get revenge here against Timeless, where Timeless was probably like thinking like, hey, we can play with these guys. Toronto just swats them out. Like, uh, no, you got a lot of work, a lot more work to do to play with us. As, uh, that is about as clean of a 4-0 as you're gonna see. Yeah, very quick too. Actually, it'd be funny to see the timing on that I mean, versus yeah. the timing of their previous series, because that was definitely quicker in four maps and like, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Insane speed run there from Toronto to find. I mean, they will be crowned your NA champions for the time being here in stage one of the main event. Uh, Danny, Jake, Johnny? Yes. How'd that go for you? How'd that go? <laughs> that, was, yes. that was brutal. I mean, <laughs> that was brutal. I mean, I don't, yeah. they're on a different level. I, I feel Man, like they were in the It's touched by God, I believe. <laughs> now you see. Now you see. You understand. <laughs> Toy he, a, he walks among us. Every, every time Mary gets a kill in, in the green room, Jake's like, Father has returned. <laughs> I mean, he's too oh. good.
And it's it's not just him. That's yeah. what makes it so yeah. scary. I mean, sugar free, someone just I don't, the backline. The backline, well, no mistakes, right? From RuPaul yeah. and Vega, the beats, the Kitsune rushes, always on point, always kiting out when they need to. So many times, Merritt's caught by a pulse bomb, but no, RuPaul's right there. He's I, right behind him. He's I, ready. I don't think we're being disrespectful towards Timeless. No. no. Huge second place for those guys. You That's know, a big, great, big achievement. Great match, but Toronto Defiant. Ew! Like that was disgusting. disgusting. Right, that how, was many, just, how many of oh. these highlights are Merritt just uh. snapping his <laughs> fingers? <laughs> Look at this Merritt frag. It's like, oh, this just, yeah, but what guys, do you do? Yeah. Like, guys, walk just... us through the match because I mean, when we first started the game, you know, uh, Timeless did look pretty good. Oh, I mean, first round all right, there were some moments, right? Like we started that first round, you know, we did a little warm up round. Look at the, oh. the Ajax. Oh. Ajax. Oh, oh. No. What's happening? Oh God, he's in. <laughs> he's in. Someone's oh. on me. I, they they just outpace them, and yeah. you know that that's really like when you're able to play Overwatch at like a perfect level at such a rapid pace. It just looks ridiculous because the enemy team just can't keep up with you. Dude, this like, one I was losing. You're always it. <laughs> like one step behind, it's and it just with this this is the end result of it. Yeah, I, I think that when the Winston mirror came out, we really felt a gap here. Someone is just. He's just an insanely flexible player, and that's what we always talk about. But his Winston, I feel like, is the hero where we yeah. really see him hit the peak of his potential, where his individual skill is really showcased. You know, shout out to Rocket, I think, was going toe-to-toe -to -toe this series, but I talked about it before, like, the last series, it was mostly Merit, Tracer, Sugar Free, Echo, which they're very, very good players on, but there's no doubt that this is an even stronger look. Sugar oh, Free, yeah. Monster Tracer, yeah. and Merit on the core hit scan. That's when I think we really get to see what that guy is made of. And uh, man, it is it is sharpened steel, apparently, because this guy doesn't miss. Like, Rocket was putting up big frags, and then Merit just oh. deletes him oh. over and over and over How do you so again. consistently shoot a Tracer in the head? Like, the Tracer's hitbox is so small, I, I d d just don't understand. His, and of course, player of the so match, good. guys. Yeah, I mean, come, oh, come and, on now. Yeah, no, is no questions asked. This Merit, disgusting. 106 elimination. 106 and 18. Oh, I mean, I haven't seen a finals. This one, was he? Oh, 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 my God. Wait, wait, one more. Oh! <laughs> Jesus Christ. Just enjoy it. Just like, stop. There's no analysis here. Just <laughs> watch him play. Ah! Just watch him. Oh. Watch him I play. Think, I think this highlight of uh, Merit is literally the, it summarizes the whole match. This is yeah. such a good one. Like, you know the other team is like, kill Zorge. Like, he's coming. <laughs> he's here. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> we're just, just like, unbelievable just watching, plays from Merit. And, and the this is all we, I mean, come yeah. on. This, it's such, this is like, I mean, what he did to M80, it looked like this too. But here we just got four straight maps of it instead of three. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I will say as a fan of NA Overwatch, I'm kind of excited for some international lands. Oh, I yeah. want to see what these guys can put together. There was, I mean, yes, they had some earlier in the tournament. There was some, there was some shakiness, right? Like teams brought them close, including Timeless. And yet here, when all the chips are down, you give them a little bit of time to workshop the meta and find their groove. And there's just no contest for them in North this America. This result right here, that performance, that is why they put this roster together. Yeah. That is yeah. why they went out of their way in the offseason to yeah. put this roster together because performances like that, that was True. disgusting. Yeah, I mean, Merit was great, but his uh, partner in crime, Sugar Free, was amazing as well. And that is who we're going to be talking to for the post-match interview. Sugar Free, big congratulations. You guys are the champions for Stage 1 and A side. How are you feeling right now? Yeah, I'm feeling pretty good, you know. I mean, it wasn't too hard, so... <laughs> Yo, I'm not that happy about win? it, you know what I mean? Was it was it pretty fuck. It, I mean, it was easy. So. It was easy. <laughs> hey, man, we didn't hear anything. It was an easy win, yeah. We listen to the cons all week. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah. we've been listening yeah. to the cons. You can't hide. My bad. My all bad. right, so Sugar Free, what I just want to ask you is, I feel like by map four, you were really turning it up on them, on the Tracer. How were you guys feeling, like, as that series came to a close? I mean, you looked like incredible confidence. What, what was it? What are the vibes like from the team now and, and, and as you guys were closing the series out there? Oh, we were just having fun, bro. Uh, someone was like calling really well, all of our dives and stuff. So I was like really comfortable. I didn't even have to say a thing. He's just like, can you go? I can go. And that was it. We killed everyone. So like, what, what would you describe was the difference in play versus timeless in the upper bracket when you went five maps? You know, you play some different compositions then, but like just individually in this series, you guys just played out of your minds. Like what was the vibes going into the series? Why was it so different this time? Merit was on Sojourn, and then <laughs> I was on Tracer. That's it. That was, that's really it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, even with you guys 
arguably on like a weaker roll setup with the Tracer and the Echo, you still win the match. And then here, I think, which is, this does look like your guy's best look. I mean, it was not close. Like there's, yeah. I feel like, I guess I the, the question now is like, is there any group of players, whether rosters be reassembled, like, is there anyone who can challenge you guys in NA? I mean, I, I feel like, I don't know. I feel like I already know what the answer is, but I'm curious if you think, is, there, is there anyone left in NA? Maybe when MAD gets off ping, maybe, but that's a still a big maybe, because yeah. uh, Hydron, you know, never mind. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, okay. oh, all right, oh. All right. little spice, little spice. All right, uh, going back to talking about Toronto Defiant though, you know, you joined this team and you get to play with uh, RuPaul, someone, Merit, the world champions from Overwatch League last year. You coming into this roster on Toronto Defiant, what's it like playing with world champions like those guys? Uh, I mean, it's really fun. I learned a lot from someone. Um, he's just in insane. Merit as well. He's the best hits can, like, for sure, without a doubt. RuPaul? RuPaul's, you know, he's he's there. <laughs> oh, so... okay. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm Damn, kidding. bro. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. You're about to not get Susan <laughs> for a couple post bro. <laughs> no, no, he's no, gonna... right, oh, right, oh right, sorry, my right, Susan's right. on cooldown, bro. My bad. My... <laughs> All right, Sugar Free, before no, we let you go, um, do you have anything you want to say to your fans and uh, for those uh, fans that are watching uh, the show? Uh, yeah, just thanks for supporting us. Keep supporting us, and I uh, hope we win it all for you guys. How, how are you celebrating? What's next? What are you guys doing today? <laughs> what are you guys doing tonight? I'm not sure if we're doing anything because uh, Vega and RuPaul get here tomorrow, so I think we're gonna celebrate tomorrow instead of today. All right, but all we're right. gonna we're gonna go out to eat. All right, man. Sugar free, dude. Again, big congratulations on getting the win, and uh, yeah, see you soon, man. Thank you so much. All right, thank you. <laughs> Yo, this is throwing some shades <laughs> I mean, to the enemies and to fine. teammates. <laughs> it's fair. It's fair. I mean, they're on top of the world right now. Yeah. They're the kings of NA. And honestly, Rightfully so. Yeah. I mean, this is absurd, right? Compared to any region of, of anywhere in the world in Overwatch, no team is dominating their, their regional competition yeah. like Toronto Defiant just did in that last series. I don't know if there is going to be a real competition for this team until they go to an international land. Yeah, I mean, this is a team that is like, they're like, bulletproof as well where it's like sometimes we'll have teams that like look really dominant or like hit a certain stride in a meta mm -hmm. like with someone at the at the helm playing that tank Any as meta. well and like you have sugar free it's like so flexible merit like jake said it's not only a sojourn like jake thinks his his better hits can heroes are like not sojourn so like yeah, yeah. this team they're just bulletproof and you can see how the vibes they're just so confident in their abilities like th this team is just they're, they're like a crazy. like a like a well-oiled machine they are it's like it's... metal changes okay we change it's fine <laughs> i mean to slide <laughs> like, <in laughs> like merit did on soldier in those fights when he just slides into the the, the, the winston bubbles like uh, that confidence is just unreal you can tell like once they they got an inch into the series right like once they take a few fights you know the first map goes their way the aggression just keeps getting more and more intense the pace gets faster and faster and they're almost daring timeless like can you keep up can you handle this and as timeless crumbles i think under that pressure understandably like there's not many teams in the world that can take that kind of a pace the the limit for trying to find it feels like they could go more right it feels like like what would happen if this we played a few more maps i mean it, they're they're pushing it further and further as the series goes on from a start that is already incredibly impressive yeah they're they're too good they're i think i would say they're truly an amazing team Talking about uh, an amazing team, let's look at some uh, an, a, an amazing plays that we saw <laughs> oh, uh, from oh, today. Danny. Hey, I thought that was I thought that was pretty good. No, <laughs> <laughs> I tried. And of course, uh, I would watch oh, this of course, one all day. It. play it, all, yeah, play it all, all night, baby. Yeah. <laughs> just cue it up. Like if you <laughs> loop, if you're rocking an opener here, like you didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> you can't change anything. You just got I? licked on. Like you peek for. Your, you didn't even peek! You <laughs> thought you were safe! He came into your house! I, I'm gonna be honest, yeah. some, some of the shots when I see it, when it, it's just... I have I didn't even see what he was shooting at and he just got a kill. And I'm like, what, what do you shoot? How do you get the kill? Sometimes it's, when I'm coaching players, I'll say like, oh, you know, you don't have to play around that. Like if they're gonna hit some crazy shot in you, you don't have to play around that. He, you know, he can't hit that every time. But like against Merit, he can hit that every time maybe! Yeah. It's and again, again, I just want to reiterate, like, we're not being disrespectful towards Timeless here. Yes. Yeah. Again, like, Timeless, great. But, like, that, they were just not in the, on the same, like, level. It yeah. was just, ooh. I mean, and I impressive mean, for those guys to make right. it here this yeah. far. Second to, place. Like, so many upsets into the right. tournament to have pushed Toronto the map five earlier. But, I mean, I think even those guys would have to agree, right? 
they felt the limit today against Toronto yeah. Defiant. That, that was where, those were teams of a different caliber, of a different tier. You have Toronto Defiant be, stands you alone. You have to be satisfied with second place here, yeah. and you have to go look forward. You have to look There's forward. Stage like, two. Okay, There's we stage got, two. Okay, we got four rolled by Toronto Defiant. We got second place. That's huge for our circuit points, mm -hmm. which you know increase our odds to qualify for Dallas, and that's what Chopper said in the interview, right? right. You see the circuit points right, right here. here. Toronto first, of course, winning with 250 points and timeless 200, going into the stage two. Now the points are going to double in stage two, right. but already getting a massive amount of points. Points, that's going to help you because you don't know what the meta is going to be. You don't know what the circumstances will be. So securing points early, really good for you and gives you a chance here in the second qualifier yep. coming up. Everyone, so sign up for stage two. I think it's going to be It'll an be really exciting fun. You stage. can play against oh, yeah. Samara. You're going to have a great time. <laughs> like, it's going to be stage. super fun. You get to play them yourself. You get to, no, that's, it's an honor. You get to experience. You get to the, be aim trading. The, the, yeah, there you go. Yeah. You get to be the, the standing boss. Well. <laughs> I'm trying to help you too, but I don't, think we're, I don't think we're making this work. But anyways, guys, those are the matches. We had some great matches. I hope you guys all enjoyed. Before we say goodbye, any any last words from you guys? This has been so fun. It has uh, been. Really it's fun. been so great being back in the studio. True. With you seriously, guys. seriously, it's it's such a pleasure to be okay. here, to be with all of you, the fans. I think this has been such an amazing first main event for the OWCS. I am so excited for next month for for the main event number two, with all the crazy meta shakeups shake we've gotten. The game's in a very interesting place. Tons of different heroes are being played. So I think. Maybe if you're Toronto Defiant, you're confident, but almost everybody else, they're going to have to go back to the drawing board and stay grinding because. But you never more know. You never know what happens, right? You know, exactly. There could be up, a new right? team. There yeah. could be uh, teams who come that we haven't even seen yet, or reformations of new players that that maybe could compete with this top squad. Yeah. We'll just have to wait and see because uh, because stage two uh, will be coming up very soon. But for now, we're going to say our goodbyes. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope you guys all enjoyed. But don't go anywhere. After the broadcast, we're going to be raiding Avril. We're raiding Avril. We're going to raid Avril. Uh, so be ready tub. for his uh, big, Get in the hot tub. big brain uh, takes and everything. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you. See you soon. Bye. See you next time, everyone. Nice TP away from Quartz, who is on the high ground, now rips the overclock. Chase is trying to just tank for the rest of his team, but Quartz does not care about your front line. A quick two snipes on Cookie and Canal. He's looking for a third there as X Oblivione are just turned to smolder. Yeah, maybe if you're able to get a quick pick here. But Shockwave is back, has the disruptor shot out. X Oblivione, they got one chance and they're walking into that cage fight. What a cage from a KSA there. They just, uh, you just set Quartz off for success, but they're not going to survive all too long. Crispy's on there, does trigger, no, he doesn't trigger OT. He manages to get pooped away, and Twisted Minds take the series three to one and book themselves to the finals against Enz. Taking a lot of damage, I mean, Kev's just trying to find the kill onto Quartz. Quartz is so low, we're already forced to recall. No one can kill him, no one can kill Quartz. The Susu's too good, the healing is too good. There's nothing, nothing Enz can do against Quartz. Enz, they have to get to the point, they have to close it now. In order to win the series, there's a quick touch there Kepster gets the touch, there's the wall, pulse bump for Kev, has to go big, 30 seconds to go, but Boss is already down, Twisted Mind are just going to run away with this one, the new kings of EU have been crowned. Wait, 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 Nothing can stop Chopper and his unquenchable thirst to Soldier and Diff. Nice headshot too onto Ranko, my god. 90% for M80, but time is to just running away with this one. Hawks on his loan, so I'm on an island trying to fight for his life and fight for M80s too, but time is just gonna wipe them and take the map and the series. Oh my god. Oh my god. Argue that Merritt has higher to climb. Like, I don't think we've necessarily seen the best of his career. You gotta remember, this guy's been playing pro for what, two seasons of the Overwatch League? And he's already, I think, I think seriously in contention for best in the world. This ends now. Toronto Defiant in an absolute shutout. Some kings were born to rule. Toronto Defiant are going to be able to take this series at a 4-0. Timeless crumble before them.